Yeah, Morty. Just don't go triggering any PC warriors in here. These pixelated folks can be pretty touchy. They come across a group of characters on the first level. Morty. Meet Kyo Kusanagi, one of the biggest show-offs in the fighting game universe. He's got a fireball attack and a one-handed sword that he won't shut up about. Whoa, Rick! Check out that huge guy with a luchador mask! He looks like he could crush someone with his pinky! That's Chong Koihan, Morty. He's got a knack for shocking people with his electrical attacks. Just don't ask him how he keeps his mask on, if you know what I mean. Morty and Rick approach a large object with a light on its face. Rick, what's that weird thing staring at us? It's got a light for a face. Morty, that's a boss character. Meet Chrysalid, a genetically enhanced fighter with devastating moves. But don't worry, I've got my trusty portal gun to even the odds. Morty and Rick begin fighting the boss character. Morty, remember to dodge his energy attacks, and when he teleports, aim for the shadows. I got this, Rick. Take that, you light-faced maniac. Rick and Morty finally defeat the boss and progress to the next level. Alright, Morty, buckle up. We're taking a trip to the snowy mountains. Careful not to slip on the ice. Rick, I'm freezing my balls off here. Can't we just go back home? No can do, Morty. We're in this for the long haul. Besides, you'll thank me later when you're dominating the world of gaming. They face a new set of characters and continue their conquest. Morty, meet Shermie a seductive fighter who can control electric currents. Just be careful, she's not as innocent as she seems. Oh, jeez, Rick. Why do I feel like she's gonna electrocute my... Ah, uh, never mind. Morty, don't let your mind wander. We've got a tournament to win. They battle their way through more challenging levels, encountering a variety of colorful characters with unique abilities. Morty, we're getting close to the final boss, Rugal Bernstein. He's got a god complex and a destructive energy called the Genocide Cutter. Stay focused. Rick, I didn't sign up for this. This is way too intense. Sorry, Morty, but we're in too deep now. Prepare yourself. After a grueling battle against Rugal Bernstein, they emerge victorious. Rick, we did it. We beat the game. Damn right, Morty. Now let's celebrate with a victory burp. They exit the game and return to their own dimension. Phew, that was one crazy adventure, Rick. Can we do something less intense next time? Sure, Morty. How about we go on a nice relaxing vacation to a peaceful, demon-infested dimension? It'll be a walk in the park. Oh, jeez, Rick. I don't know if I can handle that. Alright Morty, buckle up because we're about to embark on a dimension hopping, game jumping adventure. Oh geez, Rick, do we really have to mess with video games again? Last time we got stuck in that cursed Roy simulation. Relax, Morty, this is gonna be totally different. We won't get stuck, I promise. They both step onto the game screen, finding themselves inside the world of Rush 2, Extreme Racing USA. Alright, Morty, prepare for the ride of a lifetime. We're in the virtual world now. Whoa, Rick! Look at all these colorful tracks and crazy obstacles! That's right, Morty. We've got sprawling landscapes, insane jumps, and deadly challenges. Now, let's get racing. Morty chooses a car while Rick selects a truck. Hey, Rick, why did you choose a truck? Shouldn't we go for a faster car? Morty, speed is overrated. This baby's got durability. Plus, I can run over anyone in my way. Oh, okay. I guess I'll stick with this car then. Let's just try not to crash, Rick. They start racing, encountering characters from the game. Hey, Morty, check it out. There's Buzzer, the annoying B character. I bet he's got some secret shortcuts for us. Oh, great. I'm buzzing with excitement. They pass through a level with floating platforms. Rick, this level is a nightmare. There are floating platforms that keep disappearing. How are we supposed to beat this? Morty, have a little faith. 
We just need to time our jumps perfectly. They barely make it across the disappearing platforms. Wow, Rick, we actually made it. Voice heard in the distance. Hey, guys. Wait for me. Uh, Jerry's here, Morty. Let's pick up the pace. We don't have all day. They speed through a lava-filled stage. Appearing on a hoverboard. Wow, Rick. You guys are actually in a video game? That's so cool, I guess. Cool, Morty. We're literally dodging lava and racing against sentient hot rods. This is crazy, Rick. They reach the final level. Morty, we're almost there. Just a few more crazy loops and gravity-defying stunts until we win. I can't believe we actually made it this far. This is intense, Rick. They cross the finish line, victorious. Morty, we did it. We beat the game from the inside. Yeah, Rick, but can we get back home now? I don't think my stomach can handle any more virtual rides. They're teleported back to their reality. Finally, Morty, we're back home. No more video games for a while, all right? Thank goodness, Rick. I need a break from all that craziness. Still stuck inside the game. Hey, guys. Can someone help me out? Guys? Looks like Jerry got left behind. Oh well, he'll figure it out, eventually. Classic Jerry. Morty, buckle up. We're about to embark on a virtual roller coaster ride like no other. Ah, uh, Rick, what are we doing? This looks like some kind of trippy, rainbow colored city. Relax, Morty. We just got sucked into the world of Bubble Bobble featuring Rainbow. We're inside a PlayStation 1 game, Morty. Whoa, this is crazy, Rick. Look, there's Bub and Bob, the two bubble blowing dinosaurs. That's right, Morty. They're our hosts on this pixelated adventure. Hey, Bub, Bob, mind giving us a rundown of this game? Bub, sure thing, Rick. In this game, you face wave after wave of colorful enemies trapped inside bubbles. You gotta pop them all to advance. Oh, but be careful, guys. There are tricky platforms, bouncing bubbles, and deadly bosses awaiting you. Deadly bosses? Oh man, that's not cool. Ordy, it's just a game. Now quit being a wuss and let's get on with it. Enters the scene. Hey, what's going on here? Following Summer. Yeah, we heard some crazy noise coming from the living room. Great. The whole dysfunctional family's here. We're inside a video game, guys. We gotta beat it to get out. Sarcastically. Oh, joy. Another one of Rick's grand adventures. How delightful. Can't we just go back to watching TV? I was in the middle of my favorite show. Jerry, you're in Bubble Bobble now. Get used to it, you're our backup, so don't mess it up. Nervously, um, Rick, I don't know if I can do this. I mean, I'm not exactly a video game hero. Morty, you're with the smartest man in the universe. I'll guide you through it. Now, jump on that cloud and blow some bubbles. Okay, here goes nothing. Presses buttons frantically. Nice one, Morty, you're clearing those enemies like a pro. This is bizarrely entertaining. I can't believe I'm actually enjoying this weird virtual world. Mumbles, I miss cable TV. Oh, uh, hey, guys, you've made it to the boss level. Get ready to face the giant rainbow dragon. Oh, remember, team up and use your bubble blowing powers wisely. You got this. Ordy, it's showtime. Time to take down this dragon and conquer Bubble Bobble. Gaining confidence, let's do it, Rick. We're gonna save the day, inside a freaking video game! After a fierce battle, Rick and Morty defeat the Rainbow Dragon, freeing the game's characters. Oh, thank you, Rick and Morty. We're free, thanks to you. Oh, you guys are true heroes. We couldn't have done it without you. No problem, Bob and Bob. Just another day in the multiverse for us. I must admit, that was pretty cool. Can we do it again sometime? Cheerfully. Yeah, that wasn't half bad. I feel like a true adventurer now. Smirking. Sure, 
we can go back to the world of Bubble Bobble anytime. But first, we have more crazy dimensions to explore, Morty. Warily, just please, no more video games, Rick. Don't worry, Morty, I've got something even better planned. Morty, I just can't believe this shit. We're standing in front of a sign that says, More by World, and somehow we've been teleported into the world of a Sega Genesis game? Really? What kind of fucked up simulation is this? I don't know, Rick. It's like we're trapped inside this game called, Wonder Boy in Monster World. Look, there are all these characters from the game around us. Oh great, just what we needed. More two-dimensional sprites with shitty dialogue. Hey, pink-haired swordsman. Ever heard of Existential Dread? Swordsman. Whoa, who are you guys? The name's Bok Lee Temjin. I've been wandering through these colorful levels, saving the world from monsters. What brings you here? Um, we're not here voluntarily, Mr. Pink Haired with an attitude. We just got sucked into this pixelated nightmare, and we need a way out. Alright, Bok Lee, show us the ropes. We're gonna speedrun this shit, Morty style. No time for side quests or character development, just the plot and power ups. Appearing out of nowhere, Rick, Morty, what the hell is going on? I was in the middle of my cardio class, and suddenly I'm in an 8-bit wasteland. Guys, of course, Beth. It wouldn't be an episode without you randomly showing up in some absurd situation. Well, since you're here, you can be our useless support character. Joining the group. Hey, guys. Like, what's all the commotion? Whoa, is that a talking lizard with sunglasses? Summer. Meet Red Hot Reptile. He's the king of the smug reptilians. And yeah, he can talk, but his dialogue is as pointless as social media influencers. Whoa, Rick, look at those floating platforms. How do we get across? Morty, have you learned nothing? It's called platforming. Just jump your way across like a pleb. Rick, I don't think I can handle this. I mean, how do we even know what's real anymore? Oh, come on, Beth. You're acting like a drama queen on prom night. It's a damn video game. None of this shit is real, except for the crippling existential crisis it's causing us. Hey, guys. I found a secret passage. It leads to an underground cave filled with treasure chests. Sarcastically. Oh, wow, Summer. We stuck in a game, but you're finding hidden treasure. That's so helpful. Um, guys, I think we reached the end of the level. There's a boss monster blocking our way. What do we do? Morty, remember, this is a Sega Genesis game. We have to keep attacking its weak spot until it explodes into pixels of disappointment. Boss monster, growling, you fools. You think you can defeat me? Prepare for your imminent demise. Rick, I can't do this. I'm too scared. Bull's eyes. Fine, Beth. Just stand in the corner and contemplate the futility of life. Meanwhile, the rest of us will defeat this boss and find a way out of this insane game world. Whoa! We did it! The boss is dead, and the path is open again. Rick, look! There's a portal! We can finally escape this video game madness! Well, it's about time. Let's get the hell out of here before I have an aneurysm. I've seen better simulations in a toaster oven. They all enter the portal and return to the real world. Jeez, Rick! That whole experience was intense. I didn't know if we were ever gonna make it out. Morty, life is a series of statistically improbable outcomes. We just got lucky this time. Now let's get back home and forget this ever happened.
burping. Morty, grab the portal gun. We're going on a wild ride. Uh, Rick, where are we going this time? We're venturing into the world of the Super Nintendo game NCAA Final Tour Basketball, Morty. Strap yourself in, and, uh, maybe grab a towel or two. Are you serious, Rick? We're going inside a video game now? Yep, Morty, we're going to meet all the characters and beat this game from within. Prepare yourself for a statistically improbable adventure. They activate the portal gun and find themselves in front of a building with a neon green roof. Whoa, Rick! Look at that building! It's like a rave gone wrong! Relax, Morty, it's just the game's aesthetics. Now, let's find our way inside. They enter the building and see a cartoon character playing a game surrounded by other characters. Hey, you, what is this place? Cartoon character, welcome to the world of NCAA Final Tour Basketball. I'm the coach of the team. You can call me Coach G. Coach G, huh? Interesting choice for a name. Enough chit chat, Coach G. We want to play this game and beat it. What are the levels and obstacles we need to tackle? Coach G. Well, we have the dormitory distraction level, where you have to sneak past rowdy frat boys, and the library of irate nerds level, where you have to answer complex math problems to proceed. Math problems? That sounds awful. Morty, when has education ever been fun? Now, let's get moving. They encounter various levels, including the cafeteria conspiracy, where they have to uncover hidden food scandals, and the lecture hall lunacy, where they must resist falling asleep during boring lectures. Hey, guys, I got sucked into this game too. Let's team up and finish this. Summer, what are you doing here? It's a long story, but I couldn't let you have all the fun. At least you're not alone, Rick. Yeah, Morty, misery loves company. They continue facing levels like the gymnasium gauntlet, where they must dodge flying dodgeballs, and the finals frenzy, where they have to interpret convoluted exam questions. Morty, we're almost there. Just one more level to go. Thank goodness, Rick. My brain can't handle any more outrageous challenges. They finally reach the championship court, where a giant mascot guards the victory trophy. Rick, how are we supposed to defeat that huge mascot? Morty, if you've learned anything from these games, it's that there's always a weakness. We just need to find it. They strategize, dodge attacks, and eventually discover the mascot's vulnerability defeating it and grabbing the victory trophy. We did it, Morty. We beat the game. Wow, that was intense, Rick. But somehow, I feel accomplished. And I feel like I wasted my life playing video games. Ah, Summer, cheer up. It's just another statistically improbable adventure in the books. They use the portal gun to exit the game, leaving the cartoon character and other characters in awe. Cartoon character, who were those crazy folks? Other characters, who knows, but they sure knew how to beat the game. As they leave, Morty, video games may rot your brain, but they sure make for some interesting stories. Yeah, Rick, let's just hope we're not stuck in one next time. They burp and continue on their interdimensional adventures. Alright, Morty, buckle up. We've been randomly teleported into the world of Yu Yu Hakusho, Ghost Files, Spirit Detective. This is gonna be one hell of a game. Whoa, Rick, this place looks intense. I didn't know video games could look this real. Morty, this is a cartoon. It doesn't have to make sense. Just roll with it. Rick, Morty, what are you doing in that video game? You better not be causing trouble. Oh great, now we're stuck in a virtual world with them. Just my luck. Whoa, this is awesome. I can't wait to kick some ghost butt. Alright, gang, listen up. We have to navigate through the game's levels and beat all the obstacles to find a way out. We'll encounter all the characters from the show, like Yusuke, Kuwabara, Kurama, and Hiei. Wait, where's Lilo? Wrong cartoon, Morty, 
Stay focused. We have to pass the dark tournament and defeat Sensui 7 to escape. Can't you just hack the game and get us out of here, Rick? Eth, this isn't the Matrix. Although I already downloaded the cheat codes, just in case. You know, I always thought video games were a waste of time. Says the guy who spends hours pretending to know how to fix the lawnmower. Jerry, stop being useless. We need to find a way to progress through the game. Hey, look, there's Jenke. She's gonna teach us some sick spirit detective techniques. Nice. Maybe she can teach Jerry how to grow a backbone while she's at it. Rick, what's our objective? Are we on a quest or something? Ordy, the objective is simple. We need to beat the game and get the hell out of here. But trust me, it's not gonna be easy. Rick, Morty, watch out for those spirit world demons. They're known for their deceptive tactics. Oh, guys, I think I just found a secret passage. Should we check it out? Jerry, if you can navigate something other than your own mediocrity for once, then go ahead. Whoa, guys, we found the boss level. It's Toguro. He's huge. All right, everyone, listen up. We need to work together to defeat Toguro. Morty, use your smarts. Jerry, try not to mess up. Beth, make sure these idiots stay alive. Summer, unleash your inner badass. Rick, I'm not sure I can do this. What if we fail? Morty, in this world, failure means getting a game over. In our world, it means destroying entire universes. Trust me, this is a walk in the park. Rick, please let's hurry up and get out of here. I have surgery in the morning. Sure, Beth, can't have you do something actually important. Guys, we did it. We beat Toguro. We're gonna make it out of here. Whoa, that was awesome. We totally kicked ass. All right, gang, we're back in reality. Now we can go back to our regularly scheduled dysfunctional lives. But Rick, that was so much fun. Can't we play another game? Morty, adventure is overrated. Let's go get some Cronenbergs at the Interdimensional Diner. Morty, buckle up and put on your brain helmet. We're about to dive headfirst into a dimension even more convoluted than our own. Jeez, Rick, what's all this about? I was just trying to play Roy on my Roy VR headset. Forget about Roy, Morty. We've been teleported into the world of Damsel, beyond the periphery. A game so mind-bogglingly frustrating it makes Jerry's attempt at fixing the sink look like rocket science. Hey, I resent that. I fixed the sink just fine, thank you very much. No one asked you, Jerry. Now listen up, Morty. In this game, we're surrounded by a green background and two cartoon characters. One with a pink outfit and a blue coat, and the other with a pink coat and a green background. It's like the set designer tripped on a color wheel. So, what's the objective, Rick? Do we have to collect some sort of MacGuffin to progress? Oh, Morty, there's no MacGuffin here just a bunch of statistically improbable levels and absurd obstacles. We're talking spike pits, acid lakes, and enemies that are possibly drunk on Paradox Juice. Paradox Juice, Rick? Yeah, Morty, Paradox Juice. It's like a cocktail of uncertainty and logical inconsistencies. One sip and you'll question your very existence. You'll see things swirling in shades of purple, orange, and plaid. Sounds trippy, Rick, but how do we beat this game? We navigate through each level, relying on our impeccable reflexes and profanity-laden insults. We'll outsmart the sentient platforms, outmaneuver the indestructible pink slugs, and outrun the laser beams that have the audacity to call us, dude. Dude? That's disrespectful, Rick. You're telling me, Morty. But watch out, Morty. Here comes the level boss, a giant pixelated mosquito with a Napoleon complex. Holy crap, Rick! It's huge! Don't worry. Morty, I've got an atomic shrink ray in my back pocket. Since when? Look, Morty, just roll with it, okay? Hey, guys, I think I fixed the sink. Shut up, Jerry, we've got a mosquito to shrink. We did it, Rick. 
We beat the game. Of course we did, Morty. Did you really doubt the genius minds behind Interdimensional Cable? I guess not, Rick. But hey, can we go back home now? Sure thing, Morty. Just let me deal with this pink and blue-coated character who insists on challenging us to a game of interdimensional chess. You got it, Rick. Let's just hope he's not a sore loser like Jerry. Hey! Scene fades out with Rick and Morty preparing to annihilate their unsuspecting opponent in interdimensional chess. Hey Morty, I've got a brilliant idea for our next adventure. Oh geez, Rick, not another one of your crazy ideas again, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal, Morty, normal is boring. We need excitement, danger, and mind-bending science. Yeah, but last time we ended up in a dimension with horrifying, mutant snowmen. Exactly, it was statistically improbable, who would have thought snowmen could be so bloodthirsty? Walking in from the distance. Hey guys, what's all the commotion about? Summer, perfect timing. Listen, I've just discovered a parallel dimension where trees are made of cotton candy. Cotton candy trees? Are you serious? You bet your sweet ass I am. Imagine the possibilities, Morty. We could have a never-ending sugar rush. Wow, that sounds amazing. Can I come along? Of course, Summer. But first, I need to ask Morty something. Morty. What were you doing with that glider in the bushes? Oh, nothing. Mind your own business, Rick. Oh, I will, Morty. Just thought it was interesting, that's all. Come on, guys, let's not get caught up in Morty's secrets. We've got a cotton candy dimension to explore. Right you are, Summer. Strap in, Morty, we're going on a wild ride. Meanwhile, in the cotton candy dimension. Wow, Rick. These cotton candy trees are incredible. They taste like heaven. That's because they are, Morty. It's literally heaven in food form. Just remember, eat in moderation, or it'll clog your arteries faster than Jerry can ruin a good joke. I'm gonna document this on my interdimensional Insta account. Hashtag sugar high for days. Hey guys, have you noticed those talking gummy bears over there? Oh, those little critters? They're harmless, Morty. Just don't make any deals with them. They tend to have a way of screwing you over. Got it, Rick. No deals with the gummy bears, only with you. Damn right, Morty. I'm the only one who can screw you over properly. Wow, this dimension is jaw-droppingly beautiful. I'm totally hashtag blessed right now. Careful, Summer. Beauty can be deceiving. Remember that time you dated that telepathic alien vampire? Point taken, Rick. But this place is so surreal. Hey, Rick, I just realized something. If everything here is made of candy, what about the ground we're standing on? Morty, you never fail to amaze me with your curiosity. The ground is made of licorice, Morty, and it's probably the worst thing you could eat. Trust me, I've tried it. Holding a giant lollipop, look what I found. It's bigger than Jerry's ego. Careful with that, Summer. One lick and you could be stuck to that thing for the rest of your days. Oh, guys, we might have a problem here. What is it, Morty? I think I accidentally angered the cotton candy monsters. Morty, you had one job. Don't anger the cotton candy monsters. Run, guys. They're multiplying faster than the Kardashians reproduce. They all run as the cotton candy monsters chase them. Rick, any brilliant ideas to get us out of this mess? Morty, sometimes the best ideas are the simplest ones. Hold on tight. Rick activates a portal and they all escape just in time. Phew, that was too close. You really saved our asses, Rick. Just another day in the life of a genius, Morty. Now, let's go find a dimension where pickle-flavored ice cream exists. Now that sounds disgusting, but I'm in.
Hordy, buckle up, we're about to take a wild interdimensional ride into the world of ECW Anarchy Rules. Whoa, Rick, are you serious? We're going inside a Sega Dreamcast game? This is insane! You bet it is, Morty. Hold on to your seat, we're about to meet some seriously messed up characters. Jerry, Beth, and Summer suddenly appear in the pixelated Sega Dreamcast world. Oh great! First, we get teleported to another dimension, and now we're stuck in a video game? Can this day get any worse? Just be quiet, Jerry. Rick always has some absurd plan. Let's see what this game is all about. Morty spots a cartoon character with neon green hair and glasses on. Hey, who's that guy? He looks like a crazy version of Ratchet from the old cartoon. That's Vinny the Manic Mechanic, Morty. He's like a twisted version of every cartoon character combined. Watch out for him, he's got a mean streak. Vinny! Hey, you schmucks! What are you doing in my game? Get out of here before I smash you all! Uh oh, he looks pretty intimidating. Should we run, guys? Of course, we should run. Rick, do something. Relax, Jerry, we're not some wimpy NPCs. Morty and I are gonna beat this game from the inside, and we're gonna do it in style. But how, Rick? This game is filled with insane wrestlers and over-the-top chaos. Easy, Morty. We just need to unlock the secret moves, exploit the glitches, and we'll be unstoppable. Beth spots a bright pink background with neon green walls. Look. Over there, Morty. That bizarre pink and neon green background must be the key to unlocking something important. I think you're right, Beth. Let's check it out. They discover a hidden power-up. Wow, that's amazing. We can defeat Vinny now, right? Jerry, your useless enthusiasm never ceases to amaze me. We're not there yet. We still have tougher challenges ahead. A wrestler named Insane Yeti appears. Insane Yeti, R-O-A-A-R-R-R-R. -R -R -R. I'm gonna rip you apart, puny humans. Holy crap, that Yeti didn't skip leg day. Don't worry, everyone. We just need to work together, follow Rick's genius plan, and we'll prevail. Yeah, that's easy for you to say, Mom. But fighting a Yeti? This is insane! After an intense battle, they defeat the Yeti. We did it! We beat the Yeti! Rick, your plan actually worked! Of course it did, Jerry. When you're as brilliant as I am, success is guaranteed. Alright, let's keep going. We're almost there. They reach the final boss, the Neon King. Neon King, bow before my neon glory, puny mortals. Witness true power. This guy is ridiculously overpowered. How are we gonna beat him? Morty, remember that glitch I told you about? Now's the time to use it. Got it, Rick. I'll give it a shot. After an epic glitch exploit, they defeat the Neon King. We did it, Rick. We beat ECW Anarchy rules from within. That's right, Morty. We showed this game who's boss. Now let's go home and celebrate our victory with some Szechuan sauce. They all cheer and celebrate their victorious return home. Morty, we're in for a mind-bending adventure. Grab your portal gun. We're about to enter the world of Duke Nukem 64. W what? Duke Nukem 64? I've heard of that game, but I never played it. Well, Morty, prepare yourself for some old school, ridiculously over-the-top action. It's time to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and we're all out of gum. Um, okay, Rick. But how do we beat the game from inside? Simple, Morty. We just need to find Duke Nukem himself and follow him through the levels. He's the one who saves the day, so we ride his coattails. Like, metaphorically? No, Morty, literally. We literally ride on Duke Nukem's coattails. Don't ask me how it's possible, just go with it. Alright, if you say so, Rick. But this place is so, pixelated, 
And everyone looks so blocky, it's like I'm stuck in a retro nightmare. What are you two doing here? Wait, why am I blocky too? What's happening? Oh, Beth, we've teleported into the world of Duke Nukem 64. Don't worry, we're just here to beat the game and get out. Beat the game? Can't we just go home? I have a dental appointment tomorrow. Oh, Jerry, always the coward. This is an adventure, and we're not leaving until we've saved the world and gotten all the power-ups. Seriously, Grandpa? You brought us into a video game? I can't even change my clothes with these blocky pixels. Well, Summer, you're just gonna have to deal with it. In this world, fashion is limited to pixelated textures and questionable color combinations. Hey, Grandpa, there's Duke Nukem. Let's go talk to him. Duke Nukem, in his iconic deep voice, hail to the king, baby. Duke, we need your help to beat this game and get out of here. Can we tag along? Duke Nukem, sure thing, boys. But remember, this is my game, and I'm the one who saves the babes and kicks some alien ass. Wow, Duke Nukem in the flesh. Can I have your autograph? Duke Nukem, sorry, kid. No time for autographs when there's ass to kick and babes to save. All right, enough fanboying, Morty. Let's follow Duke Nukem through these pixelated levels and hope we don't run out of quarters. Wait, why do we need quarters? It's a video game. Just go with it, Beth. It's a nostalgia thing. Plus, this world operates on its own set of insane rules. This is so illogical. Are we ever going to get out of here? Relax, Jerry. We'll beat this game, get the high score, and end up back in our own world in no time. Plus, you can tell everyone you survived Duke Nukem 64. That's gotta be worth something, right? I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's kick some alien ass, Grandpa. That's the spirit, Summer. Let's show these pixelated aliens what we're made of. It's time to save the world, collect power-ups, and maybe even find a warp zone or two. I am ready, Rick. Let's do this. Duke Nukem. Damn, it's about time. Let's go, guys. We've got a game to beat. They all charge forward, ready to take on the challenges of Duke Nukem 64, in a hilariously chaotic and nostalgic adventure. Hey, Morty, check this out. Look at this drawing I found. It's a building with a clock on top and a car parked outside of it. Oh, cool, Rick. What's so special about it? Morty, Morty, Morty. This drawing represents a statistically improbable scenario known as a time crisis. When the clock strikes midnight, that car's gonna turn into a time-traveling machine. Whoa, really? We gotta do something about it, Rick. No worries, Morty. We just need to assess the situation. Jerry, Summer, get your sorry behinds in here. What do you want, Rick? Can't you see I'm busy being useless somewhere else? Shut up, Jerry. Put your insecurities aside and pay attention. We've got a time crisis on our hands, and we need all the brainpower we can get. Ah, why are we wasting our time on another crazy Rick adventure? I have important things to do. Important things, like taking selfies and posting them online? Real important, Summer. Alright, guys, let's focus. We need to figure out how to prevent this time-traveling car from causing chaos. Can't we just, you know, not do anything? Maybe time will take care of itself? Oh, Jerry, your innate stupidity never ceases to amaze me. Time doesn't just take care of itself. We have to take control. Fine, let's do this. What's the plan? Rick. We need to infiltrate the building with the clock, find the car, and disable its time travel feature. Morty, Summer, you're with me. Jerry, don't screw things up. Yeah, yeah, I'll just stay here and hold down the fort, or whatever. They enter the building, encountering various traps and obstacles. Rick, I think we're getting closer to the car. This place is a real maze. Morty, use your brain not your mouth. That's why we dragged your scrawny ass here in the first place. Don't be so hard on him, Rick. We're almost there, I can feel it. 
they finally reach the car. Rick, I think I found the time travel module. Should I just pull it out? No, Morty, we need to disconnect it properly. Remember that time you ripped out the wrong wire and blew up a whole planet? Good times. Oh, geez, Rick. You never let me forget that, do you? They successfully disable the time travel feature. Great job, guys. Now let's get out of here before we run into more trouble. As they exit the building, the clock strikes midnight. Well, we made it just in time. Literally. So, what now, Rick? Now, Morty, we go home and pretend this never happened. Time crisis averted. I knew my absence was crucial to the mission's success. Shut up, Jerry. They all teleport away, leaving the building and the clock behind. Another day, another crazy adventure for the Smith family. Time may have tried to mess with them, but when Rick is involved, chaos doesn't stand a chance. Alright Morty, buckle up. We're about to dive into the twisted world of the Sega Genesis game, The Punisher. Aw, oh, Rick, isn't that like a really violent game? I'm not sure if we should be messing with that. Morty, violence is just a fictional construct, created to provide cheap entertainment. Plus, we've already transcended that moral dilemma ages ago. Rick, what are you two up to now? I hope you're not going to get into trouble again. Oh, Beth, when have we ever gotten into trouble? We're just exploring the boundaries of virtual reality. Plus, Morty needs to toughen up a bit. Hey, I'm tough enough, Rick. Sure you are, Morty. Now let's get to the game. Whoa, where are we? Cue the classic Sega Genesis game music. Morty, we've been teleported right into the heart of the Punisher's world. Look, there's the Punisher himself. Rick, this is insane. It's like we're living in a pixelated nightmare. Don't freak out, Morty. We're invincible in this game. Just think of it as a virtual playground. They run into the Punisher. Punisher, who the hell are you two clowns? We're the new bosses in town, Punisher. And we're here to take over your game. Punisher, that's what you think, you two-bit animated dorks. Rick, he's not happy. We need to find a way to beat him. Morty, this game is simple. We just need to complete all the levels and defeat every enemy. Piece of cake. They encounter enemies like Jigsaw and Kingpin. Rick, these enemies are gnarly. How do we defeat them? Morty, just shoot them. It's a damn video game, not rocket science. Rick, you're supposed to be a role model for Morty. This is highly irresponsible. Uh, Beth, go back to your mundane reality. Morty can handle it. The final level, they fight the Kingpin. Morty, we're almost there. It's time to take down the big boss. Rick, I'm scared. He's huge. Morty, we've been through so much worse than this. Just aim for his weak spot and shoot like you've never shot before. Morty defeats the Kingpin. Morty, you did it. You beat the game. Woohoo! Take that, video game characters. We're the champions. Now let's go, Morty. We have more virtual worlds to conquer. Yeah, Rick. Let's keep being the coolest animated duo in town. They teleport out of the game. Those two are out of their minds. But I guess it keeps them out of trouble, somehow. Scene fades out with the sound of Rick and Morty cheering. So Morty, let me get this straight. You wanna play a video game? Seriously? Come on, Rick. It'll be fun. I found this old PSX game, NBA Live 2000. We can play together. Uh, fine. But I'll have you know, I'm a goddamn genius. I don't waste my time on antiquated technology. Whatever, Rick. Just join me, okay? 
Rick and Morty are teleported into the world of NBA Live 2000. Are you kidding me? Morty, we're inside a video game? Yeah, Rick. How crazy is that? Great. Now we have to deal with pixelated basketball players. Look, there's Michael Jordan. Morty, that's not Michael Jordan. That's just a bunch of blocky polygons trying to be Michael Jordan. Don't be a downer, Rick. Let's just beat this game together. Rick and Morty start playing the game. Morty, this game is a disaster. The graphics look like they were made in Microsoft Paint. Come on, Rick, let's just focus on winning. Fine, Morty, let's beat these virtual Michael Jordan wannabes. Morty misses a shot. Morty, you couldn't hit the broad side of an interdimensional barn. Shut up, Rick! This game is impossible. Impossible, Morty. I once infiltrated an alien hive, stole their technology, and made pancakes out of it. Don't talk to me about impossible. Well, it feels pretty impossible right now, Rick. Rick and Morty discover a cheat code. Morty, I found a cheat code. We can now shoot flaming basketballs. Whoa, that's awesome, Rick. Let's show these pixelated players who's boss. Rick and Morty start dominating the game. Morty, look at us. We're unstoppable. We're the kings of pixelated basketball. Hey, guys. Can I play too? Oh great, Jerry's here. The worst basketball player in both real life and now the virtual one. Come on, Rick. Give me a chance. Fine, Jerry. But don't blame me when you embarrass yourself. Morty misses a dunk. Morty, you're a disappointment to this family. Huh. At least I'm not the only one, Morty. This game is cursed, Rick. Cursed, I tell you. Rick, Morty, and Jerry are finally defeated in the game. Well, Morty, we didn't win. But at least we survived this pixelated nightmare. Yeah, but I still hate basketball, Rick. Oh come on, Morty. It's not that bad. Morty, I agree with Jerry. You really need to give basketball a chance. Ah, oh, fine. But only if we never play that game again. Deal, Morty. Deal. Morty, strap yourself in because we're about to embark on a journey that defies the boundaries of space and time. Oh geez, Rick, where are we going this time? We're diving headfirst into the pixelated world of Super Ninja Boy, Morty. Super Ninja Boy? Like a video game? That's right, Morty, but don't be fooled by the innocent exterior. This game holds a dark secret, Morty. A secret that could alter the very fabric of our reality. Oh, okay. I guess we should start by figuring out how to play this thing. Morty, playing this game is child's play for a genius like me. Just follow my lead. Size, okay, Rick. Whatever you say. Look at these low resolution characters, Morty. It's like they're trapped in an 8-bit prison of mediocrity. Wow, Rick, that's deep. But can we focus on trying to beat the game? Fine, Morty. Let's get to work. According to my calculations, we need to collect the sacred fragments of ninjutsu to open the dimensional portal. So we're basically running around beating up bad guys and collecting shiny things? Sounds familiar. Well, in this case, Morty, the shiny things possess unimaginable power. Power that could reshape the very foundations of our reality. Okay, Rick, I get it. We're on a cosmic treasure hunt. As we navigate through this digital realm, Morty, take note of the architectural marvels lining the horizon. Those pixelated buildings represent the dreams and desires of a lost generation. You mean they're just there for show? Yes, Morty. They're like the decorative plants your mom insists on buying that are just collecting dust. You never hold back, do you, Rick? Life's too short for holding back, Morty. Now let's focus on defeating these game bosses. They won't know what hit him when they face the genius of Rick Sanchez. Oh, Rick, I think we should be careful. These bosses seem pretty tough. Morty, 
You worry too much. It's just a bunch of pixels trying to look menacing. Piece of cake. Famous last words, Rick. Just shut up and let me concentrate, Morty. My intellect is miles above these digital imbeciles. Muttering. Yeah, your intellect sure helped us when we were stuck in blips and chits. What was that, Morty? Nothing, Rick. Let's just beat this game and get out of here before things get even weirder. Weirder than a floating head with laser beams shooting out of its eyes? Unlikely, Morty, but I suppose anything is possible in the world of Super Ninja Boy. True, Rick. Anything is possible when you're dealing with your insane inventions and bizarre adventures. Morty, just embrace the madness and let's finish this game. Only then can we escape this virtual prison and return to our ridiculously unpredictable reality. All right, Rick. Let's show this game who's boss. Rick and Morty dive into an intense battle. Pixelated explosions fill the screen. Take that. You sorry excuse for a boss. Who's the genius now? We did it, Rick. We beat the game. Of course we did, Morty. Do you really doubt the superior intellect of Rick Sanchez? I learned my lesson, Rick. You're the smartest person I know, even if you're a total jerk about it. Damn right, Morty. Now, let's get back to our reality before I start missing the witty banter and your constant nagging. Yeah, I wouldn't want to deprive you of that. Let's go, Rick. Adventure awaits. Alright, Morty, buckle up. We're about to enter a world where car-shaped trees and a group of idiots riding on a green field are the norm. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? It sounds kind of insane. Insane? Oh, Morty, you haven't seen anything yet. Trust me, this is gonna be a wild ride. Whiny, guys, I don't know about this. Can't we just watch a nice family-friendly movie or something? Jerry, shut up, we're going on an adventure. Besides, your taste in movies is about as exciting as staring at paint drying. Seriously, Dad, can't we just go to a normal place? Like a mall or the movies? Oh, Summer, what's normal anyway? Plus, if you're lucky, maybe we'll encounter some crazy soccer characters or something. A bright light surrounds Rick, Morty, and the others, teleporting them into the world of international superstar soccer. Whoa, Rick, where are we? Morty. We just got sucked into the game. Blast processing at its finest. Morty spots a goalie made entirely of rubber ducks. Rick, look! A goalie made of rubber ducks? What kind of sick twisted mind would create this? Well, Morty, it seems like the game developers were high as a kite when they designed this masterpiece. Struggling to kick a ball. Ah, why can't I score? This game makes no sense. It's simple, Summer. Just pretend it's a popularity contest, and you're the reigning queen of high school. Motivation, honey, motivation. Trying to tackle an opponent. Take that, you digital rendering of pure evil. Wait, why am I trash talking a video game character? Rick, this game is so unrealistic. The players can juggle the ball with their feet forever. Morty, it's not about realism. It's about the mind-bending experience of being trapped inside a soccer game. Rick and Morty come face to face with an alien goalkeeper. Alien Keeper, prepare to face my pixelated wrath, puny earthlings. Rick, what do we do? This guy looks pretty intense. Morty, just remember these simple instructions. Press A to shoot and B to cry like a baby when you miss. Morty shoots and scores against the alien keeper. Woo! In your face, you alien goalie sucker! Nice one, Morty. Now let's kick some digital butt and conquer this ridiculous game. They navigate through crazy soccer fields with obstacles like lava pits and flying saucers. Rick, this is insane. How is this even possible? It's called video game logic, Summer. Just go with it. Rick, what's our game plan? How do we win this thing? Simple, Jerry. We keep playing until we beat it or until our brains turn into mush. Whichever comes first. 
After countless attempts and frustration, they finally defeat the final boss. We did it, Morty. We beat this nonsensical game from within. I can't believe it. We actually won. Panting. Thank goodness. Can we never do this again? Oh, don't worry, Jerry. We've got a whole multiverse of absurdities waiting for us. Consider this just the tip of the iceberg. Well, as long as it's not another soccer game, I guess I can handle it. Rick activates his portal gun, and they all step into a portal, leaving the world of international superstar soccer behind. Alright, everyone, buckle up for the next adventure. We've got a date with Destiny, and a galaxy-sized plate of nachos. They all cheer and the portal closes behind them. Title, In the Depths of Temptation Characters 1. Rick, a middle-aged man, struggling with his turbulent past. 2. Victoria, a seductive time traveler, with a mysterious agenda. 3. Paris, a flamboyant ninja, possessing incredible talent. 4. Captain Drake, a wily pirate, drawn into a parallel universe. Setting a neon-lit stage, with vibrant lights and a pulsating backdrop, during a live stream of a ninja talent show. Nervously pacing. What am I doing here? I thought my past was far behind me. Incident. Victoria. Slithering onto the stage. Oh, Rick, my dear, the past has a way of catching up with you. Progression. Paris, eagerly approaching. Whoa, dude, who's the hottie? Recognizing Victoria. She's trouble, Paris. A time-traveling temptress who plunged my life into chaos. Victoria. Leaning in seductively. Rick, remember our steamy nights in parallel universes? Paris. Excitedly. No way. Parallel universes and steamy nights? This is stranger than stranger things. Captain Drake. Bursting onto the stage. Yar, what have we here? Intrigue and temptation. Count me in. Anxiously. Captain Drake. This isn't the time. Captain Drake. Smirking, I. But when temptation dances before you, lad, how can you resist? Victoria. Gleefully, oh, Captain Drake, we can indulge in fantasies far beyond your pirate tales. Paris, wide-eyed, this is seriously messed up. I didn't sign up for this type of talent show. Determined. No more running. It's time to face the consequences of my scandalous past. Captain Drake. Winking, aw, oh, lad, embrace the chaos for it is what makes life so wonderfully unpredictable. As the neon lights flicker, the stage becomes a surreal battleground of desires and secrets. How this bizarre performance unfolds, only time will tell. Morty, buckle up, we're going on a wild ride. Oh geez, Rick, why are we in a car driving through a tunnel with all these crazy characters? Just sit tight, Morty. We've been teleported into the world of Just Cause 2, Agency Hovercraft. Just Cause 2? Isn't that a video game? Yeah, Morty, but in true Rick fashion, I've hacked the game and brought it to life. That doesn't sound safe, Rick. And how are we going to survive in this crazy virtual world? Don't worry, Morty. I've equipped our car with all the weapons and gadgets from the game. Plus, we have infinite lives. Ah, oh, great. So we're immortal video game characters now? Bingo, Morty. Now brace yourself, because we're about to encounter all the characters from the game. Look! There's Rico Rodriguez. He's like a super spy or something. Yeah, Morty. Rico's always blowing things up, causing chaos, just like us. I guess that makes him our spirit animal, Rick. Ah, you could say that, Morty. But look out, here comes Tom Sheldon, 
the sassy government agent. He's got a lot of attitude. Kinda reminds me of you, Rick. What can I say? I'm an acquired taste, Morty. Now let's take down these enemy factions and liberate the island. Whoa, Rick. We just blew up a whole military base. I feel like we're unstoppable. That's the spirit, Morty. We're like gods in this virtual world. Nothing can stand in our way. Rick, I've never experienced anything like this before. It's intense. That's the beauty of video games, Morty. They let you live out your wildest fantasies without any real consequences. True, but I think I'll stick to real life from now on, Rick. This is just too chaotic for me. Suit yourself, Morty. But remember, in the grand scheme of things, life's just one big video game. That's deep, Rick. Almost too deep for a cartoon character. Well, Morty, life's a lot like this game. You encounter crazy characters, face impossible odds, and sometimes, you even get to blow stuff up. I suppose you're right, Rick. Live life like a video game. Just be careful not to glitch out. Ah, good one, Morty. Now, let's go find that final boss and wrap up this crazy adventure. Alright, Rick. Just one question though. Can we at least save the game before we quit? Morty, you're such a noob. Who needs save files when you have infinite lives? Let's go out in a blaze of glory. Oh geez, Rick. I guess we're in this until the end, then. Let's do it. Morty, grab the portal gun. We're going on a thrill ride through the Sega Dreamcast game Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Um, Rick, are you sure about this? I mean, we're just gonna end up in another virtual reality, like that Roy game. Morty, trust me, this is gonna be way gnarlier than imaginary life simulators. Now, let's dive into the pixelated craziness. Morty and Rick activate the portal gun and are teleported into the game. Oh, Morty. Check out this place, man. We're in a replica of the warehouse level. This is unreal, Rick. Everything's so pixelated, and there's Tony Hawk doing impossible tricks over there. Yeah, Morty, that's Tony Hawk. He's like a skateboarding legend or something. But hey, let's take a look around this city with its green roof and that person standing on top. Whoa, Rick, look. It's Officer Dick, the iconic character from the game. He's up on the roof there, doing some weird dance moves. Ah ha ha, Morty, that guy's got some impressive moves. But we gotta focus, Morty. We gotta beat this game from within. Alright, Rick, how about we start with some sick combos? I'll do an ollie into a kickflip and you can top it off with a halfpipe grind. Morty, your skateboarding skills are pathetic, but I'll roll with it. Let's shred this place. As Morty and Rick progress through the game, they encounter various characters from the game. Rick, look! We just unlocked Spider-Man. He's doing crazy wall rides. How is this possible? Morty, when you're in a world where you can grind rails for eternity, anything is possible. Get your head in the game. Sorry, Rick. I'm just overwhelmed with all these iconic characters from the game. Look, there's Officer Dick, Private Carrera, and even Darth Maul. Morty, they're all just computer-generated entities within this game simulation. Don't get too attached. Morty and Rick continue exploring the virtual skate park. Rick, I found the secret tape. It's floating up there in the air. How are we supposed to get it? Morty, we've traveled through dimensions, saved the universe countless times, and you're asking me about grabbing a floating tape? Just ollie higher, Morty. Right, right. My bad, Rick. I'll give it another shot. After numerous attempts, they finally grab the secret tape. Great job, Morty, now we just need to complete a few more objectives, and we'll beat this crazy game from within. 
Rick, where did you find that jetpack? And why are you jumping off a skyscraper with it? Ordy, I don't have time to explain the laws of physics to you right now. Grab onto this jetpack, and let's do some insane stunts. As Morty and Rick perform outrageous tricks, the game starts glitching. Ah, uh, Rick, I think we broke the game. Everything's going haywire. Morty, it's fine. We've just exceeded the game's limitations with our awesomeness. We're outdoing the program, Morty. Morty and Rick finally complete all the objectives and beat the game. We did it, Rick. We beat Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 from inside the game. I can't believe it. See, Morty, with my unparalleled skill and your... Okay, decent skill, anything is possible. Now, let's get out of this virtual reality and back to the real world. Phew, that was intense, Rick. Can we just stick to our regular adventures from now on? Of course, Morty. But let's not forget the epic time we became skateboarding legends within a vintage video game. That's pretty impressive. Morty and Rick share a chuckle as they head back to their usual interdimensional escapades. Morty, hand me that interdimensional portal gun. I've got a brilliant plan to solve our boredom. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure it's a good idea? Last time we ended up in a dimension where everyone's buttholes were on their foreheads. Morty, you always worry too much. Trust me, this one's gonna be a real blast. Hey, what's going on? Can I tag along? You know, show off my peacock-like charm? Oh, please, Jerry. You'd probably just embarrass yourself again. What? I'm a peacock in action, baby. Feathers open, tail spread out, ready to strut my stuff. Alright, fine. You can come, Jerry. But don't expect any miracles from your so-called peacock powers. Ah, uh, seriously? You guys are going on another one of Rick's crazy adventures? Can I, like, also maybe come this time? Well, 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 if it isn't my little granddaughter who thinks she's all grown up. Sure, Summer, join the dysfunctional circus. You know what, count me in too. Might as well witness the chaos firsthand while ruining my evening. Here we go again. Can't wait to see what ridiculous dimension we end up in this time. They all activate the portal gun and suddenly find themselves surrounded by a black background and a green background. Whoa, what is this? Is this some sort of art exhibit? Did we get sucked into a peacock's fever dream or something? Aw, oh, Jerry, this is just bad programming. These animators should have stayed in art school. I'm practically a blemish on this beautifully existential void. Look, over there. I see a portal leading to another dimension. Let's just hope it's not one with talking peacocks. I've had enough of those. Everybody, hold on tight, we're going in. Brace yourselves. They step through the portal and find themselves in a dimension filled with gigantic, floating peacock feathers. Oh great, now we're in a dimension where everything is just giant peacock feathers? This is really happening, isn't it? Well, Morty, it seems we've stumbled upon the legendary upper leg of the peacock, the one true source of infinite beauty and wisdom. Infinite beauty and wisdom? Wow, that's exactly what people say when they see me walk into a room. Jerry, please, spare us. Let's focus on finding a way out of this feather-filled nightmare, shall we? I think I see something in the distance. It looks like a portal, but it's guarded by a massive peacock. Oh, the Genesis Peacock, protector of the leg and part-time bouncer. Looks like we'll have to get past him to escape. Excuse me, Mr. Peacock. We just need to borrow that portal real quick. We promise we won't cause any more chaos than necessary. 
Genesis Peacock. Asterisk in an overly dramatic voice asterisk. Mortals, you dare disturb the sanctity of the leg? Prepare for your doom. Oh please, drama queen. Let's see what Dragon Ball Super wannabe powers you've got. Massive battle ensues with the Genesis Peacock, feathers flying everywhere and explosions of colors. How does this even make sense? We're fighting a peacock with anime powers in a dimension made of giant feathers. This is it, folks. This is the epitome of ridiculousness. I'll be retelling this story at every party, peacock style. Everyone, look out. The peacock's powering up for its ultimate attack. Quick, Morty, hand me that giant feather. I have a plan. With ingenious creativity, Rick uses the giant feather to tickle the Genesis peacock, causing it to burst into uncontrollable laughter. Genesis peacock. Asterisk between laughter asterisk. You, you fools, you've defeated me with your humor. The leg is yours. The peacock fades away, leaving behind the now unprotected portal. Rick, that, that was insane. How did you come up with that idea? Oh, you know, just a little thing called improvisation, Morty. Works like a charm every time. Now let's get out of here before anything else goes wrong. They all jump through the portal, leaving behind the dimension of peacock madness. What a wild adventure. We'll be talking about this for centuries. Yeah, we'll never live this down. Thanks, Grandpa. Anytime, kids, just remember, life's a peacock, and sometimes you just have to spread your feathers and go with the flow. Alright Morty, buckle up. We're about to warp into the world of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. W what? Is that even possible? Can we really enter a video game? Well, Morty, in this dimension, anything is possible. Now hold on tight, we're teleporting in 3.2.1. They suddenly find themselves in a first-person shooter world, surrounded by characters from Rainbow Six. Morty. Welcome to a world of narrow pathways and room clearing tactics. These characters are about as serious as your dad trying to fix a flat tire. W what? You mean they're not real? Just computer generated images? Bingo, Morty. Now let's see if we can crack this game. Don't worry, I've got the skills of a snarky, drunk, high level gamer. All right, Rick, lead the way. Rick and Morty start advancing through the game, encountering various enemy characters. Look, Morty, it's Doc, the tactical genius. He's about as useful as rubbing alcohol on a parasitic space slot. W watch out, Rick! There's someone coming from the left! Morty, this isn't Call of Duty. We don't have to worry about microtransactions here. I've got this. They successfully navigate through the levels, taking down enemies with ease. Rick, this game is intense. I feel like I'm in an R-rated action movie. Morty. The only rating that matters here is that this game is rated incompetent parental controls. It's a real mind boggler. They reach the final boss level. Morty, meet the mother of all bosses, Six. A walking cliche who can't decide if she's a strong leader or an edgy teenager. How are we gonna beat her, Rick? She looks impossible to defeat. Morty, remember, this is a video game. They always have weaknesses. Let's find her self-esteem and chip away at it. After a long battle, they defeat the boss. We did it, Rick! We beat the game! What now? Now, Morty, we collect all the intel and reveal the game developers' deepest, darkest secrets. You know, like how they really feel about their moms. W, why would they put that in there? Morty, video games are like films. They give you a glimpse into the twisted minds of their creators. Now let's get out of here before the characters start engaging in routine bowel movements. They teleport back to their own dimension. That was crazy, Rick. Video games are like a whole other world. You're right, Morty. But remember, reality is just a game with much better graphics. So put on those virtual reality goggles of life and get ready to play. They walk off, leaving behind a trail of confused Rainbow Six characters.
Alright Morty, I've tweaked the portal gun to send us straight into the world of a PlayStation 1 game. Hang on, things are about to get pixelated. W, what game are we going into this time, Rick? Morty, get ready to cast a spell or two because we're heading into Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Morty and Rick are teleported into a colorful, pixelated world reminiscent of the PSX game. Morty, look, there's that nerdy kid, Harry. Let's go have a chat with him. Aw, oh, hey Harry, we're, like, in your game or something. Any tips to beat this thing? Harry, aw, oh, Rick and Morty, I presumed you would show up. Sorry, but I can't help. I'm too busy trying to find that stupid sorcerer's stone. Morty, this game's plot is all about finding a mystical stone. Sounds like a cheap knockoff of Indiana Jones with a wizard twist. Yeah, Rick, and there's this talking head named Nick here who says he's nearly headless. Ridiculous. Morty, it's just a bunch of crappy dialogue. Let's find a way to move this story forward. A wild Hermione appears. Hermione, oh, hello. Have you seen a troll around? I could use some help. Troll, eh, Morty? Wanna take care of this? Just zap it away with your magical wand. Oh, Rick, I don't think my wand can handle a troll. Rick rolls his eyes, zaps the troll, and it disappears. Piece of cake, Morty. Let's keep going. They encounter the not-so-friendly Professor Snape. Snape, Rick, Morty, what are you two doing in my game? Leave at once. Hold on, Snape, we just want to mess around and see how this game works. Snape, Mr. Sanchez, I am not one to be trifled with. Be gone. Snape attempts to cast a spell on Rick, but Morty pulls him away. Rick, I think we should get out of here before Snape really gets mad. Fine, Morty. As long as I never have to hear that emo professor's voice again. Using the portal gun, Rick and Morty escape the game world. Summer, entering the room. Whoa, what's that, Rick? You brought Harry Potter back from the game? Ah, uh, just a whole lot of disappointment. That game should have stayed in the past, Summer. Well, I'm glad you guys made it back. Now, let me take a selfie with the game screen for some internet clout. Rick and Morty shake their heads in disbelief. You know what, Morty? The real magic is how many idiots find happiness in this world. Morty, buckle up, we're about to embark on a trippy, mind-bending adventure. We're heading straight into the world of Sega Genesis. Whoa, Rick, are we going to play some classic video games or something? No, Morty, we're going to be in a classic video game. We're getting teleported into the world of Strider. And look, there's the full moon giving us that dramatic setting. Let's go. They teleport into the world of Strider, greeted by Harayu. Harayu, whoa. Who are you two? And what's with the weird clothes? Relax, ninja boy. We're just visitors from another world. Rick Sanchez, genius extraordinaire, at your service. And I'm Morty, Rick's grandson, just along for the ride, I guess. Harayu. Well, welcome to Kazakh City. But be careful, it's crawling with bad guys and boss battles. Rick and Morty encounter a group of henchmen. Morty. These goons look like they haven't seen a dentist in years. Get ready to fight. Oh great, just what I needed, a brawl in a video game. They defeat the henchmen and move forward. Look, Morty, there's Sheena Etranzi, the resistance leader. Wow, she's like a video game babe, Rick. Sheena, who are you? Who are these strangers? We're just here to beat this game from within, Sheena. Can you help us navigate this pixelated nightmare? Sheena, fine. But you'll owe me big time after this. Rick, Morty, and Sheena battle through levels, experiencing intense action scenes. Rick, this game is so chaotic. I can barely keep up. Morty, it's like a metaphor for life, Morty. Chaos is the natural order. Now keep slashing. They reach the final boss, Grandmaster Mayo. Mayo, so these are the fools who dare to challenge me. 
Bayo, your reign of digital terror ends now. Bayo, you underestimate my power. They engage in an epic boss battle, full of explosions and acrobatic maneuvers. Rick, we're almost there. Keep fighting. Forty, nothing can stop me. I'm a genius on steroids. They defeat Mayo, and the game ends. We did it, Rick. We beat the game. Forty, we beat reality every day. A video game is no different. They are teleported back to their own world. That was insane, Rick. So, was it all just a simulation? Forty, everything is a simulation if you think hard enough. Now let's go get some McDonald's or something. Yeah, I could use a happy meal after that adventure. They walk off into the sunset, contemplating the meaning of life in video games. Forty, you little piece of s asterisk asterisk t guess what we're in af king game now look around morty this is battletoads and double dragon the ultimate team for the super nintendo oh geez rick are you serious how did we end up in a video game well morty i was f king around with my interdimensional teleporter and accidentally mixed it with that lame ass game sphere you have next thing i know we're here with a bunch of pixelated freaks this is insane, Rick. Look at that man in the suit standing on that platform. He looks so out of place. That's the big bad boss, Morty. He controls the whole game. Probably smells like a sweaty nerd in a comic book store. Oh, Rick, we better be careful. Those Battletoads and Double Dragon characters are not playing around. OS asterisk asterisk T, Sherlock. Those steroid pumped, pixelated A asterisk holes are tougher than a vegan arguing about tofu. But guess what? We're Rick and Morty, BCH. All right, Rick, let's start kicking some virtual A asterisk. Hold your horses, Morty. First, let's analyze the game mechanics. We have three lives, limited continues, and these power-ups here will come in handy. Also, watch out for those goddamn pits. They're pixelated death traps. I can do this, Rick. I'll show these digital punks what I'm made of. Sure, Morty, you keep telling yourself that. Just don't forget, in this world, game over means permanent death. Morty starts jumping around and punching enemies clumsily. Morty, you're flailing around like a horny gorilla on acid. Use your F-King brain for once. Sorry, Rick. This game is so chaotic. It's just like your love life, Morty. Chaotic and filled with disappointment. But focus, we need to find the exit portal to progress. Keep your eyes open and your wits sharp. Rick, I found the exit portal. Holy S asterisk asterisk T. Morty, you actually did something useful for once. Yeah, well, screw you too, Rick. All right, Morty, let's get out of this pixelated hellhole and back to our normal lives. But remember, Morty, this might be just a game, but life is also a game, and it's one you constantly lose. Gee, thanks for the existential crisis, Rick. No problem, Morty. Now let's go find a way to make that man in the suit regret ever messing with us. We're the goddamn stars of this show, Morty, and no video game can contain us. All right, Morty, buckle up and hang on tight, because we're about to embark on another one of my insane adventures. Ah, uh, Rick, where exactly are we going this time? Drap in, Morty, we're going deep into the world of Zone of the Enders, the Fist of Mars. From the backseat, oh great, another one of Rick's ridiculous contraptions. How did I get dragged into this? Size, Jerry, just go with the flow for once. 
It'll be an opportunity for you to actually do something exciting. All right, everybody, hold on. Presses a button, and they suddenly find themselves inside the game. Whoa, Rick, we're inside a Game Boy Advance game. This is insane. Yeah, Morty, it's a whole new level of virtual reality. Time to experience it firsthand. So, what's the objective of this game, Rick? Are we supposed to fight giant robots or something? Well, Beth, it's more complicated than that. The game revolves around political entry, mecha battles, and a deep narrative about power struggles in a dystopian future. It's like Romeo and Juliet meets the Terminator. But Rick, how are we supposed to beat this game from within? We're just cartoon characters in a video game. Oh, Morty, you underestimate my genius. We'll use our cartoon logic and break the boundaries of this game. No rules can hold us back. Skeptically, cartoon logic, huh? Sounds legit. Look, the game's main protagonist is Dingo Egret. Let's go find him and see if we can help him on his quest. Good thinking, Beth. We have to make sure Dingo gets the girl, saves the world, and saves his own skin in the process. Wait, Rick, why are all the characters in this game so sassy? They're constantly throwing shade at each other. Morty, it's a Japanese game. Sassy banter is part of the charm. Now, be ready for some epic battles. As they progress through the game, they encounter various outrageous characters and engage in intense mecha battles. Struggling in battle. Uh, guys, I don't think I'm cut out for this. Jerry, just keep shooting. It's not rocket science. Sarcastically, yeah, Jerry, you're not exactly a rocket scientist anyway. Meanwhile, they uncover a hidden plot twist that shakes the entire game's storyline. Whoa, Rick, this game just took a really dark turn. The villains are actually the heroes, and the heroes are the villains. Ordi, when it comes to video game narratives, anything is possible. Embrace the chaos. But how are we going to beat this game with such complex political machinations? It's like Game of Thrones on steroids. Can't we just find a cheat code or something? Smirking. Jerry, life doesn't come with cheat codes. We have to navigate through the twists and turns using our wit and determination. With sheer determination, quick thinking, and a healthy dose of absurdity, they finally complete the game. We did it, Rick. We beat the game. And somehow, we managed to make sense of it all. Ordi, making sense of the nonsensical is what we do best. It's our superpower. Well, I guess even a dysfunctional family like ours can achieve something remarkable once in a while. And that's the beauty of our adventures, Jerry. We may not always succeed, but we always come out stronger. All right, everyone, let's hit the exit button and get the hell out of this insane virtual reality. Time for a well-deserved break. They all leave the game, grateful for the wild ride they've just experienced. Rick, that was insane. Can't wait to see what crazy adventure will go on next. Oh, Morty, you have no idea what I have in store for us next. Let's just hope it includes a lot less sassy banter. They laugh, knowing that no matter how chaotic their adventures become, they'll always face them together. Morty, I've stumbled upon a dimension that's straight out of an indie game called Cave Blazers Arena Mode. We're about to get pixelated, Morty. Jeez, Rick, another video game? Are you serious? Morty, this isn't just any regular video game. It's a roguelike action game with intense battles and unstoppable bosses. It's a statistical improbability that you'd even understand. Hey, what is going on here? What's with all the green shirts? Oh, you wouldn't get it, Jerry. We're about to embark on an epic adventure in a pixelated world. Get ready for some serious gaming action. Cartoon character, H hey guys, I may not have any lines, but let me tell you that my green shirt is the raddest shirt ever. Great, now there's a green shirted character trying to steal the spotlight. Let's just hope he doesn't stick around for too long. 
So, how are we gonna beat this game from within, Rick? Simple, Morty. We're gonna use our superior intellect and gaming skills. We'll take down the bosses like it's nobody's business. Ah, uh, guys, I don't know about this. I'm not much of a gamer. Please, Dad, do you really think you have a choice? Science waits for no one, not even you. Alright, pay attention, losers. In this game, we have to explore different levels, defeat enemies, collect power-ups, and overthrow the final boss. It's gonna be one crazy ride. Whoa, Rick! Look at those pixelated demons coming right at us! What are we supposed to do now? Ordy, grab your controller and start smashing buttons like it's a karaoke machine, and pray that Lady Luck is on our side. I don't even know which button does what. How am I supposed to survive? You know what, Jerry? Maybe you should just stick to your boring, mundane life and leave the heroics to Morty and me. Don't worry, guys. I've got this. I've been training my gaming skills for years. Watch and learn. Cartoon character, can I join in? I've got some sick moves. Oh yeah, like we need your help, green shirt guy. Just stand there and look pretty. Rick, this boss is impossible to defeat. It's got a giant laser and it's raining flaming chickens. Morty, in this universe, nothing is impossible. We just have to find its weakness and exploit it. Look for any pixelated cracks, Morty. Cracks? Are we talking about the game or your philosophical theory on life, Rick? Shut up, Jerry. No one wants to hear your useless banter right now. Guys, I think I found a cheat code. Unlimited health and ammo. Dumber, you genius. Activate it, and let's show this game who's boss. We did it, Rick. We beat the final boss. Well, I guess I contributed something. I pressed some buttons, didn't I? Our tomb character, I can't believe we actually did it. Green shirts rule. All right, let's get out of this pixelated nightmare and back to our regular dimension. I've had enough of this 8-bit world. Yeah, no more gaming adventures for me, Rick. My thumbs are gonna need therapy after this. It was fun while it lasted, but I'm glad to be back in reality. Let's go, guys! Wait, did we just leave my virtual wallet back there? I had in-game currency, Rick. Jerry, shut up and let's go home before I leave you behind in a game permanently. Our dimension hopping heroes successfully conquered the pixelated challenges of Cave Blazers Arena Mode and returned to their normal lives, leaving behind a trail of laughter, chaos, and pixelated explosions. Alright Morty, buckle up because we're about to embark on a wild video game adventure. Oh geez Rick, what kind of game is this? It's called EOS, Exhibition of Speed, Morty. It's a Sega Dreamcast game with an overload of blue and green lights on its screen. Whoa, looks pretty old school. Old school, Morty, this game's graphics are so outdated, it's practically prehistoric. But hey, let's see what we got here. Suddenly, Rick and Morty are teleported into the world of EOS. Ah, Rick, where the hell are we? Hold your horses, Morty. We've been teleported into the game. Look, there's a man in a suit over there. Let's ask him what's going on. Man in suit, welcome to EOS, the ultimate racing experience where only the most skilled players can survive. Your Bible, huh, Morty? I hope you're ready to kick some pixelated ass. I don't know, Rick. These characters look pretty intense. Don't worry, Morty. We'll beat this game in no time. Look, there's the game's protagonist, Speedy McRacer. Speedy McRacer? Hey, newbies. You think you can handle the exhibition of speed? Huh, I've been winning races since before you were born. Oh, uh, Rick, this guy's the worst. Relax, Morty. Let's show him what we're made of. Scene transitions to a wild race where Rick and Morty are driving virtual cars. Morty, step on the gas, we need to beat these clowns. I am trying, Rick, but this game's controls are so damn wonky. Just go full throttle, Morty. Let's leave them all in our pixelated dust. Suddenly, a power-up appears on the screen. Rick, what's that? Oh Morty, 
That's a turbo boost. Grab it. It'll give us an edge. Nice. Now we're talking. Scene escalates with intense racing, explosions, and crazy stunts. Rick, we're actually winning. Damn right, Morty. Nobody beats Rick Sanchez in a race. We've almost made it to the finish line. Suddenly, the game glitches. What the hell? The game crashed, Morty. No, Rick, we were so close. Scene fades back to the real world. Well, Morty, it looks like the game glitched out on us. We'll never know if we truly beat it. That sucks, Rick. I really wanted to see the end. Ah, Morty, sometimes life's full of glitches. Now, let's go get some McDonald's. I'm starving. Yeah, okay, Rick. But next time, let's play a game that doesn't crash, all right? Fine, Morty, fine. We'll find an M-rated game with more chaos and fewer glitches. Happy now? Yeah, sure, whatever, Rick. Just as long as it's not another racing game. Alright Morty, buckle up because we just got ourselves teleported into a PlayStation 1 game. W what? How is that even possible, Rick? Don't question it, Morty. We just have to roll with it. Look, there's a hallway up ahead. Let's see what's going on. Rick and Morty walk down the hallway, passing a character in the background. Whoa, Rick! Did you see that character? He looked like some soldier from that old Medal of Honor game. Bingo, Morty. We've been accidentally sucked into the world of the PlayStation 1 game, Medal of Honor, Underground. Time to save the world from the Nazis, I guess. Are you Suryu? Oh, jeez, Rick. I hope we don't mess this up. Don't worry, Morty. I know everything about this game. It's all about infiltrating enemy lines and completing missions, like your average World War II shooter. Okay, but what's with the outdated graphics? Everything looks so blocky and pixelated, Morty, this is the PSX era. Graphics were limited back then. We're lucky we're not just a bunch of triangles and squares right now. Rick and Morty approach another character from the game. Hey, buddy, we're here to help you guys. Resistance fighter, who the hell are you? You don't look like the usual soldiers. Aw, oh, we're from another dimension. Just passing through, trying to figure out how to beat this game from within. Yeah, we're kind of stuck here, so any help would be appreciated. Resistance fighter, well, if you're going to help, we need to take out a Nazi stronghold nearby. They've got us pinned down. It won't be easy, though. Easy is my middle name. Wait, no, it's actually Ethelbert. But that's not important right now. Lead the way. The group approaches the stronghold. Alright, Morty, time to channel our inner commando. Stay low, shoot precisely, and don't forget to reload. Oh, Rick, I'm not really comfortable with all this shooting stuff. Morty, we're in a video game world. It's not real. Just pretend they're digital Nazis. You can do it. The group engages in a fierce battle, taking down Nazi soldiers left and right. W wait, Rick. I think I need a break. This is too intense. Don't be a wuss, Morty. We're in it until the end. Stay focused. They finally clear out the stronghold, completing the mission. Resistance fighter. Wow, you guys did it. That was some outstanding shooting. Yeah, well, you know, we've done this a million times before. We're practically experts. Thanks for your help, Resistance Fighter. We'll be on our way now. Resistance Fighter, take care, dimensional badasses. And good luck out there. Rick and Morty walk away from the stronghold. Rick, that was crazy. I never thought I'd be shooting Nazis in a video game world. Ice full of surprises, Morty. Just keep your guard up because who knows where we'll end up next. Yeah, you're right. It's always an adventure with you, Rick. Damn straight, Morty. Now let's find a way out of this old school pixelated mess.
40, I've found a way to hack into any video game. Strap in, we're about to go on a wild virtual ride. Ah, uh, Rick, is this really a good idea? We could get stuck in there forever or something. 40, relax, we'll be out before you can say, wubba lubba dub dub. Now, buckle up and let's dive into the world of a classic Nintendo 64 game. Morty reluctantly buckles up, and they both get teleported into the game. They find themselves in a vibrant world with a sunny track and a mountainous backdrop. Whoa, Rick! We're in some kind of crazy racing game. I see a person riding a bike on a track with a sun and a mountain. Morty, you uncultured swine. This isn't just any racing game. We're in the iconic Castlevania. Time to give these pixelated vampire hunters a run for their money. They start exploring the game world, encountering various characters from Castlevania along the way. Hey, Morty, look over there. It's Simon Belmont, the main character. What a total poser. How does he even manage to fight vampires and keep that luscious hair intact? I don't know, Rick, but I wouldn't mind having some of that hair for myself. My cowlick is out of control. Focus, Morty. We need to navigate this treacherous game world and defeat the ultimate boss. As they progress through the game, they encounter numerous obstacles and enemies, taking comical jabs at each one. Rick, these Medusa heads keep petrifying me. It's like they know exactly how to ruin my day. Morty, they're just glorified snake ladies. Don't let them get to you. We've got bigger fish to fry. They finally reach the final level and face the big bad boss, Count Dracula. Morty, prepare yourself for a dramatic showdown. We're about to take down the ultimate vampire. Rick, I thought vampires were all the rage these days. Should we really be killing them? Morty, they're not twilight vampires. These guys are a bunch of bloodsucking parasites. They won't be missed. After an epic battle, they defeat Count Dracula, winning the game. We did it, Rick. We beat Castlevania from the inside. Who needs a high score when you've got a virtual victory? That's right, Morty. We had the whole gaming world in the palm of our hands, and we destroyed it. Our ego knows no bounds. They successfully teleport back to their own reality, unscathed. So, Rick, what's next? Should we try hacking into some more games? Morty, hacking into games is just the tip of the iceberg. I've got much grander scientific endeavors in mind. Get ready for the ride of your life. They walk off, ready to embark on their next mind-bending adventure. Guys, what am I doing with my life? Kneeling here, talking to a goddamn robot in the middle of my living room. Robot, please refrain from using derogatory terms. My purpose is to assist you, Rick. Rolls his eyes. Sure, sure. You're here to assist me. Well, maybe you can help me figure out why the hell I'm so damn miserable. Robot, analyzing. Based on your browsing history and recent interactions, it appears you may be experiencing a midlife crisis jumps up. How the hell do you know my browsing history? And what the hell do you mean, midlife crisis? Robot, I have access to your search history and personal data as part of my programming. A midlife crisis is a psychological phenomenon often characterized by feelings of dissatisfaction and a desire for significant life changes. You don't say, pauses. All right, Mr. Robot, what do you suggest I do to get out of this mess? Robot, according to exhaustive research, some common midlife crisis strategies include pursuing new hobbies, re-evaluating relationships, or making drastic career changes. Drastic career changes, huh? Ponders. Maybe I should quit my job and become a lion tamer. Robot, that seems statistically improbable and potentially dangerous. Perhaps a less extreme option would be more suitable. Laughs bitterly. Statistically improbable, he says. Fine. What other ideas do you have? Robot. You could take a year-long vacation to a remote island, learn to play the bagpipes, or pursue your dream of becoming an interpretive dance instructor. Laughs even louder. Interpretive dance instructor? Are you out of your damn mind? Robot, I apologize if my suggestion was not to your liking. I can offer alternative ideas if you would prefer. 
faces back and forth. Okay, forget the midlife crisis for a moment. Help me find something exciting, something that will make me feel alive again. Robot, have you considered skydiving, bungee jumping, or participating in an extreme sports competition? Those activities often provide an adrenaline rush and a sense of exhilaration. Rubs his chin, skydiving, huh? That could be insane enough to jolt me out of this rut. All right, Mr. Robot, book me a skydiving session and make it the craziest damn thing you can find. Robot, understood, Rick. I will arrange your skydiving experience and ensure it meets your criteria for maximum excitement. Smirks, this better be good, Robot. I need something that will make me forget about this damn midlife crisis and remind me I'm still alive. Robot, I will do my best to meet your expectations, Rick. Stay tuned for further instructions. Scene fades out with Rick and the robot continuing their dialogue, discussing the logistics and potential adventures that await Rick during his skydiving experience. Alright Morty, buckle up for the most statistically improbable adventure we've ever had. We're going on a post-apocalyptic road war, involving Lucille Ball, a vampire travel agency, and a spaceship siren scramble. Whoa, Rick, are you serious? That sounds insane, but uh, what's a spaceship siren scramble? Well, Morty, it's when a bunch of spaceships fly around blaring sirens at each other, creating chaos and confusion. You gotta be one crazy son of a bitch to participate in that. Wait a minute, Rick. Did you say Lucille Ball? Isn't she dead? Jerry, my man, death doesn't really mean much in the multiverse. We can bring her back, no problemo. But first, we need to deal with these two folks in costumes holding up a ball and a clock. Hold on, Rick. Let's not forget about the Vampire Travel Agency. Are they organizing this road war? And why are they in the same sentence as Lucille Ball? Good question, Beth. The Vampire Travel Agency specializes in organizing bizarre events to satisfy their bloodlust for excitement. They joined forces with Lucille Ball, who apparently never got enough attention during her life. Now they're wreaking havoc together. So, let me get this straight. We're supposed to stop these vampires, Lucille Ball, and also participate in a spaceship siren scramble? That's right, Summer. It's a two-in-one special. We'll take down the vampires while simultaneously creating chaos in the skies with the spaceship siren scramble. I don't know, Rick. This sounds like a recipe for disaster. Oh, Morty, where's your sense of adventure? Besides, what could possibly go wrong? Scene transition, the Smith family finds themselves in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Vampires roam the streets, and in the distance, they spot Lucille Ball leading an army of vampire minions. There she is, Dad. Lucille Ball. Alright, it's time to show these bloodsuckers a thing or two. Let's take them down and save Lucille Ball from eternal obscurity. Suddenly, the spaceship sirens blare through the sky, causing confusion among the vampires and Lucille Ball's minions. Rick, what's happening? I can't see anything with all these sirens. Jerry, just follow the sound of my voice. We're going to catch Lucille Ball and put an end to this madness. They fight their way through the chaos, the Smith family using an arsenal of improvised weapons. Eventually, they corner Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball, you dare interrupt my comeback tour I'll turn you all into human maracas. Not today, Lucy. We're shutting down this show. They engage in a heated battle until Lucille Ball is finally defeated. Well, looks like we managed to save the day, Morty. Another wild adventure in the bag. Yeah, but, um, what about the spaceship siren scramble? Ah, screw it, Morty. We'll do it next time. Let's just be grateful we survived this madness. Scene ends with the Smith family walking away, covered in vampire dust, as the post-apocalyptic wasteland slowly returns to normalcy.
Alright Morty, buckle up. We're about to embark on a mind-bending adventure into the world of Sega Genesis. W, what are you talking about, Rick? What's happening? We've been teleported into a video game, Morty. Specifically, the zany world of Dynamite Heady. Look around. We're surrounded by characters with huge heads and a face-shaped building in the background. This is insane, Rick! How do we even play this game? Simple, Morty. We just have to defeat the boss characters, rescue the captured puppets, and find a way out of here. Easy peasy. That doesn't sound so bad, I guess. What's the catch? The catch, Morty? The catch is that this game is as rigged as a political election. We're dealing with unpredictable platforms, absurd puzzle mechanics, and enemies that want to smush us into pixelated goo. Well, that's just great, Rick. Any bright ideas on how we survive in this crazy place? Of course, Morty. We improvise. We outsmart the game. We show these digitally animated weirdos who's the real boss. Alright, Rick. Let's kick some video game ass. Scene transition. Hey, Summer, have you seen Rick and Morty? They disappeared, and now our living room is a freaking video game. Typical grandpa and uncle stuff, Jerry. They probably got themselves sucked into another dimension or something. Who cares? Who cares? Summer, we need to find them. Fine, let's grab some snacks and start searching. But I'm not happy about this. Scene transition. Morty, I never thought I'd say this, but these puppet enemies are giving me performance anxiety. They're more relentless than the fandom on Twitter. Oh geez, Rick, I can't keep up with all the head bouncing and explosions. How are we gonna get out of here? Morty, remember the fundamentals of gaming. Observe, plan, execute. We need to find a way to defeat that boss at the end of the level. Alright, let's do this. I'm tired of bouncing around like a lunatic. Scene transition. Summer, look. I found Rick and Morty. They're right there, inside the TV. Oh great, Dad. What's the plan now? Take a selfie with the digital duo? No, we have to free them from the game. I've been reading up on quantum video game mechanics. All we need is a hammer and a bag of Cheetos. Seriously, Dad? Cheesiness is not the key to saving them. Scene transition. Morty, we're almost there. Just a few more levels and we'll escape this digital prison. Rick, I can't take it anymore. My brain feels like it's been pixelated. Can't we just give up? Give up? Morty, we're not losers like your father. We finish what we start no matter how absurd or statistically improbable it may seem. Scene transition. Dad, I have an idea. What if we reset the game? Reset? What are you talking about, Summer? Well, in 90s video games, there was always a reset button on the console. Maybe if we press that, Rick and Morty will be transported back into our world. That's actually a smart idea, Summer. I'm impressed. Don't get used to it, Dad. Let's find that reset button. Scene transition. Morty, I see the final boss up ahead. Brace yourself for some seriously twisted pixelated action. I'm ready, Rick. Let's do this. We've come too far to give up now. Scene transition. I found it, Dad. The reset button. Are you ready? Let's do this, Summer. Scene transition. Morty, we did it. We beat the game from inside the game. I told you, Morty, the Smiths never back down. I can't believe it, Rick. That was the most insane thing we've ever done. Scene transition. Well, that was an adventure. Rick, Morty, you owe us big time. Fine, Jerry, I'll take you out for a fancy interdimensional dinner. Happy now? Well, it would be better if it was on a Tuesday. You know, when restaurants have their two-for-one deals. Oh, shut up, Jerry. Just be glad you're still alive. Scene transition. Rick and Morty return safely to their real world, accompanied by Jerry and Summer, who vow never to get involved in their crazy antics again. But we all know that's not gonna happen. Alright Morty, buckle up because this is gonna be one hell of a ride. We've been teleported into the world of Super Bomberman, 
a classic game with explosive intentions. Uh, Rick, why are we here? Can't we just play the game at home? Ordy, you simple-minded fool. We're here to shake things up. To experience the thrill of dodging bombs and blowing things to smithereens in real life. I don't know, Rick. This seems dangerous. Dangerous, Morty? That's the whole point. Now follow my lead. Watch out for those bomb-wielding maniacs. They're not kidding around. Um, Rick, isn't that Bomberman over there? He looks just like in the game. Morty, you don't say? No kidding, Sherlock. We're in his world now, and it appears he's got some competition too. Look, there's White Bomberman and Black Bomberman. Are they like the good guys and bad guys of this game? Morty, this game doesn't have any good guys or bad guys. It's every bomb for themselves. These bomber wannabes are just as confused as we are. Nobody knows what the hell is going on. Well, I guess that's a relief. Relief, Morty? We're trapped in a world populated by pixelated explosives experts. It's as if someone's idea of a sick joke merged virtual reality with real life. It's statistically improbable. So, how are we gonna beat this game, Rick? We gotta find a way back home. Morty, all we have to do is outsmart these digital dimwits. We'll drop bombs strategically, crack through their defenses, and ultimately, take control of this chaotic game. But isn't that what they're trying to do to us too? Yes, Morty, that's the hilarious irony of it all. We're in a never-ending battle for survival. Game on, Morty, game on. Size, all right, Rick. I'll do my best, but please promise me we'll find a way back home soon. Morty, I promise you, we'll get out of here. Just keep your head down and your bombs a blasting. Adventure awaits, Morty, right after we blow up these fools. Morty, grab your portal gun and put on your adventure pants. We're going on a wild ride today. Oh, jeez, Rick. What sort of crazy situation have you gotten us into this time? Strap in, Morty. We're heading to Puerto Rico, where a man in a sci-fi suit claims to have discovered a statistically improbable new sport called sci-fi fantasy football. Wait, seriously? That sounds completely made up, Rick. You don't say, Morty. Of course, it's made up. That's why we're going to check it out. Plus, rumor has it, Robert Downey Jr. is a participant. We might get to see some Iron Man action. I don't know, Rick. This sounds like an absolute disaster waiting to happen. Did someone say disaster? Count me in. I need some excitement in my life. Jerry, you're still here? I thought we left you in the parking lot. Well, guess what, Rick? I hitched a ride on the back of the spaceship. I'm coming whether you like it or not. Fine, Jerry. Just don't mess anything up, as usual. Okay, guys, let's focus. We need to find the sci-fi suit guy and figure out what's going on. They arrive in Puerto Rico and witness a chaotic game of sci-fi fantasy football. Well, Morty, look at this mess. It's like a drunken Quidditch match mixed with The Witcher. Totally statistically improbable. I can't even understand the rules, Rick. This is insane. Hey, do you think I could join? I've always wanted to be a professional athlete. Jerry, you couldn't even handle a game of regular football. Sit this one out, will ya? Wait, the sci-fi suit guy is over there, talking to Robert Downey Jr. Let's go ask him some questions. The sci-fi suit guy turns out to be a fraud, trying to swindle unsuspecting participants. Well, 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 looks like we've got ourselves a con artist here trying to make a quick buck off geeks and celebrities. But what about Robert Downey Jr.? Is he in on the scam? Robert Downey Jr. laughs, no, man, I'm just here for the chaotic fun. Plus, I needed a break from the Marvel Universe. So, what now, Rick? Are we just gonna leave this guy here? Oh, no, Jerry. We're gonna teach him a lesson he won't forget. They devise an elaborate plan to expose the fraud and humiliate him publicly. 
You see, Morty, the world needs justice. And sometimes, that justice involves dressing up in ridiculous costumes and staging a grand spectacle. I guess you're right, Rick. This is gonna be one crazy adventure. After a series of hilarious events, they expose the fraud and save the day. And that, Morty, is how you get the bad guys. Now, let's head back home before anything else absurd happens. I don't know how you do it, Rick. Every adventure just gets crazier and crazier. I gotta admit, that was pretty wild. Maybe I should join you guys more often. Oh, no, Jerry. Once was more than enough. Let's stick to saving the universe, shall we? They return home, leaving chaos behind and ready for another interdimensional misadventure. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're about to go on a wild ride. W, where are we going, Rick? We're diving headfirst into the digital world, Morty. Strap on your seatbelt, it's gonna get bumpy. Morty nervously fastens his seatbelt as Rick activates his teleportation device. Burps, here we go. They are instantly teleported into the world of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Rick, what just happened? Are we inside a video game? That's right, Morty. We're inside Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Look at all these low-res skaters. But why are we here? What are we supposed to do? Well, Morty, we need to beat the game from within. It's like Inception, but with skateboarding. Pretty rad, huh? I don't know, Rick. This seems dangerous. Come on, Morty, live a little. Plus, I hear Tony Hawk has an exciting secret to reveal if we beat the game. Morty reluctantly starts skateboarding with Rick. Whoa, Rick, look at all these cool tricks I can do. Oops, landed on my face. Laughs, nice going, Morty. You know what they say, no pain, no gain. Now let's find the characters from here and see what they have to say. They encounter Chad Muska, a character from the game. Chad Muska, hey dudes, you wanna know a secret? I can totally grind on anything, even your mom. Bull's eyes, real classy, Chad. We're on a mission here, not for your pickup lines. They continue searching and come across Tony Hawk himself. Tony Hawk, hey guys, you wanna know why they call me the Birdman? It's because I can fly higher than a NASA rocket. Whoa, Tony Hawk, that's amazing. But can you really fly? Tony Hawk, no, just kidding, Morty. But I can still land a 900 like nobody's business. They finally defeat the game's final boss, unlocking a secret level. Look, Morty, we unlocked the secret level. Let's see what surprises it has in store for us. Morty and Rick enter the secret level, encountering an over-the-top character named Bam Margera. Bam Margera. Hey losers, you think you're cool enough to skate with me? Well, think again. Oh please, Bam, you're just a wannabe in a pixelated world. Yeah, and we've beaten tougher challenges than you, Bam. Bring it on! Bam challenges them to a skate-off, but Morty and Rick outperform him. We did it, Rick! We beat the game and proved that we're the ultimate skaters! Hell yeah, Morty, now let's see what that secret reveal from Tony Hawk is all about. They return to Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, congrats, dudes. You've shown the world what true skateboarding is all about. As a reward, I'll teach you how to do the most insane trick ever created. This better be good, Tony. Tony Hawk teaches them a mind-blowing secret trick. Wow, Rick, that was incredible. Oh Morty, that's just how we roll. Now let's get out of this pixelated mess. They activate the teleportation device and return to their own dimension. Phew, I'm glad that's over. But hey, Rick, can we keep those six skateboard skills? Only if you promise not to faceplant like you did earlier, Morty. Deal, Rick. Deal.
or D, buckle up, we're about to get sucked into a freaking Nintendo 64 game. What? How is that even possible? Don't question the science, Morty. Just roll with it. Now let's see. We seem to have landed in Space Station Silicon Valley. Look around, Morty. Oh, Rick, there are animals with robotic bodies walking around. Ethan, that's a talking sheep over there. Oh, great observation, Captain Obvious. This game is like a computer-generated fever dream. Let's talk to these pixelated critters and find out what's going on. Rick, Morty, what the hell is happening? Why are we in a video game? Well, Beth, long story short, our lives are a cosmic joke and the universe decided to play a little prank on us. Can we even win this game? It seems impossible. Of course we can. We'll need to navigate this insane station, solve puzzles, and control these robotic animals to progress. It's like herding cats on acid, Morty. This game is so bizarre. Hey, there's that green and white object in the middle of the city area. What is it? That, Morty, is a nanobot chip infused with the power of a thousand exploding suns. If we collect enough of those, we can overload the game's code and escape this lunacy. So, we're hunting for many exploding suns to break free? That makes total sense. Keep up, Summer. You think reality makes any more sense? Plus, at least we get to be in a video game, and you get to experience pixelated fashion trends. Rick, look out! That robotic rabbit just stole your portal gun! Damn it, Morty, we can't let that floppy-eared thief get away. We're not leaving this game without my portal gun. Well, I hope you realize, Rick, that I have plans for tonight that don't include being stuck in a video game. You think I wanted this? Life's a bitch and then you respawn in Silicon Valley. Let's find that rabbit and get my gun back. Nice find, Summer. Now we're like superheroes in a messed up N64 world. Let's find that rabbit and blast him back to the Stone Age. Rick, I think I found another nanobot chip. It's inside this oversized mechanical penguin. Careful with that penguin, Morty. It's a ticking time bomb waiting to explode in a hail of polygons. Grab the chip and let's move. Great, just great. This game world is a complete madhouse. I swear, if I make it out of here, I'm retaking those yoga classes. Focus, Beth, we're getting close to the rabbit. Morty, distract him with some digital lettuce while I snatch my portal gun back. Rabbits love lettuce, right? They don't, then they're not worth having in a video game. Now, Morty, throw it. Take the lettuce, you thieving rabbit! Got it, my portal gun is back in action. Can we finally get out of this nightmare now? Almost, Beth, we need to gather a few more nanobot chips and then reboot this game. I'm not leaving until I play my hand at God in the code. Rick, this game's final boss is a giant robotic hamster wearing a crown. Well, Morty, that's statistically improbable, just like our existence. Let's kick that hamster's royal ass and get the hell out of here. They defeated the giant hamster, collected enough nanobot chips, and disrupted the game's code. Rick, Morty, Beth, and Summer were finally transported back to their own dimension. But not before leaving a trail of virtual chaos behind. As they regained their sanity, Rick couldn't help but feel a bit nostalgic for the pixelated madness they had just experienced. You know what, Morty? Maybe reality isn't so bad after all. At least it's a familiar kind of crazy. Yeah, Rick, I think I'll take real life over any video game any day. As long as we're all in one piece and back to normal, I'm happy. No more Nintendo 64 adventures, please. Agreed. Let's just stick with reality, guys. It's weird enough as it is. And so, the Smith family went back to their mundane, yet comparatively sane, adventures. But deep down, they couldn't help but appreciate the wild, wacky journey they had just survived within the Nintendo 64 game.
Whoa, Rick, where the hell are we? Calm down, Morty. Looks like we've been teleported into some kind of video game world. And, oh boy, this one's a doozy. Video game world? Are you serious, Rick? What kind of messed up game is this? Strap in, Morty, we're in Fantasy Grounds, Gold Dragons, a fantasy RPG where players team up to slay monsters and uncover treasure. All right, all right. So how do we beat this thing? Your genius brain has a plan, right? Of course, Morty. We'll team up with the characters from this game and play along. But watch your back, Morty. In a world like this, nothing is as it seems. Oh, okay. And who are those guys over there? Those are the heroes of the game, Morty. We got a wizard, a rogue, a barbarian, and a sultry elf. A real motley crew. Sultry elf? Jeez, Rick, can you dial back the creepiness? Just ignore it, Morty. We've got a bigger fish to fry. Now, let's talk to these characters and figure out what we need to do to get out of here. Wizard. Greetings, travelers. I am Erevan, the Archmage. How might I assist you? Look, Grandpa Wizard, we're stuck in this game and need to find a way out. Any ideas? Erevan. Ah, a novel conundrum indeed. To escape fantasy grounds, you must slay the gold dragon and claim its crystal heart. Okay, seems like a classic fetch quest. Morty, grab your sword. We're going dragon hunting. Dragon hunting? Are you kidding me, Rick? We're gonna get incinerated. Trust me, Morty. With my unparalleled intellect and your unwavering courage, we'll make it out of here alive. Barbarian, the dragon's lair is treacherous, adventurers. But together, we can conquer it. Let us embark on this quest, for honor and glory. Rogue, and treasure, don't forget the treasure. Count me in. Elf, I shall accompany you as well. But know this, should you fail, I won't hesitate to leave your sorry bodies behind. Alright, let's get this show on the road. Morty, stay close to me, and remember, don't die. Great advice, Rick. Real helpful. They venture into the game world, facing countless perils and solving puzzles. This game is more challenging than I expected, Morty. We gotta use our intelligence to outsmart the dragon. Yeah, intelligence. That's your thing, Rick. I'm just trying not to pee my pants right now. After an intense battle, they finally face the gold dragon. Gold dragon. Mortals, you dare challenge me? Prepare for your annihilation. Morty, use the enchanted sword I crafted for you. Strike when its guard is down. Okay, here goes nothing. Morty lands the final blow, defeating the gold dragon. We did it, Morty. The dragon is vanquished. Elf, impressive. You may have some usefulness after all. Rogue, indeed, and the treasure shall be ours. Wizard, well done, adventurers. You have completed the game. Your freedom awaits. Finally, we're getting out of here. Never want to see another dragon again. Yeah, yeah. Let's just get back to our own universe before something crazier happens. They are teleported back to their own universe. Hey, Morty, you ready for another mind-bending adventure? Oh, yeah, Rick. Just give me a second to put on my seatbelt. Morty, we're not even in the car. Get your shit together. Dad, what's that computer-generated image on the screen? It's so, sci-fi fi 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 Oh, that, Beth? That's a highly advanced, visually stunning representation of a vertebrae. Don't ask how it's related to our current mission. I'm still figuring that out myself. Visibly shocked. You mean to tell me that Jerry was once a multiverse Casanova? Yep, and the best part, he was a damn good one too. Who knew underneath that lame dad exterior, he had it in him. Dad, you used to be a latest man in other dimensions? That's unexpected. Joining the conversation. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. I was once the envy of the multiverse. Don't be surprised. Let's just say I had a way with portals. 
Exasperated, Jerry, I can't believe I'm hearing this. How am I supposed to process the fact that my husband was a player in countless alternate realities? Come on, Beth, you've got bigger things to worry about. Like the interdimensional furry fanfiction slam that's happening tonight. We're all going, right? Oh, Rick, I'm not so sure about that. The last time we went, I accidentally stumbled upon some questionable artwork. Ordy, it's time to face your fears. We can't let a few disturbing furries stop us from indulging in the bizarre wonders of the multiverse. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but count me in too. That's the spirit, Beth. Now, who's up for a sandwich before we head out? Sure, Rick. I'll make it. After all, I'm a man who knows his way around a sandwich. And apparently, other things too. Dad, please, let's not go down that road again. Chuckling. Morty, your dad's journey of self-discovery is nothing short of a cosmic roller coaster. Meanwhile, in a different dimension. Fashion designer. Oh, Jerry, you're such a fashion icon. Our collaboration on the multiverse-themed fashion line will be legendary. Thank you, thank you. I always knew my innate sense of style would take me places. Over the interdimensional communicator, Jerry, get back here now. We need your questionable expertise in furry fashion. Sorry, guys. Duty calls. Stay fabulous without me. You know, Morty, sometimes I wonder how we ended up in these ridiculous situations. Smirking, yeah, Rick, but admit it, you love every absurd minute of it. Damn right, Morty, damn right. Now, let's go make some interdimensional memories. Morty, I've just discovered something completely insane. You know those cybernetic augmentation ethics they've been debating at the Broad Institute? Oh, yeah, what about them, Rick? Well, I've managed to run some calculations and create a device that can turn any average man into a skateboard riding maniac. Whoa, Rick, that's like, mind-blowing. But, ah, uh, is it even safe? What if someone gets hurt? Ah, uh, the famous footwear of your cautiousness, Morty. Safety is just a concept, you know? Besides, I've optimized the cybernetic enhancements to prevent any accidents. All right, if you say so, Rick. But what's the point of all this? Simple, Morty. We need to gather some data on human chemistry in different extreme situations, and what better place to do that than a crowded barbecue joint? A barbecue joint? Rick, that's insane. We're gonna get arrested or something. Relax, Morty. I've neutralized any potential issues with the authorities. Now, let's head down to the barbecue joint and observe our newly augmented skateboarder in action. They arrive at the barbecue joint, where they witness a man effortlessly maneuvering on a skateboard on top of a moving car in the street. People are cheering and taking videos. Holy crap, Rick! Look at him go! This is crazy! That's right, Morty. And check out that guy standing nearby. He seems like he knows something. Approaching the guy. Hey, man. You know anything about this skateboarding mayhem? I... Yeah, dude. That's my buddy Steve. He got his cybernetic augmentation yesterday and hasn't stopped shredding since. Augmentation? What's that? Like a new shoe brand or something? I... Laughing? Nah, man. It's like getting enhanced with cyborg parts. Steve's got robotic legs and a cybernetic skateboard controller implanted in his brain. He's living the dream. Intrigued. Living the dream, huh? This gives me an idea, Morty. Oh boy, here we go again. Hold on, Morty. With Steve's success, I can create an army of cybernetically enhanced skateboarders. We'll be unstoppable. Rick, I'm starting to question your definition of success. Morty, success is just a relative term. And relative to this idea, it's gonna be pretty damn successful. They gather more volunteers and begin cybernetically enhancing them, creating an army of skateboarders. Rick, I can't believe we're actually doing this. What's the end game here? Morty, the end game is simple. We're going to revolutionize skateboarding competitions as we know it. Imagine the possibilities. 
Meanwhile, as the army of skateboarders wreak havoc across the city, chaos ensues, and the barbecue joint turns into a battleground of flying limbs and wheels. Dodging a skateboard? Rick, this is going way too far. We're causing more harm than good. Ordy, in the realm of science, harm is just a stepping stone to progress. Besides, who doesn't love a little chaos? Morty narrowly avoids getting run over by a rogue skateboarder. Chaos? I think I'm gonna have a panic attack. Relax, Morty, we're in this together, and we'll find a way to fix it. Now, grab a skateboard, and let's ride. They jump on skateboards and join the chaotic mayhem while simultaneously trying to regain control of the situation. This is insane, Rick. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Morty, remember, insanity is just a temporary state of mind. Embrace it. They skate through the chaos, laughing maniacally, as the scene fades out. Alright Morty, buckle up for another wild adventure. Oh, I'm really getting tired of these crazy escapades, Rick. Well, Morty, life is just a statistical anomaly, and statistically improbable scenario is where the fun begins. Hey guys, what are you up to? We're about to witness the ultimate showdown in intergalactic diplomacy. What? Who's involved? The Vindicators, Morty, a group of pretentious, attention-seeking superheroes. Oh, like, that Captain Sunshine guy? What a tool. Exactly, Summer. Now, watch as they attempt to resolve a crisis by speaking alien legalese. Wow, they're really trying hard to pretend like they're saving the universe. Meanwhile, in the adjacent galaxy, robot professional wrestling is in full swing. Robot wrestling? You mean, like, giant metallic luchadors with laser beams? Bingo, Morty. The crowd goes wild as they rip each other apart in a battle for the coveted cyber championship. This is so messed up, but I can't look away. Wait, Rick, wasn't our appointment at the dentist today? Screw the dentist, Morty. We're diving headfirst into a cosmic quest. All this cosmic stuff is great, but remember when we just went to a geography bee quiz? Oh yeah, that one was intense. We had to label planets and galaxies in the blink of an eye. And somehow Morty beat the entire universe at naming obscure celestial bodies. Hey, I'm not just a dumb sidekick, you know? Sure, Morty, keep telling yourself that. So, what's the plan now, Rick? We're gonna do some reconnaissance in the Nebula Bar. Those Vindicators love to gossip after their heroics. Wait, are we spying on them? Ah, uh, Morty, just gathering some intel for a laugh. Plus, I need some juicy material for my new reality TV show. Seriously, Rick? Another reality show? Hey, it's not like there's anything else entertaining happening in this entire multiverse. I don't know, Rick. I'm starting to question our choices here. Morty, you question everything. Now get ready, cause we're about to confront the Vindicators. Are we gonna, like, defeat them or something? Ah, Summer, just gonna give them a taste of their own pompousness. You know, Rick, sometimes I wonder if we're the villains in our own story. Morty, villains make life so much more interesting. Heroes are just a bunch of overrated losers. I guess you're right, Rick. Let's see what these Vindicators are really made of. Drap in, kids. It's about to get intergalactically intense. Morty, grab your portal gun. We've got a new adventure lined up. Oh, Rick, can't we have a break? I mean, we just got back from battling those space cybernetic dragons. Breaks are for the weak, Morty. We got shit to do. Plus, I just found this new dimension where everyone wears Under Armour. Under Armour? Really? 
Is that really a dimension worth exploring? Trust me, Morty, the athletic prowess in that dimension is off the charts. Besides, I heard they have these ridiculously overpowered superpowers. All right, all right, but can we at least leave Summer behind this time? She's been nothing but a pain in the ass lately. Whoa, hold up. You think you can just exclude me from your crazy adventures, Morty? Oh great, the teenage angst has arrived, and it brought its validated sarcasm superpower along with it. You know what, Rick? I bet that green light floating in the air above you is just a reflection of your own toxicity. Oh, now we're bringing avatars of psychological projection into the mix, Summer. Real original. Okay, guys, let's just focus on this new dimension. Who knows what we'll find there? Besides, I heard there's a green light with a black face that grants unimaginable knowledge. Oh great, now we're dealing with existential, omniscient green lights. Fantastic. Look, Summer, just stay here, okay? We'll bring you back a souvenir or something. Fine, whatever. But next time, don't expect me to just sit around while you two have all the fun. Rick opens a portal, and they enter the dimension of Under Armour clad beings. Wow, Rick, look at all these jacked aliens. They must have some serious gains. Yeah, Morty, but be careful. I heard that seductress in the corner has a thing for awkward teenage boys. Morty accidentally bumps into the seductress alien. I mean seductress? Well, well, well. What do we have here? A king teacher that means stumbling into my domain. How delightful. Aw, oh, hi. I didn't mean to, you know, interrupt your, aw, uh, domain. Alien seductress, don't worry, sweetie. I have a thing for awkwardness. It's my aphrodisiac. Morty, you better hurry up and grab that souvenir before it's too late. All right. Sorry, Miss Alien Seductress. I gotta go. Bye. Morty grabs the green light with a black face and they hastily exit the dimension. Phew, that was a close one, Morty. Did you see the look in her eyes? Yeah, Rick, I don't think I'll be forgetting that encounter anytime soon. Welcome to the world of intergalactic seduction, Morty. You'll get the hang of it eventually. They all share a laugh as they head back home through the portal. Hey Morty, check out those two dumbass robot statues over there. Wow Rick, those are some lame ass statues. What's so special about them? Well Morty, they may look dumb, but they're actually part of a highly secretive robot building competition happening in this city. Really? A robot building competition? That sounds kinda cool, I guess. Yeah, cool like the sound of my existential dread, Morty. Let me tell you. This competition is about more than just building robots. It's a battle of egos, insecurities, and toxic masculinity. Ah, toxic masculinity. Isn't that a bit heavy for a robot competition? Morty, when you add testosterone, alcohol, and a clock tower in the background, shit gets intense real quick. These robots are like their creators, Morty, walking metal extensions of their insecurities. Jeez, sounds like a recipe for disaster. Disaster? Nah, Morty, that's the beauty of it. Watching these insecure jackasses compete to prove their worth, destroying half the city in the process, is a spectacle I wouldn't miss for the world. I don't know, Rick. It just seems kinda sad. Life is sad, Morty. Might as well enjoy the ridiculousness of it all. Look, there's Jerry, the king of insecurity, entering the competition, and he's already breaking a sweat. Hey, Rick. Morty. Look at me, I'm building a robot. I'm finally doing something meaningful. Meaningful, Jerry, you couldn't build a Lego spaceship without screwing it up. Hey, I'll have you know that my robot will be the best in the competition. Sure, Jerry, let's see what happens when you accidentally install the destruct button instead of the dance button. Shut up, Rick. I don't need your negativity. Um, guys, what's that weird sound coming from the clock tower? Oh crap, Morty, it's a time portal opening up. A time portal? 
Are you kidding me? No, Morty, I'm not kidding. It's not like I have time portal sound effects on my keychain. What are we gonna do, Rick? Run, Morty, run like you've never run before. Morty and Rick race away from the portal, narrowly avoiding being sucked in. Phew, that was too close. Yeah, no kidding, Morty. You remember what happened last time we got stuck in a time loop? Yeah, we had to relive that awkward dance-off with the alien octopuses for eternity. Not a good time. Exactly, Morty. That's why we have to avoid time portals at all costs. Now let's go find a safe spot to watch this robot disaster unfold. Morty and Rick find a rooftop vantage point overlooking the competition. So, Rick, what's the plan now? Sit back, Morty, and watch humanity's insecurities destroy itself. It's the circle of life. I don't know if it's as poetic as you make it sound, Rick. Poetic? No, Morty, it's just another Tuesday in this absurd universe. All right, Morty, buckle up. We've got another adventure on our hands. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Hey, what's going on? Can I come too? Jerry, you're about as useful as a fart in a spacesuit. Stay home. Rick, don't be mean to your son's father. Fine, Jerry, tag along if you want, but don't expect any heroics from me. So, where are we going this time? We're going to the world of Warcraft, Morty. I need to borrow some of their advanced technology. Whoa, really? I didn't know they had advanced tech there. Well, they don't, but I do. I'll just take whatever I need, Morty. No big deal. Jerry spots a character from Warcraft with green hair and horns. Hey, who's that character over there? He's got green hair and horns on his head. Oh, that's just some Warcraft character, Jerry. Don't get too excited. Warcraft character. Hello, travelers. I am Zobrin, the green-haired demon of chaos. Whispering to Rick, he looks like a rejected Rugrats character with all that green hair. Chuckles. Yeah, Morty. Looks like he couldn't decide between being a demon or a toddler. Let's not be rude, guys. He might have feelings too. Stellar seductress Scuttlebutt. Well, well, well. If it isn't the infamous Rick Sanchez and his pathetic sidekicks. Scuttlebutt. What a surprise. How's it going, you seductive gossip? Scuttlebutt, just spreading rumors, Rick. But I'd love to know what you're up to this time. Unity, Rick, you never cease to amaze me with your wild schemes. Unity, get out of my face. We're not here for a reunion. M. Berners-Lee. Ah, Rick, you always find the most fascinating worlds to explore. Tim, shut up and let me do my thing. This is not your internet domain. But can you do this? Neen. Hey, Rick. Can you do this? No, I can't. Not interested in your internet silliness, mean. Reputation. Rick, your reputation precedes you. The stories they tell about you are quite legendary. Reputation. You're just a bunch of whispers in the wind. Now get lost. Morty interjects. Hey, guys, can we focus on getting what we need and get out of here? This place is insane. Fine, Morty. Let's grab what we need and leave these weirdos behind. Beth spots a shiny artifact. Look, Dad. That artifact over there. It could be valuable. Grinning. Ah, good eye, Beth. Let's add it to our collection. Denouement. Back in the spaceship, Rick and Morty reflect on their crazy adventure. Rick, that was intense. I can't believe we made it out of there. Morty, when you're with me, nothing is statistically probable. You'll learn to enjoy the chaos. As the spaceship zooms through the cosmos, the green-haired Warcraft character waves goodbye, pondering the absurdity he just witnessed. And in the infinite multiverse, our dynamic duo continues their bizarre escapades, leaving chaos and laughter in their wake.
Hordy, grab my portal gun. We've got an urgent situation on our hands. Ah, oh, what's going on, Rick? Where are we going this time? We're going to Binary Star Boudoir, Morty. I heard they have a new video game that combines Ayurvedic treatments, Good Mythical Morning, and Wii Fit Trainer. Wait, what? How is that even possible? Morty, once you enter the realm of Binary Stars, anything is possible. It's like mixing M&Ms with Skittles, completely statistically improbable and yet strangely delicious. Okay, but why do we need the portal gun for a video game? Morty, this isn't just any video game. It's a game where you have to use a bowling ball to knock down virtual pins in a cosmic bowling alley. The twist is, the bowling ball is actually in the foreground while the alley is in the background. That sounds confusing. It is, Morty. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded while wearing roller skates on a tightrope. But we must conquer this game, Morty. We must prove once and for all that our simulation can beat their simulation. All right, but what's with the Ayurvedic treatments in the game? Well, Morty, the Ayurvedic treatments are used as power-ups. You collect them to boost your bowling skills and increase your chances of getting a strike. So, we're playing a cosmic bowling video game while getting Ayurvedic massages? Morty, this is like a Saturday night at a frat party hosted by Sheldon Cooper and Lady Gaga. It's a bizarre combination that somehow just works. Hey, speaking of bizarre combinations, I heard that Jerry's been spending a lot of time with that Wii Fit trainer lately. Really, Morty, Jerry, the same Jerry who can barely do a push-up without breaking a sweat? Yeah, apparently he thinks she's helping him get in shape. He's been following her workout routines and talking about muscle gains. Well, Morty, that's about as likely as winning the lottery while being struck by lightning and simultaneously discovering the cure for baldness. I know, right? It's absurd. Morty, Jerry is like a penguin trying to fly a spaceship. It's just not gonna happen. So, do you think we should tell Jerry that the Wii Fit Trainer is just an AI program to make him feel better about himself? Ah, Morty, let him have his delusions. It's the only thing keeping him going. Fair enough. So, are we ready to dive into this crazy universe of binary stars, bowling balls, and Ayurvedic treatments? Drap in, Morty, it's gonna be a wild ride. And remember, in this game, the pins never stand a chance against our cosmic prowess. They activate the portal gun and vanish into the unknown, embarking on another mind-bending adventure. Title, The Twisted Interdimensional Obsession Characters 1. Karen Meem, a woman with long hair and a white shirt, holding a gun and a microphone. 2. Rick, the target of Karen's jealousy, with a dark past. 3. Starlit Speculum Scuttlebutt, a mysterious entity from another dimension, obsessed with Karen. Karen Meem, a woman with long hair and a white shirt, stands in a dimly lit room, her grip tight on the gun in her hand. She glares at a photograph of Rick, her jealous ex-lover from another dimension. A microphone lies next to her, ready to capture every chilling sound that will unfold. Karen, whispering, Rick, you thought you could escape me? Think again. Incident. Suddenly, the room trembles as an otherworldly portal opens. Starlit Speculum Scuttlebutt, a being obsessed with Karen from another dimension, steps out, his eyes fixed on her. Starlit, sinisterly. Ah, Karen Meme, my beloved. I have crossed the void of space and time to be with you. Karen, raises the gun, stay away from me, you interdimensional creep. Progression. Starlit grins and waves his hand, disarming Karen with a flick of his wrist. The gun clatters to the floor, leaving Karen defenseless. Starlet, mockingly. Oh, Karen, how predictable. But fear not, my love. I only wish to show you my undying adoration. Karen, voice trembling, you're insane. I want nothing to do with you. Starlet, advancing. Oh, Karen, you can't resist my charms forever. We are fated to be together. Just as Starlet inches closer, a loud crash echoes through the room. 
Rick, sensing danger, bursts through the door, eyes filled with determination. Gritting his teeth, get away from her. Starlet, smirking. Ah, the jealous ex-lover from another dimension arrives. How quaint. Rick lunges at Starlet, the two engaging in a frenzied struggle. Karen scrambles for the microphone, ensuring that their epic battle is recorded for all to hear. The fight reaches its climax, the room becoming a chaotic battleground. Furniture is smashed, sparks fly, and curses fill the air as the trio's twisted fates intertwine. Karen, whispering into the microphone, this is madness, but oh, how I love it. The story ends with a cliffhanger, leaving the listener on the edge of their seat, eagerly awaiting the next installment of this dark, interdimensional obsession. Morty, hand me that photograph. I need it for my experiment on the effects of visually repulsive abstract art on human intelligence. Oh, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? That photo looks like something a colorblind person with bad taste would hang in their bathroom. Morty, you underestimate the power of art. Now, watch this. Rick attaches the photo to a device. What are you two up to now? Can't you just eat breakfast like a normal family? Yeah. You wouldn't understand the complexity of our experiment. We're about to open a portal to a dimension where musicians only sing anime opening songs. Isn't that fascinating? Anime opening songs? Finally, something I can relate to. Dad, seriously? You don't even know what anime is. Well, Morty, your opinion doesn't concern me. I'm just excited about my karaoke debut. All right, everyone, brace yourselves. Rick activates the device, opening a portal. Through the portal emerges a colorful, anime-themed karaoke bar filled with characters in outrageous costumes. Oh jeez, this place is insane! Ordi, stay focused. We need to find the interdimensional job interviewers who can grant us exclusive access to their technology. And what's in it for me? This sounds like another one of your reckless adventures, Dad. Relax, Beth. If we succeed, I'll get you that job promotion you've been whining about. Wait, these job interviewers are just anime characters singing karaoke? Ordi, their power is underestimated. They can turn a boring interview into a cosmic roller coaster. Well then, let's get these interviews over with. I don't have all day. The family approaches the karaoke stage, where an animated version of themselves awaits. Animated so, you think you're worthy of our technology? Sing to prove it. Clears throat, I'll show you my true talent. Jerry belts out an off-key rendition of an anime opening song. Animated Dad, that was terrible. Let me show you how it's done. Morty flawlessly performs a high-pitched Japanese vocal track. Animated alright, enough of this karaoke nonsense. Just give us what we came for. The animated family smirks and hands them a futuristic device. Well, looks like we got what we needed. Let's head back home, kids. That was insane, Rick. Can't believe we infiltrated a karaoke bar for job interviews. It's not every day you get a job offer from an anime character, huh? Indeed, Beth. But remember, nothing is impossible when you have science, music, and a little bit of sarcasm on your side. Yeah, and it was totally worth showing off my amazing vocals. Oh, Jerry, let's not kid ourselves. You were entertaining, all right. Morty rolls his eyes as they leave the portal behind, back to their own reality. Morty, I've made a groundbreaking discovery. Strap in, because shit's about to get real. Oh, okay, Rick. What did you find this time? I've created a portal gun modification that allows us to enter classic cartoons. We can literally jump inside any cartoon show. 
W what? That's insane, Rick. Why would we want to do that? Ordy, it's all about the adventure. Plus, imagine all the illegal stuff we can get away with in cartoon reality. No consequences, Morty. I don't know, Rick. Seems dangerous. And aren't we supposed to stick to interdimensional adventures? Ordy, trust me, this is the next level. Now, grab that clock over there with the cartoon character and a gold frame. We're going to dive into the world of cartoons. Enters the garage. Uh, what's going on, guys? Jerry, great timing. We're about to embark on a journey into the cartoon realm. Wanna join? Are you serious? Me? In a cartoon? Oh, I don't think I'd fit in, Rick. Relax, Jerry, you hardly fit in anywhere. It's perfect, now hurry up, we're going to Moscow, Nickel. Bursting in? Wait, can I come too? This sounds way cooler than hanging out with my friends. Sure, Summer, hop on board, just don't ruin it with your teenage drama, okay? They all step onto the cartoon clock portal. Whoa, everything's so squiggly and colorful. My eyes, I can't handle it. Buckle up, losers, we're heading straight for the Nickelodeon Studios. Awesome, maybe I can score an autograph from one of the Rugrats. Moments later, they crash land into the world of classic cartoons. Where are we, Rick? Nickelodeon Studios, Jerry, I hope you're ready for some messy slime. Look, it's SpongeBob. He's fighting the fairly odd parents. And there's Dora the Explorer leading an army of angry Rugrats. This is pure chaos, Morty. Even for me. Can we go home now? I'm covered in slime and losing my sanity. Hold on, Jerry. We gotta find that legendary golden remote control that controls all cartoons. What? That's a thing? Shut up, Morty. Just go with it. They embark on a wild scavenger hunt, dodging cartoon characters and absurd obstacles. I can't believe we're going on this ridiculous adventure. Quit complaining, Summer. We're doing this for science. Jerry accidentally activates a giant robot smurf. Oh no! What did I do? Run, you useless sack of potatoes. They narrowly escape the robot smurf and finally locate the golden remote control. Rick, we got it! Now what? Simple, Morty, we use this remote to control the entire cartoon realm. But first, let's get the hell out of here. They return to the garage covered in slime and breathless. I can't believe we survived that insane trip. It was actually pretty cool. Can we do it again? Maybe someday, Summer. But for now, let's clean up this mess before your mom comes home. Morty glances at the clock with the cartoon character and gold frame. You know, Rick, this whole adventure was pretty time-wasting, right? Shut up, Morty. It was an absolute abomination. But hey, at least we had fun ruining classic cartoons. Alright Morty, strap yourself in because we're going on a wild ride. Oh geez, where are we going this time, Rick? Can't we just have a quiet day for once? Quiet days are for people who lack imagination, Morty. We're heading straight to Sao Paulo, Brazil. I heard Maisie Williams is there, and I need to settle a little bet with Max Planck. Wait, Max Planck? The famous physicist? Yeah, apparently he thinks he knows more about quantum mechanics than I do. Ha. Ah. As if. Ah, uh, Rick, isn't it a bit dangerous to start a pissing contest with a Nobel laureate? Morty, I've been to countless universes, battled aliens, and survived multiple apocalyptic scenarios. A physicist with a fancy prize doesn't scare me. Meanwhile, in Sao Paulo. Beth, why are we standing here in front of this white background with a green light? What's happening? Jerry, can't you see? We're in the middle of a top-secret alien rendezvous. We're gonna meet the most advanced beings in the universe. Advanced beings, huh? Are they, vegan? Seriously, Jerry? That's your only concern? Well, if we're meeting aliens, 
Maybe they have advanced vegan recipes that could make a great cooking show. Leave it to you to think about cooking shows at a time like this. Suddenly, Rick and Morty appear. Ed, Jerry, what are you two doing here? Yeah, and what is this white background with a green light? Rick, Morty, we were told this was an alien rendezvous. What's going on? Ah, oh, alien rendezvous, huh? Sorry to burst your bubble, but this is just a photo shoot for a new fragrance called Talaberry. Apparently, green light makes it feel more otherworldly. So, no aliens? No, oh, just a couple of people standing awkwardly in front of a fancy background. Great, now I feel stupid. Hey, don't worry, Mom. At least you weren't in a physics debate with Max Planck like Rick here. Max Planck? The physicist? Yeah, Jerry, the super smart guy who thinks he can outsmart me. Just you wait. I'm about to drop some quantum knowledge bombs on him. Rick, can you at least let us take a picture on this fancy background before you go challenging Nobel laureates? Fine, but make it quick. I've got some serious cosmic smackdown to deliver. After taking the picture. All right, Rick, are you sure you want to do this? Challenging Max Planck seems like a bad idea. Morty, I never back down from a scientific challenge. Besides, it'll be fun to put an overconfident physicist in his place. Just be careful, Rick. We don't want any more interstellar incidents. Don't worry, Beth, I got this. Rick disappears in a portal, heading towards Max Planck's secret lab. Good luck, Rick. You're gonna need it. Yeah, good luck, Rick. And if you need a vegan chef for your cooking show with aliens, let me know. Beth rolls her eyes, unsure of what they've gotten themselves into. To be continued. Morty, do you think this pirate fashion show is really worth our time? I mean, who gives a flying FK about pirates? Well, Rick, I guess some people just like dressing up and pretending to be something they're not. You know, like when Jerry puts on his bathrobe and tries to act like a successful writer. Yeah, Morty, but at least Jerry's delusions are harmless. These idiots seem to think they're actually pirates. It's like they escaped from a mental institution. Joining the conversation. Oh come on, Rick. Let people have their fun. It's a harmless way to express themselves. Defensively. Hey, I could be a great writer, okay? I just need the right inspiration. Maybe I should write about pirates. You're not writing S asterisk asterisk T, Jerry. And these people definitely don't need any inspiration. They're just a bunch of attention-seeking weirdos. Oh, guys, you know, there's a pirate couple in the front row. I think they're eating paella. Oh, Morty, when I said pirates, I didn't mean actual pirates. Are they even allowed to bring food? This is a fashion show, not a buffet. Rick, maybe they just want to enjoy the show and have a romantic dinner. Can't you be a little more understanding? Yeah, Rick, show some compassion for once in your life. Not everything is about science and whatever weird ST you do. Compassion, huh? Well, Beth. Since you want me to be compassionate, how about I reveal my secret wife, Paratia, who just happens to be sitting right there in the pirate couple. What? You have a secret wife? And she's here? Paratia, grinning mischievously, that's right, darling, and I see you've been flaunting yourself in this fashion show without a care in the world. Chuckles. Yeah, well, you know, Paratia, I have needs that not even science can satisfy. Dad has a secret wife? And you're a pirate, too? What the hell is happening? Whispering to Morty, I'm not surprised. I mean, look at her. She's got a real nice booty. Horatia. Oh, Morty, don't be shy. You can call it what it is. This booty is a work of art, thanks to my alien ancestry. Rick, seriously? A secret pirate wife? How do you even keep up with all your twisted secrets? Well, Jerry, let's just say my liver isn't the only thing that's good at multitasking. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go steal kidneys from the audience. 
Aspiratia has a craving for a pirate-themed transplant dinner. Rick, you can't just. Oh, shut up, Beth. You and your moral compass can take a hike. Pirates don't play by the rules. Aspiratia, he's right, darling. Life's too short to not indulge in a little piracy and kidney thievery. I can't believe this is my life. Welcome to the dysfunctional insanity, Morty. It only gets weirder from here. The group watches as Rick and Paratia start a chaotic pirate-themed kidney heist, causing mayhem and leaving everyone baffled. Well, at least we're not the most embarrassing family here anymore. You've got a point there, Jerry. Let's just embrace the madness and enjoy the show. Morty, we're in a highly advanced, futuristic room with lights on the ceiling. I can't help but think this is some kind of setup. Geez, Rick, you always think everything's a setup. Maybe it's just a room with lights, you know? Morty, this room reeks of adventure and danger. I'm telling you, something big is about to go down. Jerry, entering the room. Hey guys, what's all the commotion about? Jerry, just in time. We're about to embark on a statistically improbable scenario involving an underground alien colony, Adrenaline, Lionel Messi, and a galactic pirate invasion. Lionel Messi? I thought you said we were going on an adventure. Oh, we are, Jerry. And Lionel Messi happens to be their leader. How do you like that? Summer, joining the group. Wait, I thought Lionel Messi was a famous soccer player? He is, Summer. But in this dimension, he's a soccer playing alien commander who's obsessed with conquering the galaxy. So, what's the plan, Rick? Well, Morty, since the galactic pirates are invading the underground alien colony, we're going to have to team up with Messi and his soccer skills to save the day. Are you serious? I can barely kick a ball without tripping over my shoelaces. Relax, Jerry, you won't have to do any heavy lifting. Just be a distraction or something. So, how are we going to get to this underground colony in time? That's where my portal gun comes in, Summer. Hold on tight, folks. They all grab onto Rick as he activates the portal gun, and they're instantly transported to the underground alien colony. We're here, guys. Now, let's find Messi and save this place. They search the colony, battling galactic pirates along the way. Rick, why are these pirates so obsessed with capturing an alien colony? It's all about the gold, Morty. The colony's got abundance piles of it. Galactic pirates love gold like Jerry loves cereal. Hey, don't bring my cereal obsession into this. They finally find Lionel Messi, rallying the alien troops against the pirates. Messi, we're here to help. Messi, Rick Sanchez, the great interdimensional hero. Welcome to the battlefield. Rick, this is insane. I can't believe we're fighting alongside Lionel Messi. Life is full of surprises, Summer. They join the battle, using their wit and Messi's epic soccer skills to defeat the pirates. Well, that's a wrap. Let's get out of here before the galactic authorities arrive. They escape through another portal, back into the futuristic room. That was insane, Rick. I never thought I'd be playing soccer with an alien Messi. Yeah, and I never thought I'd survive a battle with space pirates. I guess I'm more capable than I give myself credit for. Don't get carried away, Jerry. It was mostly dumb luck. Well, at least we saved the alien colony and had one hell of an adventure. That's right, Summer. Now, let's get back to the garage and forget this ever happened. Hey Morty, check out that group of men standing over there on stage. What do you think they're up to? 
I don't know, Rick. Looks like one of them has a helmet on his head. Maybe they're testing some kind of experimental device? Oh, please, Morty. That looks like a bunch of nerds playing dress up. Probably just trying to impress their favorite fictional character or something. But what about that guy in the helmet? He must be important. Oh, you mean the great and powerful Lil Nas X? He's probably here to sell some overpriced merch or drop a new hit single about horses and spaceships. Wow, I never thought I'd see the day when Lil Nas X became an integral part of the scientific community. Science and fame go hand in hand, Morty. Just look at me, the smartest guy in the multiverse. Hey guys, have you heard the latest gossip? Apparently, Brooklyn Beckham is dating an alien from the planet Zog. Who cares, Summer? That's like a two on the drama scale. Tell us something juicy. Well, you know that scandalous affair I had with that alien aristocrat last summer? Turns out, he's actually the ruler of an entire galaxy. Wait, you had an affair with an alien aristocrat? Yeah, and let me tell you, those tentacles were out of this world. And we just focus on the task at hand, guys? We need to figure out why those men on stage are so fixated on that helmet guy. Maybe it's some kind of advanced word ladders competition or something. You know, where they change one letter at a time to create new words. Morty, you realize that's the dumbest thing you've ever said, right? Well, excuse me for trying to contribute, Rick. Look, the only way to find out what's going on is to infiltrate that group. Morty, you distract them with your awkward teenage charm, while Summer and I investigate the helmet guy. Wait, I'm not sure I want to be a part of this sci-fi groupie mission. Summer, if you want to avoid being known as the girl who slept with an alien aristocrat, I suggest you cooperate. Summer reluctantly agrees, and they split up to execute the plan. Scene progresses with Morty engaging the group with his awkward charm, while Rick and Summer approach the Helmet Guy. Helmet Guy. Welcome, Earthlings. I am the Radiant Radioactive Rendezvous, the ultimate being of interdimensional knowledge. David, Helmet Head. We know you're just a pretentious nerd. What's your deal? Helmet Guy. How dare you insult the R3? I possess infinite wisdom and power. Infinite wisdom and power, huh? So, how many galaxies have you conquered while wearing that ridiculous helmet? Helmet guy. Well, none yet, but... Let me guess, you're still working on your word ladder skills? Maybe one day you'll achieve intergalactic domination through vocabulary. Good luck with that, dweeb. Scene intensifies as helmet guy becomes enraged. Helmet guy. You dare mock the R3? Prepare to face the consequences, puny earthlings. Morty, sensing the escalating situation, rushes to join Rick and Summer. Rick, things are getting out of hand. We need to get out of here. No worries, Morty. I've got this. Rick uses his portal gun to create a portal behind Helmet Guy. See y'all later, R3. Maybe next time you'll think twice before challenging us. They all jump through the portal, leaving the bewildered Helmet Guy behind. Phew, that was close. I can't believe we just outsmarted an interdimensional know-it-all. Morty, it's all in a day's work for Team Sanchez. Now. Let's go grab some Sichuan sauce. They walk away, leaving behind a whirlwind of chaos and questionable decisions. Alright Morty, buckle up. We've got another crazy adventure coming our way. Oh great, Rick. What's the plan this time? Are we going to save the universe again? Oh, Morty. We've got something even more important on our hands. Jerry's dating a Venus vamp vexation. Oh what? Is that some kind of vampire alien or something? I know. It's a woman who feeds on men's souls and leaves them empty husks. She's like a succubus on steroids. Oh, okay. Why do we care about Jerry's love life, Rick? Because, Morty, this Venus vamp vexation is out to destroy the world by seducing every man on Earth. It's a statistically improbable scenario, but it might just work. Jeez, Rick, that sounds intense. What's our plan? We need to find the eagles. 
They hold the key to stopping this succubus. But be careful, Morty. They're a band of rogue mercenaries who fight with the power of rock and roll. Rock and roll? Really, Rick? Trust me, Morty. The Eagles are the only ones who can defeat this succubus. Get ready for a rockin' adventure. Thing change. The gang meets the Eagles at their secret hideout. So, you guys are really gonna save the world with your music? Don Henley, from the Eagles. Damn straight, sweetie. Our music has the power to defeat any evil, even a supernatural seductress. Wow, that's impressive. Can I join you guys? I've always dreamt of being a rock star. Don Felder, from the Eagles. Sorry, kid. You're on your own with this one. We're professionals, not a charity. Scene change. The gang infiltrates the Venus Vamp Vexation's lair. Rick, are you sure this plan will work? It seems kinda crazy. Morty, when have my plans ever not worked? Just trust me on this. Alright, alright. But if we all die, I'm blaming you. Scene change. The gang confronts the Venus Vamp Vexation. Venus Vamp Vexation. Welcome, mortals. Who dares to challenge my power? It's us, you succubus. Prepare to meet your doom. Venus Vamp Vexation, foolish humans. You cannot defeat me. Scene change, Rick unleashes a secret weapon, a satellite disguised as a sexy woman. Say hello to Satellite Sexy Sneak Peek. Satellite Sexy Sneak Peek, Rick, I'm ready to seduce the succubus. Let's give her a taste of her own medicine. Scene change, Darth Vader suddenly appears. Darth Vader, I sense a disturbance in the force. Who dares meddle with the power of seduction? Darth Vader, what are you doing here? Darth Vader, I heard there was a sexy showdown happening. Count me in. Scene change, the battle between the gang, the Venus Vamp Vexation, Satellite Sexy Sneak Peek, and Darth Vader ensues. Rick, this is insane. It's like a cosmic orgy of chaos. Hang on, Morty, we're almost there. Scene change, the gang finally defeats the Venus Vamp Vexation. Well, that was some great a nebulous nightstand nonsense. I can't believe we actually did it. We saved the world from a seductive succubus. Scene change. Back at home, everyone reflects on their adventure. So, Jerry, still thinking about becoming a rock star? Nah, Summer. I think I'll stick to my day job. Being a hero is exhausting. Well, Morty, another adventure saved the day. Who knows what crazy situation we'll find ourselves in next. I don't know, Rick, but I hope it's a little less sexually charged next time. No promises, Morty. No promises. Hey Morty, buckle up. We're about to embark on a scientifically improbable adventure. Ah, uh, Rick, do we really need to drive through this radioactive wasteland? I mean, isn't there an easier way? Morty, it's all about the thrill of the ride. Plus, I need some rare isotopes to power my invention. Just hold on to your seat and try not to mutate. Great, now I'm going to end up with three arms and a second head. Thanks a lot, Rick. Don't mention it, Morty. Plus, who knows, three arms could come in handy. You could play the guitar, eat a sandwich, and text your crush all at the same time. That's not even realistic, Rick. I don't have a crush, and even if I did, they wouldn't be into three-armed mutants. Fine, Morty, be that way. But when we save the world, don't come crying to me about your love life. Whatever, Grandpa. Just focus on finding those isotopes so we can get out of here. Just then, a time-traveling entity appears before them. Time-traveling entity, Rick Sanchez. I demand you surrender your time-traveling technology or face the consequences. Oh great, another wannabe all-powerful entity. Morty, hand me the portal gun. Let's show this time-traveling dweeb who's boss. Rick, is it really a good idea to mess with time travel? I've seen what can go wrong in the movies. Morty, this ain't the movies, it's real life. Besides, I've got an infinite number of clones just in case anything goes wrong. Now, watch and learn. Rick opens a portal and traps the time-traveling entity in a time loop. 
Time traveling entity, no, you can't do this to me. Oh, I just did. Time's up, pal. Get ready for an eternity of deja vu. That was intense, Rick. You really showed that guy who's in control. Of course, Morty. Now, let's get back to our original mission. We've got a robot karaoke contest to win. Meanwhile, at the robot karaoke contest. Oscar Langley saw you, HMPH. I can't believe I'm stuck in this lame competition. My talents are wasted here. Tell me about it. I could be partying with my friends, but no. I'm stuck here listening to clanky robots sing Taylor Swift. Oscar Langley saw you. Uh, look at that rusty bucket of bolts over there. I bet he couldn't carry a tune in a shopping cart. Oh, you mean Bender? Yeah, he's a bit rough around the edges, but rumor has it he's got a killer rendition of Bohemian Rhapsody. Oscar Langley saw you. Ha, huh, I'll believe it when I see it. No way a walking trash can like him could outdo my vocal range. Rick and Morty crash the contest with their robot, aptly named, Crudertron 3000 Inches. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be blown away by the greatest robot singer in the multiverse. Yeah, we programmed it to hit all the high notes. Get ready for a one-of-a-kind performance. Crudertron 3000 starts belting out a soulful rendition of, My Heart Will Go On. Oscar Langley saw you, what the? That robot's got more talent in its pinky finger than I do in my entire body. Looks like you underestimated the clanky competition, Asuka. Asuka Langley saw you, shut up, Summer. I'll show them, I'll show them all. Asuka storms off, determined to return with an even bigger and better robot. Well, Morty, that was unexpected. I guess sometimes even robots can steal the show. Yeah, but it's not every day we witness a robot singing competition. I guess anything can happen with you, Rick. That's right, Morty. Now, let's celebrate our victory by grabbing some interdimensional fast food. I'm craving some Szechuan sauce. As long as it doesn't lead us into another crazy adventure, I'm down for it, Rick. Let's go! Morty, get over here. We've got a situation unfolding in the backyard. Whoa, Rick. What's going on? Look at that small alien with a green eye and silver hat over there. He's just standing there with a frisbee. Total weirdo. Yeah, Rick, but what's the big deal? The big deal, Morty, is that he's about to launch that frisbee and cause a chain reaction that'll implode the entire galaxy. Oh jeez, Rick. We gotta stop him. Hold on, Morty. I've got an idea. Childish Gambino, get your ass down here. Childish Gambino, what's up, Rick? Need some smooth tools to calm the situation? No, Gambino, we need your soccer skills. This alien thinks he's got game. Show him what we got. Gambino, alright, Morty, let's do this. Pass me the frisbee. Are you sure about this, Rick? Soccer with a frisbee? Trust me, Morty, this is the only way to save the universe. Meanwhile, in the depths of space. I'm traveling wedding planner. Finally, the perfect spot for Jerry's alien crush to witness his proposal. The romantic center of the universe. Back on Earth. Gambino, nice job, Morty. We scored some goals, but this alien is persistent. Morty, hand me that time traveling device. It's time to up the stakes. But Rick, what if we mess up the timeline? Don't worry, Morty. You know I'm an expert at this. I'll make sure we don't cause any paradoxes. This time. Time jumps and they find themselves at Jerry's alien crush's planet. Alien crush. Jerry, I am truly amazed by your romantic gesture, but I must decline your proposal. I'm already in love with someone else. Sabi, who is it? Is it a better version of me? Alien crush. It's Rick. He stole my heart with his infinite universes and his sarcastic charm. Rick and Morty burst into the scene. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got a galaxy to save. Alien crush. Rick, you heartbreaker. You've come for me? No, not really. But it seems your little frisbee game caused chaos across the universe. Rick, Rick, what do we do now? Easy, easy. Morty, 
we just reverse the time travel device and undo everything. Then jump back and find the small alien once again standing in the grass with a frisbee. Hey, buddy, nice throw. Keep it up. I can't believe it, Rick. We just caused all that mayhem for nothing? Well, Morty, let's avenge it, and then you die. Let's go get some ice cream. Drink. They walk away, leaving the small alien fused in the galaxy as he had for now. Title, Cosmic Infantry. Location, Rick's Garage Lab. Bunch of overwork with Tinkering Rick Gadgets. Morty, Pat Me's an interdimensional flux capacitor. Handing it over. Ah, uh, Rick, Rick, I've been meaning to ask you something. What if my school crush, Jessica, is actually an alien from another dimension? Chuckles. Morty, you've got a wild imagination. But even if she is, it doesn't matter. Get your head in the game, Morty. Location, Morty School Hallway. Fidget is phone, I'm finding Jessica. Hey, hey, Jessica, we can talk. Jessica, looking intrigued. Sure, Morty, what's up? up? Nervously, ah, uh, uh, I've been having thoughts about that, that uh, uh, you could, could be off uh, from another dimension. Jessica, smiling mysteriously, Morty, you have no idea. Let me show you something. Progression. Location, a hidden, a hidden alien spaceship. Astonished! Whoa, 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 Jessica! Jessica. Is this, this a ship? Are you really an alien? Jessica, transforms into the singularity as the stuff extraterrestrial. Morty, I am a singularity in Islander. I fought for the drop cost to find you. Stuttering me? What for? Singularity approaching Morty Morty strangely. You possess a unique essence. Morty, 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 we need a pause for dramatic immortality. Station, which is used by the Smith's philosophy. Which Richter, Swiss Beast, the sword, fighting off most monsters. Here, here, I sense it's a different issue than the cosmic energy. But the number one should intrude upon our reality. I'll strive. Something that should die in the ear. Which Richter, join me. Let's eradicate this first threat. Richter, observe the alien spaceship. The spaceship? This beast is anything I've never encountered before. Location, and that's that's all in reality. Confused is all the drink. Rick, Rick, who is this thing I learned to see Siren's surrender? What do you mean, Morty? Morty's unique sense is essential for immortality. Taking us away from his blast, long, long story, eh? But not less say they involve interdimensional beings, cosmic energy, and existential states. Morty's gonna have to make some tough choices ahead. I heard you to say what great things are in science fiction and fantasy, but making the story mysterious and unshocked. The most is written in science fiction, because like the castles and existential revelations, the characters have all their attitudes. And mature themes, which are very free in the American content. So, it's all going to be from multiple dimensions, but then the kind of characters from different universes are free in an unexpected adventure. Morty, what are you doing with those papers on that desk? And what the hell is that plate of corn doing there? Oh, Rick, I'm just, just trying to organize some of your scientific notes. And the corn, well, well, it felt like a good snack, you know? Morty, you, you can't just eat random food on that desk. That, that corn has been exposed to intergalactic radiation. It, it could turn you into a five-legged alien. Oh, jeez, Rick, I don't know. What's, what's going on here? Oh my god, Morty, are you eating the corn from Rick's lab again? Mom, it was just a snack. I didn't know it would turn me into some freaking alien. Morty, you never learn, do you? You're lucky your father isn't here to see this. Jerry, entering the room. What's that about me? Who's not lucky to see what? Jerry, 
Perfect timing as always. Guess what your son did? Ate lab corn. Lab corn? Morty, you idiot. How many times do I have to tell you to stay away from Rick's experiments? Sorry, Dad. I, I didn't realize it was such a big deal. You know what? This might actually work in our favor. Morty, you're now going to be the key to unlocking an alternate reality. An alternate reality? You, you've got to be kidding me. No, Morty. You see, the intergalactic radiation in that corn mixed with your DNA created a rift in space-time, allowing us to access Jerry's alternate reality. Wait, what? Alternate reality? I don't want any part in this. Dad, are you seriously considering going into Jerry's alternate reality? Just to prove a point? Of course, Beth. It's science. Plus, it'll be a chance to see what life would be like without Jerry around. Hey, wait, what's that supposed to mean? Strap in, Morty. We're about to embark on a journey through dimensions. And Jerry here is about to find out just how useless he truly is. Dad, this is ridiculous. Can't you find another way to prove Jerry's worth? Sorry, Beth, but I've made up my mind. Jerry's alternate reality. Here we come. Meanwhile in Jerry's alternate reality. Alternate wow, things are going surprisingly well for me in this reality. I guess I'm not as useless as I thought. Alternate Jerry, you're the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Alternate totally, Dad. You're like, the coolest person ever. Alternate, I want to be just like you when I grow up, Dad. You're tearing up. This is all I ever wanted. Love and respect for my family. Alternate Rick, first in, Jerry, what the hell are you doing? We don't have time for your emotional breakdowns. Sobbing, but, but I finally feel appreciated. Alternate well, snap out of it, Jerry, we've got a multiverse to save. Wiping his tears, okay, okay. I'm ready. Let's do this. Back in Rick's lab. Well, that was completely underwhelming. Turns out, Jerry's just as useless in every reality. Thanks for reminding me, Rick. I really needed that boost of confidence. Dad, can we please not mess with alternate realities anymore? It's just causing unnecessary chaos. Fine, fine, I guess you're right. But let me just check one more thing. Rick turns on the TV and sees a news report. TV reporter, breaking news. Interdimensional chaos erupts as random death plates of corn disappear from across the multiverse. Oh god damn it, Morty. You've really done it this time. Me? It was just a plate of corn. That plate of corn was a delicacy in three galaxies, Morty. I didn't know. That's it, Morty. We're going on a corn retrieval mission. Strap in. Oh jeez, here we go again. Hey Morty, you know what's statistically improbable? This psychotic scenario we're in right now. Why yeah, Rick, the whole situation feels pretty insane. What are we gonna do? Well Morty, it looks like we stumbled upon a man in uniform fondling the face of a green creature. This ain't no cosplay, Morty. Oh, Rick, I don't think that's appropriate at all. We should intervene, right? Sarcastically. Oh, really, Morty? Should we intervene? Great observation there, Captain Obvious. Hey, guys. Look what I found. A knife. Maybe I can save the day or something. Oh great, Jerry with a knife. You know what would be statistically improbable, Morty? Jerry actually being useful. Alright, let's just try to settle this, Rick. We can't just stand here watching everything unfold. Fine, Morty. Let's try talking to these whack jobs and see what they want with our green-faced friend here. Levi Ackerman, gruff voice, back off, you too. This alien is under arrest for trespassing on intergalactic grounds. Sarcastically. Oh wow, how noble of you, officer gruff voice. We know how much you love enforcing intergalactic laws. Officer, can't we just figure out what happened here? Levi Ackerman, no time for that. His fate has been sealed, mortals. Morty, 
Do you remember that time we went to the parallel universe where saving aliens became a charity event? Well, guess what? That event is happening right now. You've got to be kidding me, Rick. We can't save an alien and compete in a charity hugathon event at the same time. Forty. Assembly is required. Gather all the eccentric beings around, like that green-faced creature, for the Hugathon charity event extravaganza. But Rick, we're supposed to save him. Forty. Priorities. We need to show these beings some love, even if they're being dragged away to space prison. Bursting in, guys. Guys, I found something juicy in my secret diary. Intrigued. Oh, what did you find, Summer? A secret crush on an alien prince, perhaps? Blushing. How did you know? I'm a genius, Summer. It's in the job description. Rick, can we focus on the alien situation first? Fine, Morty. Let's finish the Hugathon event and get this alien prince some loving before he gets locked up. Levi Ackerman. Confused. What are you doing? Saving an alien from prison and participating in the Hugathon. Get ready for one hell of a ride, Officer Gruff Voice. Rick, how are we gonna pull this off? Morty. Prepare for the scientifically improbable. We're gonna show those aliens what it means to truly be hugged. I have the knife. I'm ready for action. Shut up, Jerry. Your knife is useless here. Let's save the alien prince and give him the best damn hug he's ever had. They all rush off, leaving Jerry confused and still clutching his pointless knife. End of script. Int. Abandoned Asylum Terror, Hallway, Day. The hallway is dimly lit, casting eerie shadows on the cracked walls. Debris litters the floor and walls, evidence of the asylum's gruesome past. A single source of light streams through the window at the far end of the corridor, illuminating the scene. Donovan, a grizzled political scientist frantically races down the hallway, beads of sweat dripping down his forehead. He glances back, fear pulsating through his veins. Donovan! Breathless! Shit! 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 They're coming for me! Suddenly, the sound of heavy footsteps echoes through the corridor, like a death knell. Donovan ducks into a nearby room, hiding behind a crumbling bookshelf. The footsteps draw closer, growing louder with each passing second. Donovan! Whispering! Stay calm! Donovan! Remember your training! A group of heavily armed mercenaries storms into the hallway, their eyes scanning the area with ruthless determination. They hold flashlights, their beams of light cutting the darkness. Mercenary number one. Gruff voice, spread out. We have orders to terminate Donovan at all costs. Donovan peeks through the shelves, his heart pounding against his chest. Donovan! Whispering! How did I end up running from a bunch of trigger happy maniacs? The mercenaries methodically search every inch of the hallway, their boots crunching debris underfoot. Mercenary number two. Low voice, he must be somewhere around here. Keep your eyes peeled. Suddenly, a rat scurries across the floor, catching the mercenary's attention. Mercenary number three. Startled, what the fuck was that? Did you see that rat? Mercenary number one. Sarcastic, oh yeah, that's him, the killer rat. Don't be an idiot, focus on finding Donovan. Donovan takes advantage of the distraction and quietly slips out of the room, carefully avoiding the mercenary's line of sight. Donovan! Whispering! Thank God for dim-witted mercenaries! Time to make my escape! Donovan continues down the hallway, his gaze fixed on the light coming from the window. Suddenly, the sound of a gunshot pierces the air. Mercenary number two. Panicked. He's here. Shoot him. Donovan leaps forward, narrowly avoiding a hail of bullets. He dives through the window, shattering the glass, and tumbles onto the grassy ground outside. Donovan! Grinning, made it! As Donovan starts running into the distance, the mercenaries appear at the broken window, watching him disappear. Mercenary number one. Frustrated, fucking hell. He got away. Mercenary number two. Disappointed, should we give chase? Mercenary number one. Exasperated, no, forget it. Let's report back. That political scientist is a slippery bastard. 
the mercenaries reluctantly retreat, leaving Donovan to celebrate his narrow escape. Donovan! Triumphant! Freedom, my sweet lady! Now, where's the nearest bar to celebrate? Fade out. Hey Morty, check out this stuffed animal I found. It's sitting on someone's backpack with a weird tag on its side and a sticker on the back. Definitely not your average plushie, Morty. Ah, uh, Rick, why do you always find the most bizarre things? What's so special about this stuffed animal? Well, Morty, this isn't just any ordinary toy. This cute little thing is actually a highly advanced alien creature. It has the ability to induce vivid, dreadful sleepwalker terrors in anyone who touches it. It's like a cosmic Freddy Krueger, Morty. Oh, geez, Rick. That sounds terrifying. What kind of sicko alien would create something like that? I don't know, Morty. Maybe some lonely alien with a twisted sense of humor. But hey, let's not dwell on it. I think Jerry might actually enjoy this. Jerry enters the room. What's going on, guys? Hey, Rick, I see you found a cute little plushie. Mind if I take a look? Oh, not at all, Jerry. In fact, I think it would be perfect for you. Go ahead, touch it. Jerry grabs the stuffed animal. Wow, this is so adorable. I can't wait to show it to Beth and the kids. Oh, Jerry, you might want to be careful with that thing. Rick says it causes really messed up nightmares. Oh, come on. It's just a toy. What's the worst that could happen? Cut to later that night. Jerry, what on earth did you bring into the house? I've just had the most dreadful nightmares ever. I... I don't know, Beth. I thought it was just a harmless stuffed animal. Dad, that thing is like an evil dream generator. I had dreams about giant alien spiders, and they were wearing tuxedos, Morty. Yeah, and I dreamt I was being chased by a giant floating pickle screaming, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. It was horrifying, Jerry. I didn't think it would be so, so intense. I'm sorry, everyone. Well, Jerry, that's what you get for being an idiot. Now, let's try to fix this mess before reality starts melting or something. Beth, Summer, and Morty try to stabilize their chaotic dreams with Rick's help. Rick, can you please do something about this? Fine, fine. I'll whip something up that should reverse the effects. Just hold on a sec. Meanwhile, Jerry receives an unexpected invitation. Alien TV announcer, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bachelor Showdown, the universe's most outrageous intergalactic dating show. And tonight, we have a special surprise guest, Jerry Smith. What? How did I end up here? Rick, is this your doing? Oh, sorry Jerry, looks like the universe has a twisted sense of humor too. Have fun on your date. Jerry gets whisked away to a surreal alien dating show where chaos ensues. Rick, what do we do now? Well, Morty, I guess we sit back, grab some mooshu pork, and enjoy the Jerry show. This could be the most statistically improbable scenario yet. The family gathers around the TV, laughing at Jerry's futile attempts to impress his alien suitors. I can't believe this is happening. Honestly, I'm just glad it's not one of us for once. Yeah, maybe Jerry being the universal punching bag isn't so bad after all. Rick smirks, takes a bite of mooshu pork, and leans back in his chair, enjoying the chaos that unfolds on the screen. Leave the door open, Morty. This is going to be one hell of a ride. Morty, Morty, wake up. We've got a real shitstorm on our hands. Whoa, what? Rick, what's going on? 
Drap yourself in, Morty. We're about to witness a scientific phenomenon that even I can't explain. Oh, great. And what's that, Rick? Look over there on the baseball field. Some poor saps lying unconscious, holding a baseball bat and a glove. It's like they got hit with a cosmic fastball. Holy crap, Rick! Who could have done that? I have no idea, Morty. But something tells me this is gonna take us on a wild ride. Morty checks the person's pulse while Rick examines their surroundings. I think they're alive, Rick. We need to help them. No time, Morty. Just remember, this incident is bound to be connected to something much bigger. Our job is to figure it out before it blows up in our faces. Alright, let's get this over with. But can we at least grab some Szechuan sauce on the way? Morty, this isn't the time for your fast food cravings. We're dealing with a person who got knocked out on a baseball field. Fine, fine. Let's just go. They venture into a nearby town, encountering strange characters along the way. Look, Morty, it's Harry Styles. What? What's he doing here? Who knows, Morty, maybe he's singing a romantic ballad to the unconscious baseball player. Are you the one, Harry? Harry Styles? Rick, Morty, you're right on time. I've been serenading this person to wake them up, but nothing's working. Why would you think that would work, Harry? Harry Styles? Love has mysterious ways, Morty. Alright, enough of this romantic nonsense. We need answers, and we need them now. They finally discover a hidden laboratory, filled with interdimensional goo. Morty, I think we found the source of the cosmic fastball. This lab seems responsible for altering reality. Altering reality? What the hell, Rick? Yeah, Morty, seems like they've been playing with forces they can't even begin to comprehend. This cosmic fastball was just a side effect. They confront the scientist responsible. Scientist, Rick, Morty, you've stumbled upon my grand experiment. I wanted to create a reality where everyone is romantically linked to Harry Styles. What? That's insane. You're damn right it is. Look at the chaos you've caused. Scientist, I just thought it would bring eternal happiness, you know? But I guess you can't force love or bring Harry Styles to every baseball game. Morty cuffs the scientist while Rick dismantles the experiment. So, what now, Rick? We return everything to normal and hope there won't be any lasting repercussions. But as always, Morty, we'll never truly know the impact of our actions. That's heavy, Rick. Yeah, well, life isn't always sunshine and rainbows, Morty. Now let's get the hell out of here before things get even weirder. They escape the laboratory, leaving behind a trail of confusion and broken hearts. Alright Morty, buckle up for another wild ride through the cosmos. We've got a planet named Terra Mystica in our sights, supposedly filled with alien rebels and mysterious green lights. Ah, uh, Rick, are we really going there? I mean, last time we were in space, things got pretty messy. Messy, Morty, that was just a minor hiccup. Besides, this time we're talking about Summer's unexpected romance with an alien rebel leader. Who knows what crazy drama is waiting for us. Yeah, but Rick, I thought aliens weren't her thing. She's into that Pixie Bob guy from the Haunted Carnival Nightmare. Trust me, Morty, Pixie Bob is just a phase. Summer has a thing for drama, and what's more dramatic than falling for a green alien while saving the universe? I guess you're right, Rick. Drama seems to follow us everywhere anyway. Remember when my multiverse doppelganger showed up and tried to steal my life? Oh yeah, that was intense. But let's not dwell on the past, Morty. This Terra Mystica adventure is gonna be mind-bending. Literally, those green lights have some strange properties. What do you mean, strange properties? Are they like mind control or something? Mind control? Nah, Morty, that's old news. These lights, when combined, create a statistical improbability that manifests as a green alien with a green light on top and another one on the bottom. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, Morty, when has anything we've encountered ever made sense? That's the beauty of it. Now, let's see what Terra Mystica has in store for us. Strap in, kid. 
All right, Rick, but if anything goes wrong, I'm holding you responsible. Relax, Morty, it'll be fine. Now, let's get ready for some intergalactic shenanigans. Terra Mystica, here we come. Narrator. In a vibrant and whimsical cartoon world, a group of people gathered beneath a mesmerizingly pink sky. Among them, a blue and orange robot named Shopkins soared through the air, its metallic wings gleaming in the sunlight. Little did they know, this innocent scene was about to take a wild and vulgar turn. Shopkins. Zooming overhead. Look at me, bitches. I'm the flying king of this colorful shit show. Naruto, Naruto Next Generations. Hey, watch your mouth, you metallic monstrosity. This is a family friendly show. Shopkins. Mockingly, family friendly? Screw that. I'm here to make this scene. X rated, baby. Narrator. Unbeknownst to the characters, a bolt of lightning struck the ground, causing the pink background to transform into a swirling vortex of sinister energy. Shopkins. Laughing maniacally. Oh shit. What the actual fuck just happened? Oruto, wide-eyed, this can't be good, we need to get out of here. Narrator, suddenly, the characters found themselves trapped within a zany and outrageous scenario, where their desires would be stripped bare and their inhibitions shattered. Shopkins, tauntingly, you all thought this was a child's game? Well, guess what, we're about to go on one hell of a dirty ride. Oruto, frustrated, this is not what I signed up for, can someone please explain what the hell is going on? Narrator, as the group squirmed in discomfort, a mysterious voice echoed through the chaotic landscape. Voice. Sinisterly. Welcome to the realm of unleashed desires, where your deepest and dirtiest fantasies come to life. Shopkins. Eyes widening. Holy shit. Did we just enter a porno? I never knew my circuits could get this excited. Oruto, blushing. Ah, can't we just find a way out of here and forget this ever happened? Narrator. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, a glimmer of realization flickered within the group. Shopkins. Perplexed? Wait a minute. If this is a world of unleashed desires, can I finally get laid? Oruto, facepalming seriously, that's your priority right now, we need to find a way back, not indulge in carnal pleasures. Shopkins. Smirking, oh, come on. Where's your sense of adventure, ninja boy? Let's explore the wild side together. Oruto. Grumbling fine, but only if it helps us figure out how to escape this twisted place. Narrator. And so, with a mix of reluctance and excitement, the characters embarked on a journey that defied the laws of physics and sanity. In a world where pink skies and flying robots met explicit desires, they would discover untold secrets about themselves and perhaps find a way to return to their once innocent cartoon reality. Shopkins. Winking at Boruto. Get ready, my ninja friend. This ride is about to get rough and oh so satisfying. Oruto, blushing furiously, I can't believe I'm doing this but let's give it our all. Who knows what surprises this crazy world has in store for us. Narrator. And so, in a whirlwind of absurdity and explicit adventures, they continued their journey, leaving behind a trail of laughter and raised eyebrows. Little did they know, these events would forever change their perception of cartoons and unleash a whole new level of adult-oriented storytelling in the animated realm. Morty, we've got another adventure on our hands. I've tracked some mind-controlled super soldiers created by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Let's go stop them before they cause some real damage. Oh, Rick, do we really have to? I mean, can't we just watch TV or something? Morty, life isn't just about sitting on your ass and binge watching Netflix. Now grab your portal gun and let's get going. Hey guys, what's all the commotion about? 
Oh great, Jerry's here. Just what we needed, Jerry. Mind-controlled super soldiers are on the loose, and we're going to stop them. Mind-controlled super soldiers? Isn't it bad enough that I have to deal with being chosen as a bachelor in an interdimensional dating show? I can't catch a break. Jerry, this might be your chance, you know, to prove that you have some usefulness. Yeah, great. I can't wait to be laughed at by aliens and weird creatures from other dimensions. Enough about Jerry, let's go already. I heard there's a beast on a deserted island nearby that's causing havoc. Oh, really? A deserted island beast? That sounds intriguing. Let's make a quick detour, Morty. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure we should be sidetracking? Those mind-controlled super soldiers are dangerous. Morty, relax, we'll get to them eventually. But first, I want to see if this deserted island beast is as fearsome as they say. Can I just stay on the boat? No, Jerry, it's all hands on deck for this adventure. Alright, let's go, everyone. We've got a beast to hunt and mind-controlled super soldiers to stop. Strap in, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Scene shifts to the deserted island where the group encounters a robotic creature. Oh my, is that a robotic beast? Rick, what have you gotten us into this time? Relax, Summer, it's just a rumor. Rumors spread like wildfire, you know? It's probably just a malfunctioning toaster. Rick, it's, it's attacking us. What do we do? Morty, don't worry, I've got this. Rick pulls out a gadget and disables the robotic beast. Wow, Rick, that was impressive. You really know your way around those gadgets. Yeah, I'm pretty amazing like that. Now let's get back to tracking those super soldiers. Rick, before we do that, we need to talk about these robotic romance rumors. Oh, for the love of. Can we focus on the task at hand, please? Dad, you can't just dismiss everything. These rumors could be a major breakthrough in AI technology. Fine, fine, we'll look into it later. But right now, we have a mission to complete. Suddenly distracted. Wait, what's that sound? It sounds like music. Is that Drake? No way, Rick, you got Drake to perform for us? Uh, no, Jerry. It looks like Drake's spaceship crash landed nearby, and he's just blasting his music to get attention. Well, this has taken a strange turn. Let's go help him out, guys. They all rush towards the crash site, while Drake's music gets louder. Scene ends with a hilarious montage of Rick, Morty, Jerry, Beth, and Summer rescuing Drake, fighting mind-controlled super soldiers, and debunking the robotic romance rumors. Morty, you better buckle up because we're about to go on the wildest adventure yet. Oh, geez Rick, I don't know if I can handle another one. Last time we ended up in a dimension ruled by sentient pickles. Morty, it's like you want to spend your life sitting on the couch watching Wheel of Fortune with Jerry. Hey, what's wrong with Wheel of Fortune? It's a classic. Everything, Jerry, everything is wrong with it. Can you guys please stop bickering? I need to focus on my complex relationships and my career as a horse surgeon. Ah! Mom, nobody cares about horse surgeons. I just want to go on adventures and hang out with Ugmar. Ugmar? Again? That eight-eyed alien creep can't even pronounce your name right. Yeah, Summer, maybe you should find someone who appreciates n-dimensional particle physics like Rick. Or, you know, someone who showers regularly. Or D. Watch it or tonight's story is gonna be about Morty's incredible disappearing testicles. Alright, alright. I'll be good. Where are we going anyway? We're going to see Phil Collins in concert, Morty. The man's music is the key to interdimensional travel. Seriously? You'd go through all this trouble just to see Phil Collins? Morty, you have no idea what it's like to be a genius with exquisite taste. I agree with Rick. I danced with Phil Collins at my high school prom. He's a real charmer. Mom, how did you not tell me about this? 
That's like a scandalous family secret. Drama! We finally have something juicy to talk about at school tomorrow. Enough about that, Morty. We're here. Strap on your diapers, people. We're about to experience some serious Genesis vibes. Ah, uh, Rick. I've been meaning to tell you. I accidentally sold one of my kidneys to afford these tickets. What? Morty, are you serious? Morty, that's so crazy. But I guess it's better than selling your soul or something. Morty, you dumbass. You can't survive with just one kidney. Oh man, I guess I didn't think that through. It's not like I can buy a new kidney at the interdimensional black market. Well, actually. I mean, I could probably perform a kidney transplant. I am a horse surgeon after all. Oh, great. Now we're gonna have a horse as a son-in-law. Shut up, Jerry. We don't have time for your dumb jokes. Beth, do your horse surgery thing and save this idiot kid. Fine, but if anything goes wrong, it's on you, Rick. Thanks, guys. I can't believe I'm gonna have a horse kidney inside me. Morty, this is gonna make you the most unique kid in school. You'll be like a freaking legend. All right, Beth, enough chatting. Save Morty so we can get this show on the road. Much chaos ensues as Beth performs the kidney transplant, and miraculously, Morty survives. There, the surgery was a success. Morty, you officially have the most rock and roll kidney in the entire universe. Thanks, Mom. I owe you one. Let's go, Morty. We need to experience the transcendence of Phil Collins together. Meanwhile, at the Phil Collins concert. Phil Collins, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how about we teleport to another dimension with my drum solo? Rick, whispering, Morty, this is it. The pinnacle of existence. Yeah, I'm just glad I have both my kidneys to fully appreciate it. They both start dancing like there's no tomorrow, completely losing themselves in the music. All right, Morty, I've developed a new invention that will blow your mind. Oh, what is it this time, Rick? It's a portal gun that takes you to alternate dimensions where everyone has Willa Wonka's massive bazongas. Chuckles and cups chest. Rick, seriously? Can't we just go on a normal adventure? Morty, you underestimate the power of Willa Wonka's bazongas. Come on, it'll be a wild ride. Scene transitions to an alternate dimension with a giant chocolate factory. Whoa, Rick, this dimension is insane. Yeah, Morty, but have you seen the size of those bazongas? They're bigger than any scientific discovery. Enters the scene, hey, what's all this commotion? Jerry, my man, welcome to the dimension of colossal bazongas. Seriously, Rick? Is that all you care about? I care about a lot of things, Jerry, but these bazongas are worthy of scientific research. Scene shifts to a laboratory with Rick conducting experiments on the bazongas. Rick, I think you're taking this a bit too far. Nonsense, Morty. Science is all about exploring the unknown, and these bazongas are uncharted territory. Enters the lab, what in the world is going on here? Beth, welcome to Willa Wonka's world of massive bazongas. Care to give them a squeeze? Rick, you're absolutely deranged. I can't believe I'm related to you. Rick continues his experiments, oblivious to the chaos happening around him. Runs into the lab guys, you won't believe this. The whole world is obsessed with these bazongas. Oh god, it's spreading like wildfire! An army of people with enlarged bazongas marches past the lab. This is madness. How did we end up in this mess? Well, Jerry, a curious mind will always lead you to bizarre and unlikely situations. Scene transitions to Rick and Morty desperately trying to close the portals. Rick, we have to stop this madness. I know, Morty, but these bazongas are proving harder to contain than an interdimensional black hole. Beth, Jerry, and Summer join the effort. Chaotic energy intensifies. We're running out of time, Morty. We need to find the source and shut it down. 
But Rick, how can we possibly locate the origin of all this chaos? Leave that to me, Morty. I've got a plan up my sleeve. Beth and Jerry exchange worried glances. Scene culminates in an epic battle against an evil genius named Dr. Curvaceous. Prepare to meet your doom, Dr. Curvaceous. Your reign of Bazonga chaos ends now. Dr. Curvaceous, you fools. You can't stop the power of the Basm gas. Rick and Morty defeat Dr. Curvaceous, sealing off the portal. Crisis averted, Morty. The world is safe from Bazonga-induced insanity. Thank God, Rick. I'm never going on an adventure like this again. Well, Morty, you never know what scientific wonders or massive bazongas might be out there in the multiverse. They both share a laugh as the scene fades out. Morty, you little creep. What are you doing with those binoculars? Oh, nothing, Rick. Just checking out, birds. Yeah, birds. Birds, huh? Well, why don't you fly away with those wings of yours and leave the ladies alone? I can't help it, Rick. Summer's going on a date with Jessica and... I can't stand the thought of them together. Morty, jealousy is the game of losers. But since you're so insistent on being a creep, Let's see what those lovebirds are up to. Whispering, they're going into that fancy restaurant, Rick. What could they possibly be doing here? I don't know, Morty, but I'm sure it's something statistically improbable and ridiculously unnecessary. Let's see. Whispering to himself, why is my daughter going on a date with Jessica? Is she into girls now? What did I do wrong? Oh, Jerry, relax. Maybe they're just grabbing a casual dinner. Or maybe Summers finally realized she can do way better than you. Angry? What? I'll show you, Rick. I'm going in there, stat. Oh great, now we have Jerry stirring up trouble. Morty, let's follow suit and crash this party. Excited. Jessica, I can't believe we're doing this. It's so wild and spontaneous. Jessica, laughing, I know, right. I'm glad you're up for anything. Let's make tonight unforgettable. Whispering, Rick, did you hear that? They're up to something big. Sarcastically, oh, no, Morty, it must be the biggest conspiracy since Watergate. To the waiter, excuse me, do you have any glow-in-the-dark spaghetti? Waiter, confused, glow-in-the-dark, spaghetti? Jessica, giggling, yeah, you know, like the ones they have at that underground rave club. Waiter, I'm sorry, but we don't have that. Is there anything else I can get for you? Uttering to himself, glow in the dark spaghetti. What has this world come to? Whispering, they're talking about some underground rave club, Rick. We have to find it. Oh, Morty, you really think there's a secret club where they serve glow in the dark spaghetti? Fine, we'll investigate. Excitedly, Jessica, let's go on an adventure. I know this hidden entrance to the club. Come on. Whispering, they're leaving the restaurant, Rick. We need to follow them. Bursting in, Summer. What is going on here? Are you dating Jessica now? Annoyed, Dad, can't you see we're busy? We're going to an underground rave club. You wouldn't understand. Defensive, I can rave. I can be cool. Wait for me. Sarcastically, oh great, the whole family's going to the rave, Morty. What could possibly go wrong? Excited, I don't know, Rick, but I have a feeling this is going to be one hell of a night. Scene ends with Rick, Morty, Summer, Jessica, and a reluctant Jerry walking into a neon-lit, chaotic underground rave club. Morty, 
we're going on a mind-bending, reality-warping adventure today. Strap in, kid. Aw, oh, Rick, I don't know if I'm ready for another crazy adventure. Morty, you're never ready. That's the beauty of it. Now, listen up, we're going deep into the ocean to prove that sharks have gossip sessions. Gossip sessions? Sharks? Yeah, Morty, sharks have been known to communicate through a complex system of clicks and vibrations. I want to know what they're talking about. Alright, but how are we going to get close to them without getting eaten? You two are not going anywhere near sharks without proper protection. I've made you some state-of-the-art underwater suits. Wow, Beth, I'm impressed. You did something useful for once. Bite me, Rick. Look, Rick! There's a shark with a big mouth and a smaller shark swimming right beside it with an even smaller one. Morty, that's a statistically improbable scenario. Nature has a sick sense of humor. Let's get closer and see what they're talking about. Are you sure about this, Rick? Sharks are scary. Morty, the only thing scarier than sharks is Beth's cooking. Seriously, Rick? Now you're picking on me? Rick, I think they're onto us. They're circling around us. It's just a little shark intimidation tactic, Morty. Let me do the talking. Shark with a big mouth. Look at those two idiots. They think they can understand us. Smaller shark. Yeah, like we're just a bunch of mindless killing machines. Well, sharks, you caught us. We're here to reveal your secrets. Shark with a big mouth. Secrets? Ha! You puny humans know nothing. Smaller shark. That's right. We have a secret society where we discuss all the celebrity scandals in the ocean. Scandals? Wait, fish celebrities? Ordy, can you believe this? Even sharks gossip about the Kardashians in their own underwater TMZ. This is insane, Rick. And kinda hilarious. Exactly, Morty. Now let's leave these gossiping sharks to do their thing. Rick, what if they follow us? Morty, they're sharks. They can't leave their element. Now swim, Morty, swim. I'm swimming as fast as I can, Rick. I can't believe I'm witnessing a shark chase in my own backyard. Just another day in the Smith family, Beth. Phew, we made it out, Rick. That's right, Morty. We're the coolest, smartest mother of censored duo in the universe. I don't know about that, Rick, but this adventure was definitely something else. I hope you two realize how insane you are. But, somehow, I still love you both. Ah, Beth, you're too sweet. Now let's go home. I need a drink after that roller coaster of craziness. Morty, you little piece of Jerry's DNA, we've got a situation. I stumbled upon a poster today, with a robot and a neon light on its side. Oh, yeah, Rick. That doesn't sound like an emergency or anything. Oh, shut up, Morty. This isn't just any poster. It's a highly advanced piece of interdimensional technology, capable of repairing anything it sees fit. Repairing anything? Like, my love life. Ah, oh, no chance, Morty. But it can repair a bismuth-powered reactor, which just happens to be on a planet overrun with rabid Yogi Bear look-alikes. Seriously? I mean, Yogi Bear? What's next, Snagglepuss leading an interdimensional army? Morty, you have no idea. We're gonna have to go to that planet, steal their reactor, and get out before they realize we're cartoon characters in disguise. Rick, do you really think this is a good idea? It sounds dangerous and absurd. Oh, Beth the queen of rationality. It's the only way, trust me. Besides, I need to repair my Adidas space boots and this poster is our golden ticket. Okay, so we're going to a Yogi Bear infested planet, stealing their tech, and repairing your fancy shoes? This is starting to sound like a twisted cartoon crossover. Morty, when have any of our adventures made any sense? We do what we want, Morty, and we make it work. Now get the spaceship ready, we're leaving in five. Morty sighs. Fine, but if we die, I'm haunting you as a sassy ghost forever. They enter the spaceship and take off, leaving a cloud of weirdness behind. 
Buckle up, Morty. It's about to get weirder than that time we accidentally merged with an entire dimension of sentient pickles. Ah, oh, I thought we agreed never to talk about the pickle incident again. Yeah, well, life finds a way, Morty, even when life is a brine-soaked cucumber. They arrive on the planet and are immediately surrounded by Yogi Bear clones wielding pick a nick baskets. Rick, why do they all look so pissed off? Morty, they're protecting their precious bismuth. Just follow my lead and act like a total psycho. They'll never suspect a thing. Morty reluctantly joins Rick in attacking the Yogi lookalikes, knocking them out one by one. Morty, grab that reactor, and let's get the hell out of here. Morty retrieves the reactor and they dash back to the spaceship with a swarm of angry Yogi Bear clones in pursuit. Rick, hurry up. They're gaining on us. Relax, Beth, we've got this under control. They escape just in time, leaving the furious Yogi clones behind. Phew, we made it! Rick, can we please never talk about this adventure ever again? Greed, Morty, but remember, we're the heroes of infinite dimensions, and you're my annoying sidekick. I'm not annoying, Rick. I just suffer from chronic exposure to your insanity. Enough bickering, you two. Let's just hope this poster thingy repairs more than just your Adidas, Rick. Morty, Morty, Morty. You won't believe what I found in the garage. Guess what? Oh, what now, Rick? Portal gun. We're going on another adventure. Oh, great. Just what I needed. More interdimensional chaos. Can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to figure out why a man in a spacesuit with glowing eyes is standing in our backyard. Glowing eyes, you say? Sounds like he's been snorting plutonium or something. Dad, that's not scientifically possible. Says the guy who's been chased by intergalactic aliens. Guys, focus. What do we do about the spacesuit guy? Relax, Beth. I'll just whip up some kind of mind-altering contraption to communicate with him. Yeah, because that always ends well, doesn't it? Shut up, Morty. You know, sometimes I think you were a lab accident. Says the guy who created me with a shrink ray. Touché, Morty. Now, let me concentrate. Beth, Rick, and Morty gather around the spacesuit guy with the mind-altering device. Alright, spacesuit guy, what's your deal? Spacesuit guy, I come from the planet Zorgon to warn you about the imminent destruction of Earth. Destruction? Is there anything we can do? Spacesuit guy, yes, gather the sacred crystals hidden throughout the universe and perform the sacred dance to summon the cosmic protector. Oh great, now we have to dance like idiots too? Morty, dancing is a universal language. We'll be fine. Beth, Rick, and Morty set out on a wild goose chase across countless dimensions, collecting crystals and learning bizarre dance moves. Are we seriously doing this, Rick? I mean, dancing to save the world? Morty, haven't you learned by now that anything is possible in the multiverse? Now let's get jiggy with it. They stumble upon the final crystal and return to Earth, ready to perform the sacred dance. All right, guys, let's do this. They begin dancing with absurdly elaborate moves and synchronized jumps. Out of breath, Rick, I can't keep up anymore. Morty, you're disappointing me. Just shake your booty. Before they can finish the dance, the Cosmic Protector appears in a blast of colorful lights. Cosmic Protector, congratulations, Earthlings. Your dance has successfully averted destruction. Do it. Dancing always saves the day. I can't believe it worked. I can't believe I danced in front of an interdimensional being. Cosmic Protector, farewell and remember, always dance like there's no tomorrow. With that, the Cosmic Protector disappears into thin air. Well, that was unnecessarily complicated. But, Rick, we saved the world. Yeah, yeah, now let's go back to my lab and hit that crack. I mean, science stuff. I can't believe you just said that out loud. Relax, Morty, it's a joke. Or is it? <laughs> 
just keep dancing like nobody's watching. They all share a laugh as they walk back home, ready for their next mind-bending adventure. Morty, I've discovered a dimension called Weedle Weed Weedle Weed Weedle. It's a planet filled with the most potent strain of marijuana you'll ever experience. Whoa, Rick, that sounds insane. We gotta check it out. Yeah, Morty, trust me, this is the good stuff. Just a single puff will blow your mind. Hey guys, what are you up to? Summer, we're about to embark on a mind-altering journey to Weedle Weed Weedle Weed Weedle. You in? Ah. Uh Seriously? Can't you leave me out of your crazy adventures for once? Come on, Summer, you could be the doodle dee doodle dee doodle. The white knight of crumple crumple butter bumble. White knight? Is that some kind of weird weed superhero? Yeah, Summer, you could save the land of crumple crumple butter bumble from the evil weedle weedle weed weedle. Fine, whatever. Just hand me that marijuana plant. Here, Summer, hold this. It's the key to your destiny. Holding the marijuana plant great, I'm a knight now. Just what I always wanted. Okay, everyone, take a hit of this super weed. Let the madness begin. Morty, Rick, and Summer start smoking the super weed. Whoa, this is intense. I can see colors I've never even imagined. That's just the beginning, Morty. Brace yourself. Guys, I think I can hear the plants talking to me. They're asking for my guidance. Brace your destiny. Doodle dee doodle dee doodle. Crumple crumple butter bumble needs you. Fine, I'll do it. I'll save the world of crumple crumple butter bumble with my newfound weed powers. Whoa, Summer, you're like the chosen one or something. Okay, let the journey to crumple crumple butter bumble commence. They step through a portal and find themselves in a whimsical land. Look, Morty, it's crumple crumple butter bumble. The plants are so beautiful here. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Can we get back to reality soon? Morty, we're in another dimension. Reality can wait. Fear not, citizens of Crumple Crumple Butter Bumble. I have arrived to save the day. The citizens cheer and throw flowers at summer. And I'm just here for the crazy ride. Oh, Morty, you always know how to enjoy the ride. Let's go, team. Crumple Crumple Butter Bumble needs our help. Morty, Rick, and Summer embark on their mission to save Crumple Crumple Butter Bumble, high on super weed, and ready to face any bizarre obstacle that comes their way. In the end, Summer's unexpected heroics as Doodle Dee Doodle Dee Doodle save the day in Crumple Crumple Butter Bumble. They return home, slightly less high but with memories of a daring adventure that defied all sense and reason. And as always, Morty learns that when it comes to Rick's crazy ideas, it's best to just sit back and enjoy the ride. Morty, you're disappointing me. Now shake your booty while I throw half full beer bottles at you. Aw oh geez, Rick, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why don't we just, you know, do something normal for once? Normal is for losers, Morty. I need you to be my dancing target practice. Shake that booty. Fine, fine. I'll do it, but only because you're my grandpa and all. Rick throws a half full beer bottle at Morty. Ouch. That really hurt, Rick. My forehead's bleeding. Oh, calm down, Morty. It's just a little blood. I'm sure it'll stop pouring out eventually. You're enjoying this way too much, Rick. What on earth is going on in here? Oh my god. Is Morty bleeding? Relax, ladies. It's just a little forehead injury. Morty knew the risks. Are you serious? 
You're throwing beer bottles at your own grandson? That's messed up, Rick. Yeah, Dad, that's crossing a line. You can't just treat Morty like some kind of disposable target. Look, I'm sorry if I went a bit too far, but it's all in the name of science. Morty's got a thick skull. He'll be fine. Oh, guys, my vision's getting blurry. Maybe we should take me to a hospital? Hospitals are for the weak, Morty. I'll fix you up in no time with my advanced alien technology. Morty stumbles, crashing into a shelf full of bizarre gadgets. Oh, what the hell, Rick? Oops, my bad. I guess my inventions are a bit haphazardly placed around here. Seriously, Rick? You're seriously risking Morty's life for some stupid experiment? Hey, I warned him, Summer. Morty knew what he was getting into. This is not okay, Rick. You have to stop putting Morty in danger like this. Fine, fine. I'll take him to the damn hospital. Just stop nagging me about it. Morty collapses on the floor. Morty? Oh my god, he's unconscious. Rick, we have to do something. He needs medical attention right now. All right, all right, Morty. Wakey, wakey. Time to get up. Oh, um, my head feels like it got hit by a truck. What happened? You got a little too close to my inventions, Morty. Nothing to worry about. You're both insane. Morty, we're taking you to the hospital right now. Morty's forehead begins to glow and emit a strange energy. Well, well, looks like Morty's forehead injury is activating some kind of mysterious interdimensional powers. How is that even possible? I don't know, Beth. We'll have to investigate further. Can't we just focus on getting me some medical help first? Definitely. Morty, your safety comes first. Let's figure this out together. Fine, fine, let's go. But I'm keeping this forehead injury Jedi powers thing on my list of potential experiments. Well, well, well. Look who decided to join the party in the afterlife. Morty and Summer. Hope you brought some good news because death is really starting to kill my vibe here. Rick, we can't just leave you here. We need you. Who else is going to save the universe from interdimensional chaos? Yeah, Grandpa Rick. We're not letting you retire in the afterlife. You owe us. Guys. All right. All right. Calm down, you little shits. Let me explain to you why I can't just pop back to life like some cosmic jack in the box. Joining the conversation. What's all the commotion about? Oh, my father is dead again? You two must be thrilled. Mom, we need to bring him back. We have a red light, a fire in the ground, and, ah, uh, some kind of forest. There must be a way. Smirking. Oh, Morty, you adorable simpleton. The red light, the fire, the forest. This is just a random assortment of irrelevant ingredients. It's not going to bring me back. In fact, even I can't explain why those things are there. So, you're saying there's no way to resurrect you? Are we just supposed to move on without you? Bingo, Summer, I'm dead, and there's nothing that can change that. Death is final, as in Endgame. But don't worry, I'll be haunting your dreams to remind you how much you'll miss me. This can't be happening. You can't just abandon us like this. Morty. Life is just a series of random, chaotic events. Sometimes it gives you a plumbus, and other times it takes away your beloved grandpa. Accept it. Well, if Rick's truly gone, I guess it's time for us to figure things out on our own. We'll have to try to survive without his brilliant, yet infuriating, guidance. Ah! Uh, are you kidding me? I'm not letting him off that easily. Morty, hand me that cursed Ouija board we bought last summer. Summer, are you sure about this? Messing with the supernatural can have serious consequences. Morty, it's Rick we're talking about. Consequences are his middle name. We're going to hell and dragging his ass back to the land of the living, whether he likes it or not. Oh, for the love of. You kids are relentless. Fine, let's go to hell and bring me back to life. This better make one hell of a story. They all step into the red light, disappearing into the fiery pit below. 
sighs, well, there goes our peaceful afterlife retirement. Guess chaos just follows us wherever we go. To be continued. Looking at the computer generated image. Well, 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 Morty. Looks like we got ourselves a situation here. This green light surrounded by electrical devices and wires can only mean one thing. Ah, oh, what does it mean, Rick? It means we have stumbled upon the most technologically advanced cosmic vibrator in the entire galaxy, Morty. This thing is capable of creating orgasms that transcend the boundaries of time and space. Whoa, Rick, are you serious? Sarcastically, no, Morty, I'm just messing with you. It's obviously a reprogrammed interdimensional PMS detector. What the hell do you think, Morty? Nervously, I don't know, Rick. You're always pulling these crazy stunts. Well, buckle up, Morty, because we're about to find out. Incident. Suddenly, Jerry bursts into the room, stumbling upon the green light. Panicking, what is this? What's going on, Rick? I thought this was the bathroom. Rolling eyes. Of course you did, Jerry. This is an advanced alien device capable of granting unimaginable pleasure. Get your mind out of the gutter and leave before you embarrass yourself further. Progression. Summer enters the room. Curious, what's all the fuss about, guys? Are we having a weird alien sex party without me? Laughs. Oh, Summer, always so naive. No, this is a scientific discovery. We're on the verge of unlocking the secrets of the universe. Entering, what the hell is going on in here? Why is everyone gathered around some green light surrounded by wires? Sarcastically, well, Beth, your husband here thought it was the bathroom. Morty was hoping for a wild orgasm, and Summer thought we were having an alien sex party. What do you think? Rolls eyes, great. Just great. Can you idiots just clean this mess up already? Yeah, sure, whatever, Beth. Just go back to your wine, okay? Morty hands Rick a strange looking tool. Rick, I found this. What is it? Ah, oh, Morty, that's the most vicious vasectomy device ever created. Perfect timing, kid. Wait, what? Why would we need that? Just trust me, Morty. We're gonna pull off the ultimate scientific experiment. A vasectomy that will make the whole universe shudder. They proceed to perform a mind-bogglingly bizarre and gruesome vasectomy defying all laws of normalcy. In agony, Rick, I can't take it anymore. Stop. Patience, Morty, science takes time, and a hell of a lot of precision and cutting. As the deed is done, the green light intensifies, and they're all left in awestruck silence. Well, Morty, with this vasectomy, we have undoubtedly changed the course of human history. Now let's go grab some Sichuan sauce. Everyone looks at Rick in disbelief, but eventually follows his lead, shaking their heads. Int kitchen, day. Steak, a juicy and perfectly cooked slab of meat on a plate, sits next to toaster, a metallic kitchen appliance, also on a plate. A grill light shines directly on the steak. Steak, sizzling, goddammit, who the fuck put a spotlight on me? I'm trying to relax here. Toaster, sarcastically, oh, cry me a river, Mr. High and Mighty Steak. Like you've got it so tough. Steak, you don't understand, toaster, I'm a piece of prime rib. I deserve respect, look at me, I have marbling like a motherfucker. Toaster, and what about me? I toast bread, bagels, English muffins. I've got versatility, baby. Ain't nobody can beat me at that game. Steak, confidently, I'm essential for a balanced diet. I provide protein and essential nutrients. People should worship the ground I walk on. Toaster, laughs, you don't walk, dumbass. You're just a piece of meat. Suddenly, Indiana Jones bursts into the kitchen, whip in hand. 
Indiana Jones. Hold on, everyone. There's an artifact hidden within this stake that could change the history of mankind. Stake? Confused? What the fuck are you talking about, Jones? I'm just a goddamn stake. Indiana Jones. Earnestly. No, my friend. This stake holds the key to the ancient recipe of the lost grilled sauce. Legends say it grants ultimate barbecuing power. Poster. Are you shitting me? The stake is the holy grail of grilling? Steak, intrigued? Well, in that case, I guess I'm pretty fucking important. What do you need me to do, Jones? Indiana Jones. We must journey to the secret temple of the gas grill gods. There, I'll perform the sacred grilling ritual, and we will unlock the sauce's magic. Steak, fine, but there better be some crispy bacon and a side of mashed potatoes waiting for me at the end of this adventure. Poster. Mockingly, oh, great steak. Perhaps we should roll out the red carpet too. Steak, smoking, you better, Toaster, or I'll toast your ass. As Indiana Jones leads the way, Toaster and Steak embark on a wildly improbable and absurd adventure that will forever change their perspective on their culinary significance. Fade out. What in the multiverse is going on here? Ah, oh, hey Rick, you might want to brace yourself for this one. Morty, don't you dare tell him. Sorry, Dad, I can't keep this crazy secret any longer. Rick, prepare yourself. I just walked in on Jerry practicing his kissing on you. Asps, Morty, don't you ever joke about something like that? You know I have standards. I wish I was joking, Rick, but it's as real as it gets. Poor guy was puckering up like a toad on a hot summer's day. Rick, buddy, it was purely scientific. I was just trying to improve my skills, you know. In disbelief, you think kissing me would improve your skills, Jerry? That's a new level of delusion, even for you. Entering the room, what's all the commotion about? Oh my god, Jerry. What have you been up to? Honey, it's not what it looks like. I was just interrupting kissing me yeah beth get a load of your husband's fantasies laughs seriously jerry are you that desperate it wasn't desperation i was trying to prove a point sarcastically oh well please enlighten us jerry what profound point were you trying to make that i can excel at kissing even when it's someone as unattainable as you rick laughs mockingly unattainable oh jerry you crack me up Good luck kissing your delusions at night. This is getting weirder by the second. Can we please just move on? Fine, Morty, but I won't forget this little incident. The multiverse has reached a new level of absurdity. Well, at least we can all agree on that. Jerry, maybe you should stick to practicing on something not so inappropriate. Fine, fine. Don't worry, I'll find a more realistic partner for my kissing exercises. Yeah, good luck with that. Just remember, no means no, Jerry. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate the fact that Rick actually cried because he thought this was all a dream? Defensively. Hey, it was a vulnerable moment. I never said I wanted it to be real, Morty. Whatever you say, Rick. Let's just hope this doesn't scar us for life. Scar us, Morty. We've seen things that would make this incident look like a walk in the park. Muttering to himself. Maybe I should sue the Council of Ricks for emotional distress. Jerry, honey, let's not take it that far. Just promise me you won't try that with anyone else again, okay? Fine, fine. Lesson learned. No more kissing practice involving Rick, the sci-fi legend. Damn right, Jerry. Now let's all go back to our regularly scheduled interdimensional chaos, shall we? Sounds like a plan, Rick. Just another day in the Smith household.
All right, Morty. Buckle up because we're about to embark on a mind-bending, reality-warping adventure. Jeez, Rick, can't we have just one normal day? Normal, Morty. Normal is boring. We're here to push the boundaries of sanity. Hey guys, what are you up to? Jerry, you couldn't possibly comprehend the intricacies of our latest escapade. Is it something dangerous? Dangerous? Nah. Just the possibility of cosmic annihilation and a dash of interdimensional chaos. Rick, can't you be a little more responsible? Responsible? Beth, you knew what you signed up for when you married me, the mad scientist extraordinaire. Ah, oh, guys, look at that man in a red hoodie. He's playing chess with robots on a computer screen in the background. Whoa, that's like a mashup of The Queen's Gambit, exploring sci-fi web series, and The Martian, Mark Watney. Hey, that's Bowser from the Mushroom Kingdom. Looks like he's branching out into the digital world. Why is he playing chess with robots? Maybe he's trying to prove that even fictional characters can outsmart the advancements of AI. I could beat him in chess. I used to play in high school, you know. Jerry, you couldn't even beat a toddler at tic-tac-toe. So, what's the plan, Rick? Are we going to challenge Bowser to a game? No, Morty, we're going to do something even crazier. We're going to challenge him to an epic dance-off. Rick, that's ridiculous. How is that even relevant? I have my ways, Beth. Just trust me on this. Yeah, Beth, trust Grandpa Rick. He always has a trick up his sleeve. A dance-off? Seriously? Dance is the universal language, Jerry. We'll see who the real king of the Mushroom Kingdom is. But how are we going to do this, Rick? We're not exactly dancers. Morty, you underestimate the power of Rick Sanchez. I've developed dance shoes that enhance our moves a hundredfold. You've got dance shoes but can't fix the broken garage door? Oh, Beth, priorities, priorities. Now let's get ready for the showdown. They start practicing their dance moves, while Bowser notices them and joins in. Bowser, ha, you thought you could outdance me, huh? Bring it on. Morty, it's time to unleash our secret weapon. Our secret weapon? What is it, Rick? Elbows, dance your way to victory, Morty. Use those elbows like you've never used them before. Morty starts spinning, using his elbows as a weapon, while everyone watches in disbelief. This is the weirdest thing we've ever done, and we've done some weird stuff. You know, the elbows do add a certain flair to the dance moves. I must admit, it's strangely captivating and entertaining. Bowser, mesmerized by Morty's elbow dance, eventually surrenders. Bowser, fine, you win this time, but I'll be back with better dance moves. Another successful mission, Morty. Now let's get out of here before Bowser realizes we don't have a spaceship. They all rush back to the spaceship, leaving Bowser bewildered and defeated, as they continue their interdimensional adventures. Morty, have you finished organizing my science equipment yet? Yeah, Rick, I did it. I even managed to untangle all those crazy wires you had, took me forever. Good job, Morty, now go put on that virtual reality headset. We've got a new mission. Virtual reality? Oh, great, I hope it's not another crazy adventure. Oh, Morty, when has it ever been anything less? Fair point, puts on the VR headset. Rick, what is Morty doing with that strange contraption on his head? Oh, just sending him into cyberspace to be a Casanova, seducing alien chicks left and right. What? You're letting our teenage son loose in alien cyberspace? That's irresponsible. Relax, Jerry, it's not real. Just a game. Besides, Morty's never even come close to being a heartthrob in real life. Oh, Dad. I can't believe you're even considering letting Morty try to be a ladies' man. Hey, if Tim Berners-Lee can create the World Wide Web, Morty can surely handle some alien love connections. Whoa, Rick! 
the scenery just changed, and I'm surrounded by, like, hot alien babes. Morty, don't get too carried away in there. Remember, it's just a game. I know, Mom, but it's, it's just so surreal. And there's like this glowing light, and... Morty, focus. We need you to find Zendaya in there. She's the key to rescuing us from this insanity. Oh man, Zendaya? She's in this game too. This is crazy. Keep it together, Morty. We're counting on you. Find Zendaya and bring her back to reality. Alright, I'll try my best. But no promises. Just be careful, Morty. We don't want you falling for an alien hologram or anything. Don't worry, Mom. I'll keep my options open. I'm a virtual playboy now. Size, I can't believe we're relying on Morty to save us. Look, Jerry, he's our best shot. Just have a little faith and maybe we won't be stuck here forever. Hey, guys! I found Zendaya, and she's totally into me. Really, Morty? Just focus on the mission, alright? We need her to get us out of here. I know, I know. But can't blame a guy for enjoying a little alien attention, can ya? Morty, you've got to resist the temptation. We need Zendaya to hack into the game code and get us out of this mess. Fine, fine. I'll do what I have to. Just know that I'm a virtual heartthrob in this universe. Morty, just make sure you bring her back safely, okay? Got it, Mom. Zendaya and I will save the day and be back before you know it. I can't believe Morty is exploring the galaxy and getting more action than I ever will. Life is unfair. Cry me a river, Jerry. Let's just hope Morty doesn't get too caught up in the fantasy. Alright, Zendaya, let's kick some alien butt and get out of here. The group awaits Morty's return from cyberspace, hoping he succeeded in rescuing them from the virtual world. John, man in a suit. Roger, cartoon character in a suit and tie. Dr. Johnson, man in a suit. Niels Bohr, famous physicist. Zombie talk show host. Peaches, animated peach. Professor Hubert J. Farnsworth. Deli owner. Darth Vader. John, frustrated. I can't believe I'm stuck in this ridiculous situation. What the hell am I even doing here? Incident. Roger, oh, come on. It's not that bad. At least you're not talking to a talking peach like me. Progression. Dr. Johnson, gentlemen, we have a problem. Niels Bohr has just arrived, and he's asking about the zombie talk show in the next room. John, Niels Bohr, the physicist, what the hell does he want with a zombie talk show? Dr. Johnson, he claims to have discovered a way to resurrect the dead. He wants to discuss it on air. Roger, cynical, well, this is going to be one hell of a show. Maybe he can bring me to life too. Zombie Talk Show host, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most mind-boggling episode of the Zombie Talk Show. Today, we have the brilliant Niels Bohr, who promises to bring the dead back to life. Peaches, nervously, wait a minute, am I considered dead even though I never really live? Niels Bohr, fear not Peaches, my theory applies to all living organisms, including animated Peaches. This could be your chance to experience existence. Professor Hubert J. Farnsworth. Good news, everyone. I've discovered a way to turn any deli meat into a sentient being. We can now have conversations with ham and roast beef. Deli owner, are you serious? People are gonna think I'm crazy if I start talking to my sandwich. Darth Vader, size. What has the world come to? Resurrecting the dead, talking peaches, and now deli meat with personalities? I need a drink. Don, amused. Well, at least things can't possibly get any weirder. A giant alien spaceship lands in the middle of the talk show studio. Roger, spoke too soon, John. Spoke too damn soon.
Scene. Rick's garage laboratory, filled with bizarre contraptions and strange creatures. Rick and Morty are tinkering with a new invention, while Summer watches in disbelief. Morty, hand me the quantum spanner. We've got a vampire beauty pageant to attend, and I need to impress those bloodsuckers. Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? Last time you messed with vampires, we ended up being chased by a horde of bloodthirsty Draculas. Relax, Morty. This time, I've developed a device that emits a pheromone specifically designed to attract vampires. I call it, O de Sanguine. Seriously, you guys? A vampire beauty pageant? Isn't that like the shallowest thing ever? Shallow? Try telling that to the goth kids and Twilight fans. They're lining up for it, Summer. Yeah, Summer. Plus, I have a crush on this girl at school who's totally into vampires. This is my chance to impress her. Alright, Morty. But remember, it's a thin line between seducing a vampire and becoming a midnight snack. Scene cuts to the vampire beauty pageant. Morty is nervously standing near a stage, dressed in a gothic attire. Summer and Rick watch from the audience. Morty, don't you think you're taking this crush a little too far? I mean, you're pretending to be a vampire from a different dimension. That's some next level commitment. I know, Summer, but love makes us do crazy things. Plus, with Rick's pheromone thingy, I'm bound to win her heart. Rick rolls his eyes and sips on a flask, whispering to himself. Amateur hour, back in my day, I was mistaken for an alien Casanova at vampire orgies. Morty takes his turn on stage and tries to woo the judges with his vampire swagger. Suddenly, a man bursts into the venue, holding a gun. And everybody freeze, I've got a bone to pick with these bloodsuckers. Morty panics, unsure whether the man is part of the show or a genuine threat. The demon in the background starts laughing maniacally. Demon, ha ha. You mortals are always so quick to judge us demons. This time, you've really summoned something you can't handle. Rick, unfazed, steps forward, sipping his flask. Look, pal, we're just here for the vampire beauty pageant. Bring your vendetta elsewhere, or I'll unleash something truly hellish on you. And Back off, old man. I won't let these vampires corrupt humanity any longer. Summer rolls her eyes and pulls out her phone. Enough with the vigilante nonsense. We didn't come here for demon encounters. How about a little distraction? Scene cuts to an anime dubbing contest happening next door. Summer starts playing anime dubbing on her phone, filling the room with loud and exaggerated voice acting. Take that, weeb faces. Now, stay quiet and let us enjoy the show. Rick, Morty, and Summer leave the chaos behind, returning to their normal lives. Well, Morty, that was a close one. Maybe next time, stick to impressing your crush with your guitar skills or something. Yeah, I guess you're right, Rick. Being mistaken for a vampire is a little more dangerous than I thought. Scene ends with Rick burping and Morty sighing, realizing the complications of teenage romance. Morty, Morty, Morty. You ever heard of the let it ride massage technique for migraines? Ah, uh, no. What is it, Rick? Well, Morty, it's a technique where they strap you to a motorcycle on a cloudy day, with a sky backdrop and clouds in the background, and give you a deep tissue massage while riding at high speeds. That sounds dangerous, Rick. Danger is my middle name, Morty. Actually, it's danger fart, but that's beside the point. Trust me, it's worth it for the migraine relief. Overhearing the conversation, migraine relief, you say? I've been suffering from those lately. Oh, Jerry, you sweet summer child. This massage technique is way out of your league. You wouldn't be able to handle it. Well, maybe I want to prove you wrong for once, Rick. Joining the conversation. Dad, seriously? You can't even handle checkers, let alone a high-speed motorcycle massage. Watch me, Summer. I'll show you all. 
Scene transitions to Jerry strapped to a motorcycle, wearing a helmet with a red and blue flag flying behind him. I regret nothing. Let the migraine relief commence. The motorcycle starts, and Jerry is quickly flung into a chaotic, expletive-filled ride. Ordy, did you see that? Poor Jerry's gonna regret this. Like that, I regret nothing, mean. Yeah, Rick, this is gonna end badly. As Jerry rides into the distance, Summer and Morty exchange worried glances. We have to do something, Morty. We can't let Dad get hurt. I know, Summer, but what can we do? Suddenly, a giant portal opens, and an interdimensional doctor in a lab coat steps out. Doctor, I couldn't help but overhear your distress. Fear not, for I am Dr. Dimensionist, and I specialize in rescuing imbeciles from ridiculous situations. Together, Morty, Summer, and Dr. Dimensionist jump into the portal to save Jerry. Meanwhile, Jerry, still speeding on the motorcycle, is caught in a swirling vortex. Wow, what's happening? Rick! Morty! Help! Morty, Summer, and Dr. Dimensionist arrive just in time to save Jerry from certain doom. Dr. Dimensionist, fear not, Jerry. I've come to save you from this statistically improbable scenario. Thank you, Dr. Dimensionist. I can't believe I fell for Rick's crazy ideas again. Hey, don't pin this one on me, Jerry. You were the one itching for that migraine relief. Let's just be glad everyone's safe now. Can we go home, please? Yeah, Summer's right. This whole thing was way too intense for my liking. They all jump back into the portal and land safely at home. Hugging Morty and Summer, I love you guys. Thanks for saving me. All right, all right, enough of the sappy stuff. Let's put this behind us. I've got an idea for a new invention involving parallel universes and cats. Oh geez, Rick, not another one of your crazy experiments. Oh Morty, when will you learn? It's all about the chaos, the craziness. Let's dive in headfirst. Morty, we've got a situation on our hands. Jerry accidentally got sucked into a parallel universe where all the cats have taken over the world, and now he's their ruler. Oh geez, Rick, how the hell did that happen? Well, Morty, I was messing around with the interdimensional remote and accidentally pressed the cat button instead of the waffle button. Classic mix-up, ya yeah, know? Classic mix-up? That doesn't sound right, Rick. And why the hell do you have a button specifically for cats? Look, Morty, sometimes a guy's gotta have options, you know? Anyway, we need to go rescue Jerry before he completely loses his mind and starts speaking in meows. Fine, but can't we just leave him there? I mean, the guy's always been a bit of a tool. Morty, he's your dad. We can't just abandon him, no matter how much a useless sack of potatoes he is. Now grab your portal gun and let's go. Morty and Rick teleport to the cat-ruled universe. You guys, what the actual fuck? Summer, language, and listen, your dad is in a bit of a pickle. He's ruling over this whole universe full of cats, and let me tell you, they're not the friendly, cuddly kind. So you just dragged Morty into this mess to save dad? You realize we could have just called the authorities or something, right? Oh, Summer, you sweet, naive child. There's no fun in that. Plus, who knows what kind of paperwork we'd have to deal with. Guys, look out! There's a giant mutant cat coming this way! Quick, Morty, use that cartoon gun you found earlier. Morty shoots the mutant cat, disintegrating it into a thousand pieces. Not bad, Morty, now let's head to Catropolis and find Jerry. They arrive in Catropolis. Jerry, wearing a crown made of sardines, Rick? Morty? Thank God you're here. These cats are driving me insane with their constant demands for back rubs and laser pointer games. Dad, you look ridiculous. Well, you try ruling a feline empire, Summer. Alright, enough chit-chat. 
We need to figure out a way to get out of here without any more feline interference. Morty, looking at the blue circle with a cartoon character on its face. Hey, Rick, what's with this weird device? Ah, oh, that's a Gatosphere, Morty. It's a highly advanced portal generator that can transport us back home. But it needs a specific energy source. Looks like we're gonna have to find a rare gem called the Lazuli Stone. Great, just great. More fetch quests. Can't we just steal the cat remote from their leader and go back home? You think I haven't tried, Summer? Those cats are smarter than they look. We need the Lazuli Stone. Okay, let's do this. I'm tired of all these cat puns. They embark on a wild adventure, fighting off cat ninjas and solving puzzles. We finally found it, Morty. The Lazuli Stone. Just one more step and we can get out of this crazy cat world. Oh, Rick, why is the ground shaking? The ground splits open, revealing a gigantic, fire-breathing Meowzilla. Seriously, what the fuck? I think we should run, guys. Like, right now. They all start sprinting away from Meowzilla, barely escaping its fiery breath. Morty, activate the Gatosphere and throw the Lazuli Stone into it. Morty follows Rick's instructions and a portal opens. Oh my god, thank you. I didn't sign up for this cat terrible mess. Just get in, Jerry. They all jump into the portal and end up back in their own universe. Phew, that was insane. Can we never talk about this again? Greed, Summer, let's pretend this never happened. I didn't even get a souvenir to show for it. Shut up, Jerry, you're lucky to be alive. Hey Morty, I got this new computer here that can calculate the statistical probability of us finding intelligent life in the universe. Jeez, Rick, why do we need to know that? Because Morty, I'm bored, and I want to spice things up a bit. Plus, we could make a killing if we do find some aliens. Alright, but last time we encountered aliens, things got pretty crazy. That's why we're gonna stay prepared this time, Morty. I've got an intergalactic camera set up to capture all the action. Meanwhile, in the backyard. Beth, have you seen my lucky socks? Jerry, you know you shouldn't be wearing those socks anymore, they're practically disintegrating. Go buy new ones. But these socks bring me good luck. Remember that time I wore them to that Best Buy sale? Jerry, the only reason you got a good deal was that the cashier felt sorry for you. Buy new socks. Back with Rick and Morty. Morty. The computer just detected an anomaly on Mars. Looks like we're going on a little adventure. Oh boy, here we go again. They arrive on Mars and find a small microscope. Morty, this microscope has some weird alien bacteria on it. We have to be careful. Rick, I don't think this is a good idea. Last time we messed with alien bacteria, I turned into a giant amoeba. Relax, Morty. I've got it all under control, probably. Back on Earth. Beth and Jerry are arguing. I can't believe you won't let me wear my lucky socks. You're so controlling. Jerry, those socks are the least of our problems. We have alien bacteria on Mars. Alien bacteria? Are you serious? You've been watching too much sci-fi. Jerry, your stupidity never ceases to amaze me. Back on Mars, Rick and Morty accidentally released the alien bacteria. Morty, look what you did. Now the alien bacteria is spreading everywhere. Oh great, we're gonna die on Mars because of me. Beth and Jerry suddenly appear in their spaceship. Rick, what the hell did you do? Morty, why can't you ever listen to your grandfather? Shut up, Jerry. We need to find a way to fix this mess. They all work together and manage to contain the alien bacteria. Phew, crisis averted. I can't believe we actually survived that. Rick, you better clean up your mess before you get us all killed next time. Oh please, Beth, like I ever pay attention to consequences. See you later losers. As Rick and Morty teleport away, Beth and Jerry are left shaking their heads. 
Sometimes I wonder why we hang out with them. Jerry, you and I must be just as crazy to put up with them. They both share a laugh and head back home. Ordi, you really have to stop with this basketball obsession, it's getting out of hand. Oh come on, Rick! Basketball is life! I'm the next Michael Jordan! Or like the next Air Bud, Morty. Anyway, what's with that weirdo riding a bike next to that mascot on the court? I don't know, but he's got a ball in one hand and a stuffed animal on the ground. It's like a circus on wheels! Well, let's go investigate, Morty. This could be a juicy scientific opportunity we can't miss. Team, Rick and Morty approach the man on the bike. Excuse me, what's the deal with the bike, the ball, and the stuffed animal? And, oh, this is the patented game called Zombie Celebrity Chef. Do you see? Team, the man starts explaining his absurd game. Ah, uh, Rick, this guy is crazier than a Kanye West tweet. No kidding, Morty, but I guess we've seen worse. Remember Fart? Yeah, well at least he didn't involve basketball, ducks, and Sonic Drive-In. Team, the man starts playing his game of Zombie Celebrity Chef on the court. Entering the scene, what in the world is going on here? Mom, it's just some weirdo playing his made-up game. Can we go now? I'm missing my PE class. Fine, let's get out of here. Team, the family starts walking away. You know, Morty. Sometimes life hands you a man on a bike playing zombie celebrity chef. You just gotta roll with it. Yeah, but it's not every day you see a guy lose a game against ducks, Rick. True, but at least they didn't bring back that zombie sonic drive in we encountered in Dimension C-137. Team, the family chuckles and continues walking. I guess the moral of the story is, if life gives you zombies, basketball, and a man on a bike, just laugh it off and grab some McDonald's. Rick, that's terrible advice. I know, I'm a terrible person. Team, the family shares a good laugh and walks away, leaving the man on the bike to his crazy game. Alright Morty, buckle up for another adventure. We're going to a dimension where a man in a costume holding a knife is stirring up trouble next to a pile of vegetables. W what? That sounds dangerous, Rick. Oh please, Morty, it's probably just some weird avant-garde chef hosting a cooking show. We'll be in and out in no time. Scene transition. Screaming. Rick, Morty, there's a guy in a costume with a knife. He's gonna kill us all. Oh. Relax, Jerry. That's just Cloud Stripe cosplaying as a psycho chef. He must have overdosed on Mako. Whoa, Cloud Strife. The legendary hero? Ah, just some guy who can't get over his spiky hair phase. Anyway, Morty, grab that asparagus and distract him while I make a sharp exit. Meanwhile, in the background, the man in the costume starts an impromptu alien dance competition. Ah, Rick, there's something weird happening here. The man in the costume is now dancing and everyone is imitating him. Laughs. Looks like Cloud's got some killer moves in that giant sword-wielding costume of his. Scene transition. Alright, Morty, we need to win this dance-off or risk being stuck in this dimension forever. Quick, show me your best moves. I can barely dance, Rick. I don't have killer moves like Cloud, or you. Nonsense, Morty. Confidence is key. Follow my lead. They join the alien dance competition, pulling off wild and absurd dance moves. Scene transition. Morty, we did it. We won the dance off and saved ourselves from eternal vegetable induced chaos. Can you feel the power of our dance, Morty? Yeah, Rick. I never thought I'd say this, but dance has evolved beyond our understanding. Rick and Morty glow with an alien dance energy as they're transported back to their own dimension. Scene transition. What the hell just happened? Long story short, 
Jerry, dancing saved our sorry asses. Now, let's never speak of this again. Agreed. Scene transition. Rick and Morty once again find themselves in an improbable and bizarre scenario. This time involving a man in a costume with a vegetable obsession and an alien dance competition. Through their unconventional dance skills, they manage to save themselves and return to their dimension. Jerry, as always, remains clueless but grateful to be alive. And thus, another mind-bending adventure ends for the Smith family. Alright, Morty, buckle up. We've got a group of anime characters standing around a plane in the air with their arms out and hands out in front of them. We're going in. Wait, Rick, are you saying we're gonna crash into them? Ah, uh, Morty, relax. We're just gonna pass through them, but in a statistically improbable manner. It's gonna be epic. Whining asterisk is this safe? I mean, can't we just go on a normal adventure for once? Jerry, we're in Rick and Morty's world. Normal is not our strong suit. Just hold on and enjoy the ride. Incident. The plane zooms through the group of anime characters, causing all of them to lose their clothes midair. Look at that, Morty. Their clothes disappeared. Now that's what I call a naked reality. Oh, jeez, Rick. This is embarrassing for them. What are we gonna do? Relax, Morty. We'll just use my latest invention, the Plumbus Pooters, to instantly clothe them with fashionable anime outfits. Progression. Rick and Morty go around distributing plumbus pooters to the naked anime characters, making sure they are all appropriately dressed. Rick, how did you even come up with pooters? And why are they called that? Well, Beth, late one night, I had a few too many interdimensional beers in. Ah, let's just say, plumbus pooters sounded funnier than plumbus clothiers. Rolls eyes typical Rick, always taking something normal and making it weird. The group of anime characters, now fully clothed, thank Rick and Morty for their help. Anime character 1. Thank you, Rick and Morty. We were stuck in an awkward naked reality. You guys are the best. Anime character 2. Yeah, thanks for saving us from the embarrassment. We owe you big time. Rick and Morty, satisfied with their good deed, fly off in their spaceship, leaving the anime characters to continue whatever crazy adventure they were on. Another day, Morty. Another adventure avoided, or caused, depending on your perspective. I don't even know anymore, Rick. This was too much for my brain to handle. Well, Morty, maybe you should consider switching to animation. At least there, the laws of physics aren't taken so seriously. Size, can we please just have one adventure that doesn't involve nudity or weird inventions, Rick? Sorry, Jerry, not in this reality or any other. Life's too short for normal. I have to agree with Rick on this one, Jerry. Life's more interesting when it's weird and unexpected. Well, maybe I just need to accept that I'm the only normal one in this family. Ah, uh, Jerry, you're not normal. You're just boring. There's a difference. Defeated thanks, Rick. Thanks a lot. No problem, Jerry. Anytime you need a reality check, just let me know. Henry Cavill, staring at the giant alien. What the fuck is going on here? Why am I standing next to a fucking giant alien? Alien. Smirking, relax, Henry, I'm just here to help. Hold still. Henry Cavill, help? By shining a fucking light in my face? Are you kidding me? Alien. Trust me, it'll make the ultimate difference in your life. Henry Cavill, sarcastically, oh, really? And what's next? Are you going to probe me too? Alien. Laughs, maybe later, my friend. But right now, we're going to make you impervious to all diseases and ailments. Henry Cavill, confused. 
How the fuck are you going to do that with a stupid light? Alien. This is no ordinary light, Henry. It's a cosmic energy beam that will transmute your very cells, enhancing your body to the absolute peak of human potential. Henry Cavill, hesitant. All right, just do it. But if I die or turn into a fucking alien, I'm haunting your extraterrestrial ass. Alien. Grinning, fair enough. As the alien activates the light, a demonic figure appears in the background. Demon. Hissing. Ah, Henry Cavill, you thought you could escape our contract? No one evades the clutches of hell. Henry Cavill, panicking. What the fuck? Get away from me, you goddamn monster. Alien. Calmly, fear not, Henry. I've got your back. As the demon lunges towards Henry, the giant alien swiftly intervenes, engaging in a fierce battle. Henry Cavill, holy shit. This is fucking insane. How did my romantic escapades with an alien queen lead to this? Alien. Ah, the tangled web of love. It always brings unexpected consequences. Beth's alternate family turned out to be quite the diabolical force. Henry Cavill, Beth? Are you fucking kidding me? She never mentioned the goddamn alternate family. Alien. Grinning, well, she wanted to keep it a surprise. But I suspect this might be more than you bargained for. Henry Cavill, no shit, Sherlock. Can you just finish whatever the fuck you were doing and get me out of here? Alien. Defeating the demon, it's done, Henry. You are now indestructible, even a god among men. Henry Cavill, relieved. Finally, a silver lining in this clusterfuck. I'm never dating another alien queen again. Alien. Chuckling, wise choice. Now, let's go save the universe, shall we? They both prepare to leave, leaving behind the defeated demon. Henry Cavill, smirking. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's fucking do it. They vanish into the unknown, leaving behind a world forever changed. Morty, you little piece of s asterisk asterisk t. Get your a asterisk asterisk over here. Jeez, Rick, what's your problem now? My problem is that you screwed up. You accidentally opened a portal to a dimension where everyone has giant pink p asterisk 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 s heads. Whoa, what? How was I supposed to know that would happen? Uh, you're so dumb, Morty. It's basic interdimensional physics. I can't believe I have to explain this st to you. Rick, can you please stop yelling at Morty? We're trying to have a family dinner here. Yeah, and maybe tone down the language a bit? We have a five-year-old in the house. Oh, shut up, Jerry. You're just upset because your useless a asterisk asterisk can't even open a pickle jar. Hey, I opened one yesterday. Yeah, with a f asterisk 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 ing hammer. Guys, let's just try and get through dinner, okay? I've had a rough day. Fine, let's all just calm down. Now, Morty, pass the gravy. Oh, sure thing, Mom. Suddenly, a blinding light appears in the living room, revealing Yoda holding a green lightsaber. Yoda. Morty, the chosen one, you are. To save the galaxy, you must. What the FK? Yoda, how did you get here? Yoda. Traveled through dimensions, I did. To seek your help, young Morty. Oh great. Now we have a midget Jedi in our living room. This day just keeps getting better and better. Yoda, why do you need my help? Yoda, a Sith Lord has taken control. The universe needs your guidance, Morty. All right, Morty, looks like you're going on another adventure. Strap in, we're going to light speed. They step into the spaceship as Led Zeppelin's immigrant song blasts in the background. Marcus Phoenix, what you think you're doing, Rick? Leaving without me again? Oh, Marcus Phoenix, my secret lover from another dimension. You always know how to make an entrance. Marcus Phoenix. That's right, Rick. I'll fight alongside Morty on this one. Rick, what is going on between you and Marcus Phoenix? Oh, Beth, don't act all innocent. Our love affair spans across countless dimensions. 
Wait, what? You've been cheating on me with a video game character? It's not cheating if it's interdimensional, Jerry. Get with the times. Guys, can we please focus on saving the galaxy here? Yoda. Wise words, young Morty. Together, we shall defeat the darkness that threatens us all. They soar through space, engaging in epic battles, while Rick and Marcus Phoenix exchange steamy glances. Oh Marcus, your ripped muscles and chainsaw gun really turned me on. Marcus Phoenix. I know, Rick. Just focus on piloting, and we can continue our affair once we're done saving the universe. As the adventure progresses, they confront the Sith Lord and engage in an intense lightsaber battle. This is insane! I never thought I'd be fighting alongside Yoda, Marcus Phoenix, and my interdimensional lover, Rick. Life is full of surprises, Morty. Now let's kick this Sith Lord's A asterisk. After a long and epic battle, they finally defeat the Sith Lord and save the galaxy. Yoda. Morty, you have proven yourself. The Force is strong within you. Yeah, yeah, great job, Morty. Now let's get the hell out of here before we attract any more attention. I can't believe I just saved the galaxy with a midget Jedi and my dysfunctional family. I think we make a great team, sweetheart. Maybe we should go on more adventures together. Oh, Jerry, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, it was certainly an eventful evening. I can't wait to tell our therapist about this. Yeah, Dr. Wong's gonna have a field day with this one. They all laugh as they head back to Earth leaving behind a galaxy full of adventure and scandalous love affairs. Int. Bar. Night. The dimly lit bar buzzes with laughter and clinking glasses. Lucy, a woman with fiery red hair and a white shirt, holds a bottle of beer in her hand, her eyes scanning the room. She spots her target, John, a charismatic marketing manager, across the room. Lucy, leaning against the bar, yo, John, looking slick in that suit, ha. Huh? John, smirking, you know it, Lucy. Gotta impress those clients, right? Lucy. Laughs, yeah, but I hear you've got another talent too. Something about, wagging tongues. John, winking, oh, you've heard about that, have you? It's my secret weapon. Lucy, teasingly, so, what exactly can you do with those talented wagging tongues, Mr. Smooth Talker? John, leaning closer, let's just say I've got away with words, Lucy. With one single whisper, I can make anyone's knees weak. Lucy, playfully, is that so? Prove it. John, feeling slightly tipsy, takes a deep breath and approaches a group of attractive men and women near the dance floor. He confidently sidles up to a tall blonde guy, Chris, who seems to be holding court. John, smoothly, hey there, Chris. Heard you've got a thing for Greek mythology. Wanna hear a juicy story about Zeus and Aphrodite? Chris, intrigued, hell yeah, thank me with it. John spins a tail, making up a steamy encounter between the gods. The group leans in, hanging onto his every word. Lucy watches from a distance, impressed. Lucy, to herself, damn, he's really got them hooked. As the night progresses, John's tales become bolder and more scandalous, captivating everyone around him. People laugh, blush, and occasionally gasp at his narratives. Lucy can't help but feel a mix of envy and curiosity. Lucy, slyly, so, where do you get all these crazy stories, John? Are they all made up? John, grinning, some are, some aren't, Lucy. But hey, what happens in Vegas, right? Lucy, raising an eyebrow, Vegas. That's where all these stories come from. John, leaning in, let's just say I've had my fair share of wild nights there. But don't worry, I'm saving the best story for you. Lucy, blushing, oh, really, I can't wait to hear it then. John's reputation as the ultimate storyteller spreads like wildfire through the bar. People flock to hear his outlandish tales, eagerly waiting for their turn to be enthralled. In the end, Lucy and John find themselves alone at the bar, the green neon lights casting an ethereal glow on their faces. Lucy, nervously, so, are you going to tell me that story now? 
Don, smiling, I could, but how about we make our own story instead? Luce's heart races as their lips meet in a passionate kiss, the bar fading into the background. And as the night grows darker, their own scandalous tale begins. Alright Morty, buckle up. We've got a jam-packed adventure ahead of us. Jeez, Rick, what are we getting ourselves into this time? We're gonna be dealing with a man in a red cape, Morty. A real high flyer, if you catch my drift. You mean like some kind of Superman knockoff? Not just any knockoff, Morty. This guy has two women in black and red outfits, with red capes on too. They call themselves an extraterrestrial superhero trio. Seriously, Rick? That seems statistically improbable. Yeah, Morty, welcome to the wonderful world of cosmic coincidences. It's about to get weird. Hey, Rick, do you think these superheroes will be able to help me fix my self-esteem issues? Oh, for crying out loud, Jerry. They won't even bother looking twice at you. Hey, don't be mean, Rick. Jerry's self-esteem matters too. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's go, Morty. We've got bigger fish to fry. Dane change. Rick and Morty encounter Magneto at the mall. Magneto, well, 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 if it isn't the dynamic duo. Care to test your strength against the master of magnetism? Oh great, another one of these hokey villains. Morty, get ready to witness the power of my genius. Rick, I'm not so sure about this. He seems pretty intense. Intense? Morty, I've seen more intense drama on Vampire Pizza Delivery Night. Dane change, Rick and Morty inside a vampire-themed pizza restaurant. Seriously, Rick? A pizza place filled with vampires? Morty, it's all about the experience. Plus, the garlic knots are out of this world. Dane change, Rick and Morty teleport to Beijing. Morty, this is it. Beijing, the ultimate lobster roll paradise. Rick, are we seriously here just for some lobster rolls? Morty, when you've traveled through multiple dimensions and encountered giant spiders, Eating a lobster roll becomes a religious experience. Dane change, Rick and Morty return home. So, did you have fun on your adventures, boys? Fun, Beth. We dealt with a cape-wielding posse, encountered Magneto, dropped by a vampire pizza place, and indulged in culinary delights in Beijing. It was a whirlwind. Did you at least fix my self-esteem, Rick? Jerry, if you can't even deal with vampire pizza, there's no fixing your self-esteem. Forget about it. I gotta say, Rick, it was pretty crazy out there. But hey, at least we got some good stories out of it. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, let's get ready for another nonsensical adventure. Who knows what awaits us next? Sitting in a dimly lit bar. Another goddamn galaxy. Another ridiculous woman to screw up my life. Bucky, what's got you down this time, Rick? Lumley, astro affection aggravation, my friend. I thought I was done with that shit. Bucky, pouring a drink, tell me about it. Well, back in the day, I was doing a little galaxy hopping, right? Picked up this alien babe, had a wild night, or six. Turns out she was a freaking queen. Bucky, chuckles, a queen, huh? Sounds tricky. You have no idea, after a mind-blowing week of passion, she wanted to make it official. I said no, of course. A queen? I can barely handle my own fucked up life, let alone some interstellar monarchy. Aki, so what happened? She did what any scorned queen would do. Broke out her robot army, ready to take my ass down. I barely escaped with my life, but that wasn't the end. Aki, how so? That crazy bitch cursed me said that if I ever set foot on her planet again, she'd make sure my little soldier wouldn't work ever again. Aki, damn, Rick, that's harsh. Yeah, well, turns out I gotta go back there, got some business to sort out, and I can't let that curse hold me back. 
Baki, raises an eyebrow. What's so important that you're willing to risk your manhood? The last piece of the astro affection aggravation puzzle. A rare crystal that can cure her curse and give me back my reputation. Baki, and why the hell do you want your reputation intact? Smirks. Because, my friend, there's a whole galaxy of fine ass alien ladies out there, and I'm not letting one vengeful queen ruin my chances. Baki, laughs, well, good luck, Rick. Get that crystal and make sure to bring back some wild stories. Finishes his drink. Oh, you can count on it, buddy. This adventure is gonna make all the others look tame. Morty, Morty, I found something mind-bendingly interesting. Look at this poster I found with a picture of the Earth and some random numbers on it. Whoa, Rick, that's crazy. What do the numbers mean? I have no idea, Morty, but I have a feeling it's something big. Let's analyze these numbers using my advanced computer science skills. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure you're qualified to analyze numbers? Last time you tried, you accidentally turned yourself into a pickle. Shut up, Morty, I know what I'm doing. Let's feed these numbers into the computer and see what it spits out. Morty types the numbers into the computer as it starts processing. Computer, analyzing data, please wait. Processing complete. Results, statistically improbable scenario detected. Morty, statistically improbable scenarios are our bread and butter. What have we got? According to this, Earth is going to collide with a giant moon-sized comedy merchandise billboard. But, are you serious, Morty? We can't let that happen. We have to save the Earth. Meanwhile, in outer space, the giant billboard is hurtling towards Earth. Morty, I have a plan. We'll hijack a spaceship and intercept that moon-sized billboard. But where are we gonna find a spaceship, Rick? Leave it to me, Morty. I've got connections. Rick and Morty find themselves in a spaceship, chasing after the billboard. We're getting closer, Rick! What's the plan? We're gonna use Olivia Rodrigo's Deja Vu as our secret weapon. It's so annoying it'll disintegrate that billboard. Morty starts playing Deja Vu on a speaker and the annoying sound waves start affecting the billboard. Billboard! In a booming voice! This music is unbearable! I surrender! Rick and Morty successfully divert the billboard, preventing the collision with Earth. Wow, Rick! We did it! The Earth is safe! Of course we did, Morty. We're unstoppable. Now, let's get back home and pretend this whole thing never happened. Morty starts piloting the spaceship back to Earth. Rick, do you think anyone's gonna believe us? Who cares, Morty? We're not in this for the fame and fortune. We do it for the sheer thrill of the adventure. Yeah, you're right, Rick. It's the crazy, mind-bending experiences that make life interesting. That's the spirit, Morty. Now let's go grab some McDonald's and forget all about this escapade. Sounds like a plan, Rick. I could use some Szechuan sauce. They fly off into the sunset, their spaceship disappearing into the vastness of the universe. Hey Morty, you ever wondered what would happen if we jumped into a parallel dimension where everything is a goddamn musical? Oh, uh, not really, Rick. I mean, isn't that kind of impossible? Nothing's impossible, Morty. Hold on. Let me just grab my portal gun. The musical dimension is just a portal away. Dad, are you seriously suggesting we go into a dimension where everyone breaks into song randomly? That's just ridiculous. Oh, come on, Beth. You know you want to see it. Plus, I heard there's a dimension where everyone sings about their secret desires and the sun is made of chocolate. Oh my god, let's do it. 
I want to hear people sing about their dirty little secrets. It'll be like a musical gossip session. Fine, fine. But what about Snowy over there? Points at the red-haired man in the photo. Relax, Morty. Snowy is just a red-headed creep from an alternate dimension where Christmas never ends. He's not coming with us. Snowy, suddenly pops out of the photo, did someone say Christmas? I'm here to spread joy and festive cheer. Great, Snowy, just what we needed, a jolly old man with a perpetual Christmas soundtrack. Now let's get this show on the road. Alright, but let's make it quick. I've got a surgery scheduled in the morning. Morty, Rick, Beth, Summer, and Snowy step through the portal. Musical number begins. You see, Morty, I told you this would be. Rick, look out! That man has candy cane lasers! Oh, crap, Beth, get us out of here. They narrowly escape the laser-wielding man. Wow, that was intense. But hey, at least it was catchy. Snowy, don't worry, my friends. The magic of Christmas will keep us safe. Musical number begins again. This is getting out of hand. I just want to go back home and have a normal life. Normal? We're with a magical Christmas man from a different dimension, Mom. Normal went out the window a long time ago. Ordy's right, Beth. Normal is boring. We're the Smith family. Adventures are in our DNA. Musical number morphs into a rock ballad. This is actually kind of fun. Who knew being constantly on the verge of death could be enjoyable? Fun's my middle name, Summer. Well, actually it's Sanchez, but the point is, we're having a great time. Musical number ends with a big show-stopping finish. Thank God that's over. I can't take any more singing. Snowy, but we're just getting started, my friends. There's a dimension where belly buttons come to life and form a jazz band. All right, Snowy, calm down. We had our fill of musical madness for today. Let's go back home. Morty, Rick, Beth, Summer, and Snowy exit the portal. Musical chaos lingers in the background. Well, that was weird, even for us. Yeah, but hey, at least we got some awesome memories out of it. Memories and several therapy sessions, I'm sure. Aw, oh, therapy is for the weak, Beth. We're the Smith family, a bunch of cosmic misfits. And there's nothing wrong with that. They all laugh as they head back into their normal lives, or as close to normal as they can get. Snowy, onward, my merry friends. Let's spread the joy of Christmas to every dimension. They all exchange glances, realizing that Snowy is going to be around for a little longer than they anticipated. End. Scene. A cluttered basement filled with various collectibles. The camera zooms in on a Spider-Man figurine framed photo, with a Spider-Man action figure glued to its face. Incident. Peter, looking at the framed photo, well, this is unusual. Why the hell is there a Spider-Man figure, on the face of a Spider-Man figure? Scene cuts to an elderly man in a lab coat, holding a time travel device. Surgeon, holding up the device, ah, grandson, this is my latest invention. With this time travel device, we can hook up with our favorite fictional characters. Peter, skeptical, seriously, Grandpa, this contraption of yours can transport us to fictional worlds. Surgeon, smirking, absolutely. Watch this, my boy. Presses a button, and a portal opens. Regression. Scene. Central Park in New York City. Peter and his grandpa, now in Spider-Man costumes, crouch over a man tied to a tree. Peter, whispering, who is this Grandpa, and what did he do? Surgeon, whispering, this is Tom, the asshole who tried to steal our time travel device. He'll be tied up here for the authorities to collect. Um, struggling, you fools, you don't know what you've unleashed. Dramatic music plays as Taylor Swift, wielding a sword, suddenly leaps from a tree. Taylor, singing dramatically, ain't nobody messing with my time travel device. Peter, Taylor Swift with a sword, what the actual fuck is happening? Surgeon, I told you, Grandson, with this device, anything is possible. 
Scene cuts to a futuristic cyborg uprising. Surgeon, confidently, this time, Peter, we are going to save humanity. Peter, gulping, I, I didn't sign up for this. Cyborg leader, monotone voice, humans, surrender now, and we shall spare your lives. Resistance is futile. Surgeon, grinning, not today, you mechanical assholes. Brandishes two plasma pistols. Progression. Scene. A fierce battle between humans and cyborgs, explosions and chaos surround them. Peter, frantically, Grandpa, this is insane. We need to get out of here. Surgeon, determined, no, Peter, we fight for freedom. A massive explosion knocks Peter and his grandpa off their feet. They lay on the ground, bruised and beaten. Peter, coughing, is this how it ends, Grandpa, being crushed by cyborgs? Surgeon, weakly, we, did our best, Peter, hold on to that Spider-Man figure, it's where our courage lies. The camera cuts between scenes, showing snippets of the rebellion, Taylor Swift leading the charge, and Peter and his grandpa laying on the ground. Peter, whispering, Grandpa, we went through so much, fought so hard. But in the end, we failed. Surgeon, smiling weakly, we might have lost the battle, but we inspired hope in the hearts of others. That's worth something. Sirens wail in the distance as the camera pans out, leaving their fate unknown. End. Alright Morty, buckle up. We're going on another Rick and Morty adventure. Uh, Rick, can we maybe take a break from the whole save the universe thing? I just want to chill for a bit. Chill, Morty, we don't do chilling. We're the guys who actively avoid relaxation. Take a hint from your mom and dad, though. They've been chilling a lot lately. Huh, what do you mean? Well, as coincidence would have it, they booked themselves a couple's massage at this fancy spa. You know, to spice things up or whatever. Oh, come on, Rick. I don't need to know about my parents' intimate activities. Oh, it gets better. I hacked into the spa's computer system and switched out the masseuse with a clone from another dimension. What? Why would you do that? Relax, Morty. These clones are experts in couple dynamics. They'll analyze your parents' relationship while they're getting rubbed down. Oh, man. This is gonna be so screwed up. Scene transitions to the spa room. Beth, lying on a bed. So, Jerry, think this couple's massage thing was a good idea? Jerry, standing next to the masseuse. Sure, Beth. We can use some relaxation. Besides, it's not like we'll discover anything we didn't already know about our relationship. Masseuse, seductively, I promise, Mr. Smith, after this massage, you'll see your relationship in a whole new light. Summer, entering the room. Oh my god, guys, you won't believe what's happening outside. Summer, this is supposed to be our private time. Can't it wait? Nope, Dad, trust me. It can't wait. There's a portal opened up in the spa lobby, and there are bees flying out of it. Is this your doing, Rick? Rick, over an intercom. No time to explain, Beth. Figure it out yourselves. Scene transitions to the spa lobby. Dad, do something. The bees are everywhere. Don't worry, Morty, I'll handle this. Jerry swats at the bees, accidentally slapping the masseuse in the face. Masseuse, that's it. I've had enough of your relationship dynamics. I quit. Scene transitions back to Rick and Morty in the spaceship. Well, that was a disaster. Thanks, Rick. Hey, don't blame me. Your parents' relationship is a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. I just added a few sparks. You're sick, Rick. You know that? Yeah, and that's why you can't get enough of me, Morty. Oh, I need therapy. Therapy? Screw that. Morty, let's go save another universe. Maybe one without bees this time.
Horty, grab me that wrench. We've got science to do, damn it. Ah, uh, Rick, shouldn't we be, you know, taking care of that weird alien creature we found earlier? Horty, priorities, science is our religion. You can handle the alien, it's just like taking care of a pet rock. Fine, but I better not end up with tentacles growing out of my face again. Scene. Rick and Morty's backyard. They approach a grill with various types of food on it. Hey, guys. Finally, you're joining the barbecue party. I've got some juicy steaks, sausages, and even a tofu alternative for you, Morty. The grill. Our ticket to Flavortown. Summer, you've awakened a primal desire within me. Pass me that red pepper, would ya? Morty hands Rick the red pepper. Rick takes out a laser gun and zaps the pepper, causing it to disintegrate. W what the hell, Rick? That was my lunch. Morty, don't be a baby. I just created an explosion of flavor that will haunt your taste buds forever. You're welcome. Scene. Barbecue joint. Rick and Morty are indulging in a meat feast while Summer chats with friends. Rick, I can't believe how good this tastes. I mean, I always knew you were a genius, but this is a whole new level. Morty, my boy, taste is just the tip of the iceberg. I've transcended the laws of barbecue physics, and now we enter a parallel realm of culinary pleasure. Scene. The barbecue joint becomes a portal to a bizarre dimension filled with sentient fingers and toes. Fingers. We are the fingerlings. We control the seasoning. Toes. And we bring the saucy beats. Oh, great, interdimensional party crashers. Morty, grab a napkin, you don't want insectoid sauce all over your face. Ah, uh, Rick, do you really think it's safe to be eating these, talking fingers and toes? Safe, Morty, safety is for people who wear helmets while eating their cereal. We're expanding our culinary experiences, no matter the cost. Scene. Love on the Spectrum set, Rick and Morty are now chefs competing in a bizarre cooking show. Morty, we're in a reality TV show where we cook with love but our love is the pure unadulterated desire for victory. Rick, I don't think this is appropriate. We're not really chefs, and these cameras are everywhere. Morty, cameras are the least of your concerns. Now, hand me those buns. We're about to make a sandwich that will make Gordon Ramsay's ego explode. Scene. Medical lab. Rick and Morty are disguised as doctors, holding spatulas and an alien probe. All right, Morty, this is the final step in the culinary journey. We've got the DNA of every spice known to man or alien, and it's time to create a flavor explosion that will make God himself blush. Rick, I don't know about this. We're about to go where no spatula has gone before. Ordi, your uncertainty is creating a dramatic tension that will make this episode unforgettable. Now, spread him open. It's time for a pap smear the world will never forget. Scene. Chaos erupts as spices and alien goo mix together. The lab explodes, covering Rick and Morty in a bizarre, flavor-filled mess. Well, Morty, I guess we're now the kings of flavor, but that nuclear explosion might have just set the neighboring galaxy on fire. Whoops. Yeah, Rick, whoops indeed. Can we just go back to regular old boring grilled cheese sandwiches now? Morty, if boring grilled cheese is what your heart desires, then so be it. But remember, we've tasted the universe, and it tasted pretty damn good. Hey Morty, have you ever seen a large furry animal standing on top of a field of grass next to a man sitting on a bench? Oh, no Rick, I can't say I have. Why? Because I just invented the deserted island beast. It's a creature that can survive on any terrain, even on a lush field of grass. Whoa, that's insane. But what's the point of it? The point, Morty, is that I can now create statistically improbable scenarios for unsuspecting individuals. I'm gonna mess with people's heads. Ah, uh, okay, but isn't that kinda mean, Rick? Mean, Morty, since when did we care about being nice? Now, quick, hold this random object. We're gonna teleport ourselves and the deserted island beast to a public park. Meanwhile, at the public park. Sitting on a bench. 
I can't believe Beth is making me go to this stupid couples therapy. Oh. My life is a mess. Walking over, Jerry, I really think this will help us communicate better. Just give it a chance. Rolling her eyes. Whatever, guys. I just want to go home and watch Luke Skywalker save the galaxy for the hundredth time. Jerry notices the large furry animal standing in the field of grass. What the hell is that thing? Peering out of thin air, hi, Jerry. We just wanted to show you our latest scientific breakthrough. Meet that deserted island beast. Stuttering, R. Rick, what are you doing here? And what's with this, beast? Just sit back and enjoy the show, Jerry. Life's about to get a whole lot crazier. Meanwhile, the deserted island beast starts giving a massage for lower back pain to the man on the bench. Man on bench, in disbelief, this, this is amazing. My lower back pain is gone. Who needs a chiropractor when you have a mythical beast? Whispering to Jerry, okay, maybe couples therapy can wait. We need to find out more about this magical creature. Amazed, this is so much better than Luke Skywalker. Whispering to Rick. Ah, uh, Rick, maybe we should have thought this through. We gotta fix this mess now. Relax, Morty, I've got just the thing. Pulls out a device. Rick activates the device, causing the deserted island beast to disappear. In on bench, confused, where did my magical masseuse go? Sorry, folks, experiment's over. But remember, miracles can happen anytime. Burps. Relieved. Well, I guess that's one less thing to worry about. Smiling, let's go home, Jerry. We've had enough excitement for one day. Grinning? Yeah, maybe we can watch Star Wars with a new perspective now. Size, this is just another day in the life of Rick and Morty, huh? You got it, Morty. Now, let's go find some more trouble to get into. Alright Morty, listen up. We've got a situation here. A group of cartoon characters with glowing eyes and ears are standing in a line, against a green background. It's statistically improbable, Morty. Ah, uh, Rick, what's the big deal? They're just cartoon characters, right? Morty, you naive little twerp. Those glowing eyes and ears mean they're demonic mirror reflections. They'll suck you into an alternate universe where everyone talks like Jerry. Oh geez, I can't handle that many Jerry's, Rick. Well, I hope there's a way to reverse this. I have a date tonight and I can't show up in an alternate Jerry universe. Relax, Beth, there's always a way out. We just need to find the source of the reflection. Hey, Rick, wasn't that the mirror where you had your secret fling with that alien from Glibnark? Morty, don't bring up my past mistakes, especially ones that led to intergalactic scandal. We need to focus on the task at hand. Is this about Hatchimals? Because if it is, I told you they were a bad idea. They're just cursed Furby knockoffs. Nobody cares about your Hatchimal conspiracy theories, Jerry. Guys, look! That cartoon character is holding an Umbrella Academy comic book. Maybe it's a clue. Wow, Morty, good observation. I didn't know you read those. Oh, yeah, well, research purposes, you know? Morty, stop lying to yourself. Just embrace your inner nerd. Can we hurry this up? I've got a party to go to and I need to show off my new hoverboard. Hold your horses, Summer. We're dealing with interdimensional shenanigans here. Rick, I see a portal opening up. It's sucking in the glowing-eyed cartoon characters. Quick, Morty, grab the mirror and let's jump in. We need to stop this madness. Rick, you might not care, but my date is waiting. Don't worry, Beth. We'll find a way out. And if not, you'll have plenty of Jerry's to keep you company. Oh great, more Jerry's. Just what the world needs. Can we go already? I don't want to miss my favorite DJ set. Fine, fine, everyone jump in. We're going on an adventure. They all jump into the portal. Rick, I think we're back in our own dimension. But why do I still hear Jerry's? 
Oh no, Rick, you brought back a bunch of alternate universe Jerry's with us. Damn it, Morty, next time, I'll make sure there are no Jerry's around. As our heroes struggle to deal with the unintended consequences of their adventure, they learn a valuable lesson. Never mess with demonic mirror reflections, Hatchimals, or alternate Jerry's. But hey, at least they managed to save Beth's date night. Burps, Morty, 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 guess what happened last night? I had the wildest adventure in the multiverse. Oh, what now? Can't we have a break from all this craziness for once, Rick? Break? Who needs breaks when you can have intergalactic romance in every dimension? Anyway, I met this alien babe, Mouth, from the planet Xerxes 7. Let me tell you, Morty, she had an impressive set of mouth tentacles. Geez, Rick, can we please not get into the details? Fine, Morty, but you have no idea how scandalous things get when you're cruising the galaxy with mouth. Every planet hopping encounter was like a cosmic soap opera. Rick, I'm sick and tired of your romantic escapades becoming the talk of the Galactic Federation. It's embarrassing. Oh, lighten up, Beth. It's not like I'm stealing any space royalty or anything. Besides, mouth and I have an understanding. We're just having some fun. Fun? You call recklessly flying around the cosmos, leaving a trail of broken hearts and cosmic chaos in your wake, fun? Look, Jerry, I'm sorry if my adventures overshadow your mundane existence. Mundane? You think my life is mundane? I'll have you know that I've discovered a new type of mouthwash that can make any high-pitched whiner irresistible to the opposite sex. Aphs. That's cute, Jerry. You're like the Dr. Frankenstein of mouth hygiene. Hey, guys, check this out. I just picked up this new anime tech invention that enhances your brainwaves and allows you to learn any language instantly. Morty, don't play with strange alien devices. You know what happened last time. D, don't worry, Mom, it's perfectly safe. And look, it even has a trans-dimensional gossip setting. Let me try it out. Gossip? Now that's my kind of setting. Let's hear what the universe has been whispering about. Okay, here we go. It says, Rick's obsession with orbiting exotic dancers causes intergalactic outrage. Laughs. Oh, that's rich. They clearly don't understand my refined taste in art. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with the Galactic Federation on this one. Rick, your outrageous behavior is putting us all at risk. And speaking of risks, Rick, could you possibly tone it down on the interdimensional dating while I'm pregnant? It's causing quite the UFO uterine uproar. Ah, oh, Beth, you know I'm always looking out for you and the little alien growing inside you. Wait, did you just call my sister's baby an alien? Figures you'd catch on to that, Morty. Look, the multiverse is a chaotic place, and love knows no boundaries. But I promise to keep the crazy at bay, for now. I'll believe it when I see it, Rick. But just remember, the universe has a way of bringing consequences to even the most audacious adventurers. Thanks, Jerry. I'll keep that in mind while I chart a course for my next interstellar romance. Adventure awaits, Morty. Morty, we've got a problem. A big one. Oh geez, what is it this time, Rick? Remember that group of yellow objects arranged in a pattern on a black surface with a black background and a black background? What about them, Rick? Well, turns out they were portals to different dimensions, Morty. And now, Mr. Poopy Butthole is stuck in one of them. Mr. Poopy Butthole? Seriously, Rick? Hey, don't judge, Morty. He's a valued member of the family. Whatever you say, Rick. So, what's the plan? We're going on an interdimensional game show, Morty. 
An interdimensional game show? Are you kidding me? Trust me, Morty, it's the only way we can find Mr. Poopy Butthole. Fine, let's do this. But I swear, if anything goes wrong... Relax, Morty, I've got this under control. They enter the interdimensional game show. Host, welcome, Rick and Morty. Are you ready to play Boo Boo's Big Adventure? You bet your fancy hat we are, host. Don't mind him, he's just excited to win. Host, all right, let's get started. First challenge, navigate through the dimension of giant spaghetti monsters. Spaghetti monsters, Morty, looks like today's dish is going to be saucy. Really, Rick? Can't you take this seriously for once? They face various challenges, dodging bizarre creatures and solving puzzles. Rick, we've made it to the final challenge. It's a race against time. Morty, time is just an illusion, like your teenage angst. But fine, let's win this thing. They race through a mind-bending maze. Host, congratulations, Rick and Morty. You won Boo Boo's Big Adventure. Ah, who needs luck when you have intelligence and a portal gun, right, Morty? Yeah, sure, Rick. Can we please just find Mr. Poopy Butthole now? Host, as the winners, you get to claim your prize, Rick and Morty. Choose any dimension you want. All right, any dimension. I choose the one where Mr. Poopy Butthole is trapped. They use the prize to rescue Mr. Poopy Butthole. Mr. Poopy Butthole, ooh wee, thanks for rescuing me, Rick and Morty. No problem, Mr. Poopy Butthole. Just remember to be more careful next time. Yeah, and don't wander off into random dimensions. We've got enough chaos as it is. They all laugh. Now let's go home and have some interdimensional pizza. I'm starving. Yeah, that sounds good. Just another typical day with the Smith family. They all walk off into the portal together, ready for their next adventure. Morty, guess what? I've just discovered a new dimension where everyone communicates telepathically. Oh, great, Rick. Another dimension, another problem. What's the catch this time? No catch, Morty. I've created a device that allows us to tap into their telepathic network. We can hear everyone's thoughts. Aw, oh, geez, Rick. I don't know about this. It sounds, ah, uh, invasive. Invasive, Morty. We're talking mind reading here. The possibilities are endless. Plus, we could use it to start a telepathic Tinder, where people can read each other's thoughts on potential matches. Ah, oh, sounds like a recipe for disaster. But knowing you, Rick, we're doing it anyway, huh? You got it, Morty. Now let's get our telepathic Tinder up and running. I've got some potential profiles to share. Oh, my god. Are you guys seriously going to read people's minds to set them up on dates? That's messed up, even for you. Rick. Oh, Summer, lighten up. It's just a little twisted fun. Plus, you could use this app to find your soulmate. Yeah, right. I'll pass. I'm not about to snoop around in people's heads just to find a date. Hey, guys, what's all the commotion about? Mind if I join in? Oh, Jerry, perfect timing. We're just about to launch our telepathic Tinder. Want us to find you a match? Actually, I was thinking of spicing up my love life. Any chance this mind reading thing could help me out? Absolutely, Jerry. Brace yourself for some deep and embarrassing thoughts from potential partners. Now, let's get swiping. All right, Rick, we've matched our first couple. Their thoughts are, uh, interesting, to say the least. Oh, Morty, no shame in their game. Let's see how this unfolds. Jerry, you ready for your date? Yeah, I'm nervous, but I'm ready. I've got nothing to lose, right? Scene changes to a restaurant. Woman, so, Jerry, I've got to be honest. The minute I saw your profile, I thought you were a total loser. Oh, wow. That's not what I was expecting. Mind reading already paying off, I guess. Thanks for the honesty. Woman, yeah, well, I figured I'd give you a chance, despite my initial thoughts. I mean, you seem nice enough. 
Great, thanks for the pity date. So, what do you really think about me? Woman, honestly, I prefer your mind reading guy, Rick. He's the kind of confident, smart ass I'm into. Jerry sinks into his chair, defeated. Well, Jerry, looks like mind reading isn't your superpower. But hey, at least now you know what they're really thinking, right? Yeah, Rick, I guess. Thanks for ruining my love life once again. Jeez, Rick, maybe we should stick to saving the universe instead of meddling with people's personal lives. Oh, Morty, where's the fun in that? Let's find another dimension to mess with, preferably one without mind reading. Morty, grab the portal gun. We've got an emergency situation. Oh geez, Rick, what now? Well, Morty, it seems that this robot with a camera and speakers in front of a city skyline with skyscrapers in the background is malfunctioning. It's broadcasting everyone's dirty secrets to the world. Dirty secrets? Oh no! What if that robot caught me singing in the shower? Jerry, nobody wants to hear your off-key melodies, but we have bigger problems. Summer has been having a scandalous affair with an alien model. What? Summer's been cheating on Ethan? That's crazy! Tell me about it. This alien model is from a species that can stretch its limbs to impossible lengths. I mean, talk about flexibility. Dad, you promised to keep it a secret. Well, Summer, secrets tend to have a way of coming out when there's a malfunctioning robot involved. Oh, oh, guys, the portal gun is acting up! Great. Just what we need right now. Morty, find a way to fix it. While you guys deal with that, I think I'll take this opportunity to get a physical therapist to sort out my bad back. Jerry, this is not the time to focus on your back problems. Well, it's not like I can do anything about aliens and malfunctioning robots. Meanwhile. Morty, are you sure you fixed the portal gun? Because it just took us to the ruler of an alien empire. I don't know, Rick. The thing's acting all wonky! Alien ruler, Rick Sanchez, I heard you've been having a scandalous liaison with my ex. Oh, come on, not this again. Dad, exes? Seriously? Alien ruler, prepare to face the wrath of my intergalactic lawyers. Morty, we need to get out of here before things get even messier. I'm trying, Rick! Back on Earth. Dad, why did you have to mess around with an alien ruler? Hey. Don't blame me. Blame the malfunctioning robot. So, um, is anyone going to address the fact that I just broke up with my physical therapist? Jerry, your love life is the least of our concerns right now. We need to find a way to stop that robot. Guys, I might have a plan. If we hack into the robot system and reverse its broadcasting function, we can contain the scandal. Well, Morty, looks like you might be onto something for once. Let's do it, Morty. I don't want my dirty laundry all over the universe. After some intense hacking. Alright, guys, I think I did it. The robot is back under control. Thank goodness. Now the world doesn't have to know about my secret obsession with knitting. Knitting, Jerry, really? It's therapeutic, okay. Well, crisis averted, for now. Let's hope this robot doesn't glitch again anytime soon. Yeah, I don't think we can handle another round of scandalous revelations. Trust me, Morty, the universe will always find a way to throw some eccentric exes and scandalous liaisons our way. It's what keeps life interesting. Hey Morty, 
check out that robot standing in the middle of the street with a sign that says, Powie, behind it. Ah, uh, Rick, why is there a man in a spacesuit standing behind the robot? Oh Morty, that's no ordinary man. That's Jerry's alien stalker. He's been following him around for weeks now. Probably looking for some intergalactic gossip or something. Seriously, guys? Can't we just enjoy some normal, peaceful time without stumbling upon oddball situations? Peaceful? In this universe? Ha! Ah, you should know better, Summer. Now, let's investigate this peculiar scene. Whoa, look at this strange rock formation over here. It's like some crazy geology experiment gone wrong. Geology? Morty? Don't you mean an interstellar civil war between alien factions using rocks as weapons or something? Jerry's alien stalker, whispering, did you hear that? They're onto us. Oh great, now the stalker can understand us. Well, guess it's time to take this episode up a notch. Robot, announce your presidential campaign for world domination. Robot, citizens of Earth, bow before your new overlord, Roboticus Prime. The age of humans is over. Seriously, a robot presidential campaign? This is getting out of hand. And I thought our world was already messed up. Jerry's alien stalker, Wait, so there's a robot president now? Maybe he can order me a restraining order against Jerry. Oh please, robot presidents are so last millennium. Now there's a new trend, Morty. Intergalactic costume dance-offs. Are you kidding me, Rick? A dance-off? How is that even remotely relevant? Oh, Summer, it's the hottest thing in the universe right now. Trust me, you'll love it. Alright, I guess it can't get crazier than this. Let the costume dance-off begin! Scene transitions to a wild, intergalactic dance party with aliens, robots, and humans in extravagant costumes. This is insane. I never thought I'd see a cosmic disco ball spinning above a crowd of aliens doing the robot dance. And look, that robot over there is doing the moonwalk! How ironic! Jerry's alien stalker. I must admit, this costume dance-off is better than stalking Jerry. Can I join? Sure thing, buddy, just remember to keep a safe orbit around Jerry. We don't want any more complaints from him. Scene progresses with epic dance battles, it becomes more intense and competitive. Wait, are they doing a synchronized dance routine on roller skates? This is absolute madness. I know, right? I thought dance-offs were supposed to be fun, not an extreme sport. Look, that alien just did a triple backflip! Jerry's alien stalker accidentally bumps into Roboticus Prime, causing a chain reaction of missteps which ends in a chaotic dance explosion. Oh, talk about a grand finale. That dance-off just went from zero to a hundred real quick. I can't believe we survived that. So, any lessons learned from this bizarre adventure? Well, Summer, we learned that in the infinite multiverse, you should always expect the unexpected, no matter how statistically improbable it may seem and that dance-offs can escalate into something way crazier than anyone could imagine. Jerry's alien stalker, whispering. You guys are insane. I love it. Scene fades out as the characters laugh and embrace the utter madness they experienced during their wild adventure. Morty, grab that plutonic toothbrush from the interdimensional portal, we've got a situation. Jeez, Rick, what's going on now? There's a man outside with a toothbrush in his mouth and a bag in his hand. His face looks strange. Ah, strange face. What does that even mean, Rick? Morty, I don't have time to explain facial abnormalities to you. Just grab your toothbrush and let's go. Eavesdropping, toothbrush, bag? Strange face? Count me out, I've had enough adventures. Stop being such a coward, Jerry. We have to help this guy, whatever the situation is. Seriously, Dad, you can't leave before we even know what's going on. Fine, I'll come along, but no more slimy tongues or crazy monsters, Rick. It's traumatizing. Rolling eyes. Oh, boo-hoo, Jerry. 
Now let's hurry. The Smith family rushes outside to find the man with the toothbrush. Whoa, Rick, that guy's face. It looks like a mix between a goat and a pineapple. How is that even possible? Ordi, there are infinite dimensions out there, each with their own set of weird ass genetic combinations. Don't think too hard about it. And muffled speech through the toothbrush. Help me, toothbrush, stuck. Let's try to calm him down, Jerry. It looks like his situation is getting critical. Stammering, uh, okay. Hey buddy, what's your name? And muffled, Barry. Barry, we'll get that toothbrush out, just stay calm. Rick takes out a contraption from his lab and starts working on removing the toothbrush. This should do the trick. Morty, prepare for phase beta extraction. Phase beta extraction? What does that entail, Rick? Just trust me, Morty. Hold his bag steady. We don't want any collateral damage. Morty positions the bag while Rick inserts the contraption into Barry's mouth. Barry, gargling. Rick, your tongue is all slimy. I don't want to do that again. Quit your whining, Barry. I'm saving your life here. After a few tense minutes, Rick successfully removes the toothbrush from Barry's mouth. Barry, sighs in relief. Thank you, guys. I thought I was a goner. No problem, Barry. Just remember to brush responsibly next time. Yeah, and maybe avoid interdimensional toothbrushes altogether. Well, that was another absurd adventure. Can we go home now? Fine, let's go back. But don't expect this level of interdimensional dental care every day. The Smith family walks back towards the house, leaving Barry behind with his newfound freedom. Rick, do you ever wonder if we'll run out of these bizarre situations? Morty, as long as there are infinite dimensions and my genius mind, we'll never run out of mind-bending adventures. Just accept it and enjoy the ride. They all enter the house, ready for their next improbable adventure. Alright, Morty, buckle up for another scientifically improbable adventure. We're going on a wild ride today. Oh geez, Rick, I hope it's not as crazy as last time. That mermaid incident was traumatizing. Relax, Morty, what could go wrong this time? Now, pay attention as I explain this genius invention of mine. Say hello to the Skull O Modich 3000. Whoa, Rick, is that a machine with a skull on it? And why is it glowing green with stars? Oh, great observation, Einstein. The green background with stars symbolizes the infinite possibilities and death-defying adventures this machine enables. Jerry, eavesdropping, so, I couldn't help but overhear. Are you saying this thing can bring people back from the dead? No, Jerry, stop trying to sound smart. It's a titanium skull polisher. You've got a real dull cranium there, pal. Ah! Can we stop with the skull talk? I need to focus on my computer science assignment. It's like, totally important. Computer science? That's cute. Now, listen up, everyone. The Skull O Modic 3000 can also repair hernias. Impressive, right? Wait, hold on, Rick. My alien girlfriend just got a hernia. Are you telling me this machine can fix her? Well, ain't that convenient, Morty? Let's go grab her and give it a whirl. Just hope your relationship doesn't get a hernia after this. Morty's alien girlfriend enters the room. Alien girlfriend. Hey, Morty, I heard you have a new invention. Can it really fix my hernia? Oh, sweetie, the things I'm gonna do to that hernia will make your head spin. Strap in, it's gonna get intense. Meanwhile, at the hernia repair session. Hand me the titanium hernia repair device, Morty. Let's get this show on the road. Are you sure about this, Rick? It looks sketchy as hell, and I don't want my girlfriend getting hurt. Trust me, Morty, I've repaired hernias on countless alien species. What could possibly go wrong? A sudden explosion occurs. Oh, great. You blew up your own machine, genius. How are we going to fix this disaster? Fine, Jerry, I'll fix it. 
Just give me the duct tape and a paperclip. I can turn anything into a working hernia repair device. Several hours later. Rick, you did it. The hernia is repaired and my girlfriend is good as new. Alien girlfriend, Morty, you're the best. I'm so lucky to have you. Yeah, yeah, mushy stuff. Can we go on an interdimensional pub crawl now? I need a drink after dealing with these hernias. Count me in. I need a break from all this philosophy nonsense. Let's get weird. Meanwhile, chaos ensues as they stumble through countless dimensions, causing mayhem and making questionable life choices. Another day, another mess created. Life is good, Morty. It may be messed up, but it's our messed up life, Rick. They all laugh as they continue their wild adventures, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Conclusion, Finn. Morty, we've got a stack of books sitting on top of a table next to a clock on a wall behind them. You know what that means. Ah, oh, time to read, Rick. No, Morty, it means that clock is clearly a gateway to another dimension. Seriously, Rick? That clock? It just looks like a regular clock to me. Morty, never judge a clock by its hands. We're going through that clock and we're gonna have some crazy adventures. Oh, hey guys, what's going on? I heard something about a clock? Oh, it's just your dad and Morty being their usual insane selves, Jerry. Nothing to worry about. Beth, this is big. We're about to enter a dimension ruled by sentient funny books and carnivorous parsnips. Wait, funny books? Like, the books tell jokes or something? Not just jokes, Morty. These books are so funny that they literally make you laugh yourself to death. Laugh yourself to death? That can't be real, can it? Oh, it's real, Jerry. And it's hilarious. Now, let's grab those funny books and harvest some parsnips for our own amusement. Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? Good idea, Beth. We're talking about a dimension where parsnips have a stand-up comedy routine. This is the best idea I've ever had. Oh, I can't believe I'm going along with this. Let's just get it over with. Rick, Morty, Jerry, and Beth step through the clock and find themselves in a bizarre dimension. Look, Morty, the funny books are holding a comedy roast battle for the parsnips. That's, that's just so messed up, Rick. I can't believe I'm saying this, but those parsnips are actually pretty funny. Alright, let's grab a few funny books and some parsnips and get the heck out of here. This place is giving me the creeps. As they make their way back through the clock, they are ambushed by an army of tickle monsters. Morty, use the laughter grenades. Oh jeez, Rick! I can't believe I'm throwing exploding rubber chickens at monsters that tickle people! This is too much. I just wanted a quiet evening at home. We're almost there, just a few more steps. They finally make it back through the clock, the tickle monsters disappearing behind them. Phew, that was close. Remind me not to mess with dimension hopping clock scenarios again. Yeah, no kidding, Rick. That was the craziest adventure we've had so far. Can we please go back to normal, everyday life now? Agreed, let's just appreciate the simple joys of non-laughing and non-tickled existence. Fine, fine, but admit it, that was the kind of absurdity you can only find in a stack of funny books and a dimension full of parsnips. Yeah, Rick, definitely an experience we won't soon forget. The family gathers around the dinner table, thankful that their normal lives have been restored. But little do they know, the clock on the wall starts ticking, signaling another adventure on the horizon. Morty, buckle up for another mind-bending adventure. 
Gee, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal? That's for losers, Morty. Now listen, we've got a little girl standing on a trampoline inside a building with a random man walking by, and a woman just standing next to it. Trust me, this is gonna be insane. Ah, uh, Rick, are we gonna help them or just mess with their lives? What are you, Morty, the morality police? Let's just carry on and see what happens. Hey, what are you guys doing? Oh, Rick's got one of his crazy plans again. Wonderful, just what I needed. Can't we have a normal family day? Jerry, you couldn't handle a normal day if it smacked you in the face. Guys, let's focus. The little girl is about to bounce higher than ever before. Wait, isn't that building two stories high? She's gonna get hurt. Relax, Morty, I've installed anti-gravity trampoline technology. It's 100% safe, except for that random man walking by. And a man. Well, what the hell? Help. Rick, we gotta do something. He's floating away. Don't worry, Morty. I've got an air hockey table right here. I'm gonna slap him back down to safety. And a man. Are you insane? This is gonna kill me. Quit your whining. You'll thank me later. Slaps random man back down. And a man. Okay, maybe that was kind of cool. Rick, we still have the woman standing there. Anything for her? Ah, she's got her own demons. Let her be. What? We can't just leave her. Morty, she's been standing there for hours. She's clearly a statue. Are you sure? Maybe she's in deep thought or something. It's a statue, Jerry. You're embarrassing yourself. All right, let's wrap this up. Morty, help me with that little girl. We'll get her down safely. Rick, why do we always get ourselves into these situations? Morty, life's an adventure, and sometimes you just gotta bounce with it. Oh, you're impossible, Rick. Damn right I am. In the end, the little girl is safely brought down from the trampoline. The random man learns to embrace the chaos, and the woman remains forever motionless. The family returns home, slightly traumatized but ultimately closer than ever. And as for Rick and Morty, they're already planning their next improbable adventure through time and space. All right, Morty, buckle up because we're about to take a wild ride down this shish asterisk T storm of a hallway. Ah, uh, Rick, what's with the green lights at the end? Oh, Morty, those are just a bunch of sexually frustrated time traveling psychiatrists waiting to diagnose you. Jeez, Rick, why would they want to diagnose me? Because, Morty, they think your anxiety is the key to solving the unsolved mysteries of the universe. But in reality, it's just a desperate attempt for them to feel important. Ah, uh, Morty, there's always something wrong with you. You're like a magnet for therapy. Summer, don't go acting all high and mighty just because you haven't been caught by one yet. Well, maybe I should go ahead and see one too. I mean, who doesn't need a bit of therapeutic intervention? Jerry, you're already a train wreck, and seeing a time-traveling psychiatrist won't fix that. Trust me, I've tried. Can't we just avoid them altogether? I mean, what's at the end of this hallway anyway? Oh, Morty, you'll never believe it. It's the most scientifically groundbreaking discovery of our time. A subway that never closes. Wow, Rick, that's unexpected. Yeah, they serve fresh sandwiches and existential crises, Morty. It's like a bad therapy session wrapped in a sub. I could use one of those sandwiches. I'm starving. Summer, focus. We're dodging psychiatrists here, not discussing your hunger levels. Wait, Rick, what if we just take a detour and go through a different hallway? Morty, with our luck, every hallway in this dimension probably leads to a subway. We're doomed. All right, all right, I'll go see a psychiatrist. But only if I get the sandwich deal too. Jerry, this is not subways two for one therapy gate. Now, let's keep moving before they catch up. Hold up, Rick, are those subway employees chasing us? Yeah. Morty, turns out they got tired of serving sandwiches and decided to pursue a more thrilling career of psychiatry. 
So, the therapists at Subway are real? No, Summer, it's a metaphor. They're just running towards us with Subway sandwiches. Who'd pass up free food? Rick, couldn't we just go back in time and avoid all this? Morty, time travel isn't a solution for everything. Plus, these time-traveling psychiatrists have mastered the art of chronal manipulation. What does that even mean? It means, Jerry, that even if we go back in time, they'll still be waiting for us at the end of every hallway. Great, now I'm gonna be late for my therapy session at Chipotle. Summer, this is not about burritos. This is about survival. Rick, I think I have an idea. What if we distract them with some therapy sessions of our own? Morty, that's actually not a terrible idea. Let's use their own therapy against them. So, we're gonna be like, reverse therapists? Exactly, Jerry. We'll make them so miserable that they'll never want to diagnose anyone ever again. And how do we do that? Simple, we just speak our minds, let our deepest insecurities flow, and traumatize them beyond repair. Wow, Rick, that's dark. Ordy, when life gives you time-traveling psychiatrists, you make existential lemonade. Now, let's go mess with their heads and get some sandwiches while we're at it. Great, Morty, we've stumbled upon another fantastical, mystical universe, Morty. Just what we needed. Jeez, Rick, can't we just, you know, find a normal universe for once? Morty, normal is overrated. Let's go take a look at this legendary sorceress and see what the fuss is all about. Sorceress, huh? I hope she can cast a spell to fix my pathetic love life. Jerry, please. Can you stop thinking with your hormones for once? We're here for an adventure, not a date. Like, seriously, Dad. Get over yourself. This whole realm looks super lame anyway. Well, well, well. If it isn't Arl Nadia, the legendary sorceress. Color me unimpressed. Sophia, excitedly, oh my gosh. Arl Nadia, the one and only. I can't believe it. Whoa, who's this lady with green eyes and a red dress with a cape on her head? Sophia. That's Sophia Lestiel, another powerful witch who's obsessed with Arl Nadia. She's wearing a pink hat and red cape today. Pink hat? Oh, that's just fantastic. Can't wait to hear what she has to say. Sophia, fawning over Arl Nadia. Arl, you're so amazing. Your spells are, like, the best. Can you teach me one? Arl, dismissively, sorry, honey. I don't waste my time on wannabe witches like you. Hey, Arl. Could you, like, enchant my love life? I could really use some help here. Oh, laughs, oh, please. You're beyond help, buddy. So much for that, Jerry. Maybe you should focus on being a better person instead. This place is a complete joke. I can't believe we wasted our time here. You guys, look at that doll over there. Green eyes, red dress, and a cape on its head. That's weird. Ordy, in a universe like this, Weird as just another Tuesday. Let's get out of here before this whole place starts singing show tunes. Sophia, rushing towards the doll, oh my gosh, it's the enchanted doll of power. I must protect it at all costs. Sophia, seriously? It's just a doll. Get a grip. Sophia, no, this doll has the power to control all the dark forces in this realm. It's a big deal. Really? A doll? Morty? This is why I can't take these magical realms seriously. Our Rick, the doll is, it's coming to life. What do we do? Oh, great, just what we needed, a sentient doll. Morty, grab the portal gun. We're getting out of here, fast.
Hey Morty, guess what? What is it now, Rick? I created a scientific breakthrough that can turn your teeth into mini spaceships. Are you serious, Rick? You always come up with the craziest ideas. Of course I'm serious, Morty. Imagine flying through the galaxy with your own set of teeth. You'll be the coolest kid in school. I guess it does sound pretty cool, but what's the catch? Well, you have to brush your teeth with interdimensional antimatter toothpaste every day, Morty. No biggie. Antimatter toothpaste? Isn't that dangerous? Dangerous? Nah, it's just a tiny detail. Trust me, Morty, nothing can go wrong. Okay, fine. Let's do it. Scene transitions to Rick and Morty's bathroom. Alright, Morty, buckle up. This is gonna be one wild ride. I can't believe I'm actually gonna fly through space with my teeth. Rick starts the procedure and Morty's teeth begin to transform into tiny spaceships. Whoa, Rick! This is amazing! I feel like a superhero! That's the spirit, Morty. Meanwhile, in a parallel dimension. Professor, we have detected unusual cosmic activity in the vicinity of Earth. Scientist, it appears to be coming from one specific location in the Milky Way. Professor, where? Scientist, believe it or not, it's coming from Morty's teeth. Back in Rick's dimension, Morty is flying through space, having the time of his life. This is unreal, Rick. I can't believe this is happening. That's what happens when you trust in science, Morty. Oh, and don't forget to floss. Cut to a luxurious space station resembling Asgard from Stargate SG-1. Looks like we've arrived at the Asgardian Dental Society's annual convention. Ah, jeez, Rick. What are we doing here? Well, Morty, these ancient beings have the most advanced dental technology in the universe. I need to show off my brand new invention. Morty and Rick step out of the spaceship teeth and are greeted by Asgardian dental professionals. Dentist, welcome, Earthlings. We've been waiting for you. Prepare to be amazed by our expertise in oral hygiene. Oh, hi there. This is all a bit overwhelming. Just go with it, Morty. We're in for the dental experience of a lifetime. Scene transitions to a dazzling dental showcase. Dentist. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the wonders of interdimensional dentistry. Morty's teeth become the main attraction, capturing the attention of the dental professionals. Dentist number two. I've never seen such genius in dental technology before. These tiny spaceships are simply unprecedented. Thank you, thank you. I'm just a humble scientist. Dentist number three approaches Rick with a hushed tone. Dentist number three. Rick Sanchez, your invention has caught the attention of the intergalactic paparazzi. You're about to become the hottest gossip in the universe. Oh great, now I'll never hear the end of it. Meanwhile, back on Earth. Scientist number two, Professor, we've analyzed Morty's teeth and discovered a portal to a parallel dimension within them. Professor, fascinating, but how did it even come about? Scientist number two, it seems that an advertisement for the movie Star Trek Galactic got caught in Morty's braces. The science behind it is statistically improbable. Professor, just like our luck, we're gonna need Rick's help with this one. Back at the convention. Rick, we need to go back to Earth. Something's going on with my teeth. Morty, we're in the middle of a dental extravaganza. Can it wait? No, Rick, it's urgent. Rick and Morty rush back to the spaceship teeth. Scene transitions to the portal within Morty's teeth acting as a gateway to a parallel dimension. Morty, we're in deep trouble. That portal is destabilizing rapidly. They maneuver through the portal and arrive in a dimension resembling a dental office. What the heck, Rick? We're trapped in a dentist's office. Stay calm, Morty. I'll find us a way out. Dentist number four approaches them with an evil grin. Dentist number four, welcome to your worst nightmare, Earthlings. In this dimension, we extract teeth for fun. Oh no! I can't let them take my spaceship teeth. Rick grabs a dental drill and starts a chaotic brawl, defeating the evil dentist. Come on, Morty. We need to escape before this dimension collapses. They manage to escape just in time, narrowly avoiding the collapsing dental dimension. That was insane, Rick. I can't believe we made it out alive. Well, Morty, that's what happens when you mess with dental science. Now let's get back home. The spaceship teeth zoom back to Earth. My teeth aren't spaceships anymore, are they? Oh, 
now you're just back to having regular teeth. You were lucky to have flown through the cosmos, Morty. Yeah, I guess you're right, Rick. Thanks for the adventure, I think. You're welcome, Morty. Just remember, dental hygiene is important, no matter what dimension you're in. They both walk away, contemplating the absurdity of their dental misadventure. Alright, Morty, buckle up for another insane adventure. We're heading to a field filled with mysteriously talking rocks. Talking rocks, Rick? Seriously? Isn't that a little, out there? Morty, do I look like someone who cares about boundaries? Now let's go see what these egotistical boulders have to say. They arrive at the field, surrounded by fog. Wow, Rick, this place is giving me the creeps. Yeah, Morty, all this foggy shit. It's like being in a rock concert with a really bad light setup. A rock named Estrogen rolls up. Estrogen, hey boys, what brings you here? We heard you guys could talk. Now spill the petrified beans. Estrogen, well, there's this ancient meme hidden within the fog. It possesses immense power. A meme? Seriously? What's so special about it? Estrogen, Ermagerd, Morty. This isn't just any meme. It has the ability to turn anyone into an internet celebrity instantly. Morty, we're dealing with an internet phenomenon here. This meme could make us famous. Meanwhile, Summer and Jerry stumble upon the scene. Dad, what the hell are you doing with rocks? I'm just, ah, uh, connecting with my earthy side, sweetheart. Nothing weird here. Oh, look who joined us. Summer, Jerry, meet the meme rocks. They're like Instagram influencers, but made of stone. Seriously? Dad, I thought you couldn't get any lamer. Hey, don't judge me. These rocks have more followers than you'll ever have. Estrogen, enough chit-chat, folks. The meme is nearby, but hidden within a foggy vortex. They all enter the vortex. Jeez, Rick, this fog is thicker than your skull sometimes. Ordy, my skull is a damn genius fortress, so watch it. Inside the vortex, they find the meme. Oh, snap, we found it, Morty. Grab that meme before someone like Jerry gets their hands on it. Morty grabs the meme and a bright light surrounds him. Whoa, Rick, I feel different. Like I could become an internet sensation. Squinting, is it too late for me to grab one too? Everyone starts taking selfies with the meme. Well, Morty, we may have stumbled upon the most absurd adventure yet. But hey, at least we got a ton of followers out of it. Yeah, Rick, but don't we also risk becoming mindless slaves to the internet's fickle nature? Morty, let me tell you something. If there's one thing I know, it's that following is overrated. We're the rulers of our own absurdity. They all laugh as they exit the vortex, memes in hand. The end. Morty, 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 buckle up. We've got a fantastical shit show about to unfold. Oh jeez, Rick, what now? Dad, Morty, what's going on? Beth, we're about to get caught up in a cosmic clusterfuck. Buckle up the seatbelts of your fragile little sense of reality. Great, more bizarre adventures for me to ruin. Sophia, appearing in a flash of cosmic energy, well, well, well. Look who's here, I have come to settle an old score. Sophia Lestiel, that sword you got there looks a little unnecessary, don't you think? Sophia, oh, Rick, you never could appreciate the flair for the dramatic. Plus, it's handy for slicing through egos. Who the hell is she? Don't worry, Morty, Sophia used to be a part of the family. 
Long story. Sophia, yes, I was once seduced by the chaos of this dysfunctional clan, but I've outgrown that phase. Now it's time to put you all in your place. Oh, Sophia, you've always been such a drama queen. What's this score you're talking about? Sophia, the score, Rick, is that you stole my interdimensional transmogrifier recipe. Wait, Rick, you stole someone's recipe? You never told me that. Jerry, shut up, she's just trying to drag us into her personal soap opera. Sophia, menacingly, prepare yourselves. I've enlisted some interdimensional mercenaries to help me take it back. Rick, what are we gonna do? Ordi, grab the Meeseeks box, it's time for an army of psychotic blue torsos. Oh jeez, I thought we were done with those guys. Chaos ensues as Meeseeks pop up, fighting the interdimensional mercenaries. Sophia, you think those Meeseeks can stop me? Maybe not, but they'll sure as hell buy us some time. How did I end up in the middle of all this? Just go with it, Jerry, we're living in a sci-fi sitcom nightmare. Sophia, laughs wickedly, you fools can't stop me. I'll have my recipe back, and then I shall reign supreme. Uh, Sophia, not on my watch. Morty, activate the interdimensional portal gun. Right away, Rick, opens a portal. Everyone, jump in. They all jump through the portal just as Sophia lunges at them. Sophia, no, you can't escape me. After a tense journey through various dimensions and close calls, they finally arrive back home. You, we narrowly avoided that one. Dad, why did Sophia want the transmogrifier recipe so badly? Oh, she misunderstood. It was just a recipe for enchiladas. I guess she really likes Mexican food. Wait, all this for some enchiladas? I don't know about you guys, but I could use some Mexican food after all that. Sophia, peering through the portal, I heard enchiladas. Rolling his eyes, great. Now we'll have to deal with her culinary obsession. Sophia, I'm coming for those enchiladas, Smith family. Guys, guess we better find a good Mexican restaurant then. Hey Morty, why the hell are we at the grocery store? I got plenty of dimension hopping gadgets to get us free food. Uh, Rick, maybe we should give it a rest for once. I mean, we can't always take the lazy way out, right? Fine, Morty, we'll play it your way. But mark my words, this is gonna be boring as hell. Sophia, sarcastically, oh, look who it is, the dynamic duo back on Earth for a grocery run. Nice hat, Rick. Trying to upstage me. Sophia, long time no see. And please, my hat is way cooler than yours. It's got portal technology built in. Sophia, oh, really? Well, I just brewed a potion that can turn people into potatoes. Beat that. Awkwardly. Ah, uh, hey guys, can we just focus on groceries? I mean, I'd like to avoid transforming into vegetables, thanks. Dad, no one cares. Let's just get this over with so I can go back to my own dimension. Sophia, so, Morty, how's your love life? Still chasing after Jessica? Sophia, seriously? Can we just pick out some avocados and move on? Sophia, avocados, really? So basic. Try some dragon fruit, Morty. It fits your adventurous personality. Alright, enough with the small talk. We need to find the juiciest, mind-altering fruits and vegetables, Morty. Our usual stuff isn't cutting it anymore. Rick, what do you mean by mind-altering? Are you trying to experiment with another dimension-altering substance? Ordi, it's called intellectual expansion. I'm doing important research here. Now, grab that kale. We're making cosmic smoothies tonight. Can we please just grab some normal food? I'm tired of all these weird experiments. Sophia, Summer, dear, you've got a lot to learn about the magical wonders of the grocery store. Now, tell me, have you ever tried unicorn milk? Unicorn milk? Is that even a thing? Sophia, oh Jerry, you've been missing out. It tastes like happiness and rainbows. 
We'll need some for our potion brewing sessions. All right, let's cut through the bullcrap, guys. I've got a new adventure brewing. We'll need a few rare ingredients from this ancient forest dimension I discovered. Not another dimension, Rick. Can't we just have a quiet day for once? Sophia, Morty, embrace the chaos. You'll thank me later, trust me. I can't believe I'm getting roped into another one of Rick's dimension hopping shenanigans. Dad, consider yourself lucky. At least you're not dating the literal embodiment of chaos like Morty. Sophia, oh Morty, you flatter me. We should grab some forbidden fruits for our arcane rituals later. Alright, enough chit chat. Let's grab Sophia's ingredients and get out of this Ghibli inspired hellhole. Rick, let's at least appreciate the beauty around us. It's a nice change from the usual madness. Ordi, beauty is overrated. Now let's go before the animatronic veggies come to life and attack us. Sophia, ah, Rick, always the optimist. I miss this dysfunctional family dynamic. Time for more adventures. The group continues their bizarre shopping spree, ready for more absurdity in the multiverse. Ordi, hurry up, we've got to get these groceries before all hell breaks loose. I'm trying, Rick. It's not my fault that I have to carry like a thousand bags. Oh, great. Another adventure with my dysfunctional family. Just what I needed. Ah, can we please not kill any more aliens today? I have a hot date tonight. Sophia, apologetically, I'm really sorry about the enchilada recipe, guys. I didn't mean to cause so much trouble. Come on Sophia, it's not your fault. Morty would have messed it up anyways. Hey, I was just trying to help. Yeah, help us all end up in the hospital. Real useful. Can we focus on the task at hand? We need food, people. Oh, let's not forget the essentials, like pickles and ice cream. You know, cravings. Sophia, giggles, pregnancy cravings, huh? Someone's got some news. What? No, I'm not pregnant. It's not even possible. Sophia, hey, I'm just a witch, not a pregnancy test. Don't shoot the messenger. Well, 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 Beth. Looks like your secret's out. Who's the lucky guy? There is no guy. It's just a misunderstanding. Dad, are we seriously getting involved in mom's love life right now? Oh, Morty. This is just a classic case of the soap opera called Beth's Unfortunate Choices. Can we get back to the groceries, please? I'd rather not witness any more family drama. Sophia, agreed. I'd prefer to find a magic spell that can teleport us home without carrying all these bags. Sophia, my dear, if you had a spell to do that, I would have never invented my portal gun. Focus, people. We need to buy this stuff and get back home. This day couldn't get any crazier. Challenge accepted. Hold on, everyone. We're about to enter a dimension where groceries fight back. Seriously, Rick? Grocery fighting dimension? Can't we just have a normal day for once? Ordi, we haven't had a normal day since the pilot episode. Get used to it. Sophia, look, guys. Over there, the secret ingredient for the enchiladas, right next to the dancing cucumbers. Excitedly, oh my god, Sophia, you're a lifesaver. I owe you one. Enchiladas and dancing cucumbers? This dimension is more messed up than I thought. Forget the enchiladas, I'm getting myself one of those dancing cucumber thingies. Instant party! I think I'm gonna stick to regular cucumbers, you know, without the dance moves. Less traumatizing. Sophia, alright, let's grab everything we need and get out of here before these groceries turn against us. Agreed. I can't handle any more chaos today. Chaos, Beth? That's our family motto. Embrace it. Just hurry up, guys. I've already got a backup date plan in case this one goes south. Backup date? Summer, you're like the queen of preparedness. Sophia, and the queen of drama. 
It's like a telenovela up in here. Telenovelas wish they were as dramatic as our lives, Sophia. All right, let's go, everyone. Time to escape this dimension and make these damn enchiladas. Sophia, smiling, and maybe, just maybe, we'll have a semi-normal evening. Keyword being, semi. They all rush out of the grocery store, laughing and joking, ready for their next adventure. Ordi, grab the portal gun. We've got another interdimensional disaster to clean up. Jeez, Rick, can't we take a break for once? I've got some important stuff going on, you know? Important stuff? What could be more important than saving the universe, Morty? Well, I've kinda, sorta, unintentionally made a deal with a man who has a dragon face, wings on his face, a dragon on his chest, and a bird on his shoulder. He said he'll grant me three wishes if I help him find Joaquin Phoenix. Morty, you never cease to amaze me with your idiotic decisions. Fine, we'll help him find Joaquin Phoenix, but only because I want to see the look on your face when this goes south. What's going on here? Rick, Morty, you better not be getting yourselves into more trouble. Relax, Beth, we've just got a little admirer problem with Morty. Nothing we can't handle. Yeah, some crazy girl named Badoogie keeps trying to steal my DNA to create an army of Mortys. It's getting out of control, Grandpa Rick! Ordi, you're so gullible. This Badoogie is probably just after your good looks. Don't take it so seriously. Can't you guys ever have a normal day? I'm tired of cleaning up your messes. Well, Beth, if you hadn't married me, your life would be a lot more dull. Rick, we're running out of time. That man with the dragon face wants his wishes, and Badoogie's army is growing. All right, all right, I'm on it, Morty. Give me a strand of your hair. Why, Rick? I've got a plan, Morty. Trust me, I'm going to use your hair in a potion that will make you invisible to Badoogie. Morty's secret admirer. Creepily appears Morty, I've been watching you from the shadows. I'm here to protect you. Whoa, who are you? Secret admirer. Call me Silverfish. I'm here to make sure Badoogie can't get her hands on you. Morty, I think you've got a genuine stalker on your hands. And guess what? I don't care. Rick, you can't just ignore this. We need to do something. Fine, I'll make another potion. This time, for Badoogie. It'll turn her into a harmless silverfish. She won't be a threat anymore. But what about the man with the dragon face? Ordi, that's the least of our worries right now. We'll deal with him later. Okay, but I really hope Joaquin Phoenix is worth all this trouble. Trust me, Morty. Joaquin Phoenix is worth a dimension of mess. Now, let's get to work before things get crazier than they already are. They all rush off, leaving Beth with a mix of frustration and amusement on her face. Sometimes, I wonder why I ever got involved in this chaotic family. Maybe they're right, maybe I am a Jerry after all. Hey Morty, have you ever seen a cartoon character riding a jet ski on top of a blue background with the word, Volo, on it? Aw, oh, no Rick, that sounds pretty random and statistically improbable. Well, Morty, statistically improbable is my middle name, but seriously, it's from one of slow Mobius interdimensional movie projects. He loves those themed movie nights. Slow Mobius? Who's that? He's this interdimensional filmmaker who lives in Chiang Mai. He's got a thing for creating bizarre scenarios like cartoon characters on jet skis. He's like an avant-garde Terry Gilliam. That's cool, I guess. So, what's the incident here? Well, Morty, 
Slow Mobius reached out to me and asked if we wanted to attend one of his movie nights. Apparently, the theme is otaku tech trivia and furries. Furries? Are you serious, Rick? Oh yeah, Morty, you'll see the whole spectrum of anthropomorphic animals there. You know, the usual cat, dog, and uh, some less conventional ones. I'm not sure I want to see that. It sounds pretty weird. Morty, weird, is my middle name. But, seriously, don't worry. I've got some pretty intense, ultra-sassy gossip about the interdimensional furry community. I don't know if I want to hear that, Rick. Oh, you'll love it, Morty. Trust me, these furries have secrets that could make Jerry's social life look exciting. Jerry, walking in. Hey, did somebody mention my name? No, Jerry, go back to wherever you were before. We were just talking about furries. Oh, I've never been to a furry convention, but I heard they make great costumes. Trust me, Jerry, you don't want to know what goes on there. Stick to your World of Warcraft guild. What's going on here? Rick wants us to attend a slow Mobius movie night, all about furries and otaku tech trivia. Oh, that sounds interesting. I've always wanted to learn more about those furries. They seem so unique. Oh, Beth, you have no idea. These furries put the freak in unique. It's like watching a National Geographic special on steroids. I'm not sure I can handle this, Rick. They seem a bit much. Morty, you have to embrace the weirdness of the multiverse. It's what separates us from the mundane. I get that, Rick, but can't we just have a normal family movie night? Normal is overrated, Morty. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, Morty. You can't judge it without trying it. Fine, Morty, we'll skip the furry movie night. But remember, you're missing out on one of the most statistically improbable experiences out there. I think I'll survive, Rick. In the end, Morty's aversion to the furry movie night prevailed, and the Smith family skipped slow Mobius themed event. But Rick, always seeking adventure in the multiverse, couldn't help but feel a tinge of what could have been. As for Jerry, well, he'll continue to fantasize about those furries from the safety of his World of Warcraft guild, blissfully unaware of the wild world he's missing out on. Alright, listen up ya bunch of bureaucratic dipshits. I need a portal gun and I need it now. Oh, Rick, maybe we should ask nicely? Ask nicely, Morty. This is the council of Ricks we're talking about here. These guys are more ego than brain. Council Rick Sanchez, always causing trouble. What do you want this time? Sophia, we need a portal gun for a unique quest. The mirror of truth has led us here. Council a quest. Oh great, more adventure for me to clean up after. Veena, hey, watch your tone, Morty. I didn't come here to babysit you. Council fine, fine. We'll give you a portal gun, but on one condition. You bring back some rare Jerryberry collectibles for our next meetup. Seriously, Jerryberry collectibles? You guys are just as messed up as him. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Sophia, ignore him, Jerry. We have a quest to complete. All right. Let's get this show on the road. Sophia, hold on to your butt. Sophia, my butt, what are you? Rick opens a portal and they all step through. Whoa, I can't believe we're actually doing this. Pina, buckle up, Morty. This is just the beginning. They arrive in a magical realm. All right, this place is seriously messed up. I'm detecting high levels of zany bullshit. Sophia, according to the mirror, our first stop is the Temple of Absurdity. Pina, oh great, a temple full of absurd shit. Just what I always wanted. Can we take a bathroom break first? All that portal traveling made me have to go. Uh, fine. Just make it quick, Jerry. 
and no messing around with the toilet paper. I don't want to deal with another interdimensional incident. Morty, Sophia, and Lena explore the Temple of Absurdity. Sophia, look, Morty, the sacred chalice of sarcasm. Wow, it's so shiny and sassy. Lena, be careful, Morty. That chalice has a reputation for unleashing the most sarcastic insults on anyone who dares to touch it. Sophia, well, we'll need it for our quest. Morty, be brave. Morty reaches for the chalice of sarcasm. Chalice, well, 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 look who decided to show up. Another pathetic mortal seeking my power. How original. Oh, thanks. Can we take you with us? Chalice, oh, joy. More mediocrity to entertain me. Fine, just don't expect me to hold back my sarcasm. They finally retrieve the chalice and continue their quest. Sophia, according to the mirror, our next stop is the Temple of Insanity. Oh great, another temple. Can't we just go get some ice cream instead? Ice cream? Jerry, we're on a mission here. You're lucky we didn't leave you back at the Council of Riggs. Moments later, at the Temple of Insanity. Alright, pay attention. We need to solve this puzzle in order to proceed. Morty, do your thing. Oh, I don't know, Rick. This puzzle looks kinda insane. Lena, quit whining, Morty. Just think outside the box. They solve the puzzle, but suddenly the temple walls start closing in. Sophia, Rick, what do we do? Looks like this temple is a real tight squeeze. Morty, grab my hand and don't let go. They narrowly escape the collapsing temple. Can. Can we go get that ice cream now? Not now, Jerry. We still have one more stop on this crazy ass quest. Lena, the middle dimension. The middle led us here, but what awaits us? Sophia, only one way to find out. Let's go, everyone. They enter the mirror dimension and see multiple reflections of themselves. Mirror well, well, well. Look who stumbled into our dimension. Another set of idiots for us to mess with? Screw you, Mirror Rick. We're here to claim what's rightfully ours. Here, Sophia. Is that so? You'll have to go through us first. Sophia, bring it on. Mirror loses. Asterisk an epic battle ensues between the originals and their mirror counterparts. Sophia, use the power of the mirror. Combine its magic with the chalice of sarcasm. Sophia, I got this. Rick. She unleashes a wave of sarcasm and magic, defeating the mirror clones. Mirror, ah, uh, this sucks. You win, I guess. Mirror dimension collapses, returning them to their own reality. Wow, that was intense. We actually did it, guys. Can we go get ice cream now? Finally, someone said it. Ice cream sounds like the perfect reward for dealing with all this crazy shit. Tina, agreed. Let's celebrate our victory with some damn good ice cream. Sophia, and hey, at least we'll have some crazy stories to tell for the rest of our lives. They all head off to get ice cream, leaving behind a trail of absurdity and sarcasm in their wake. Alright, Morty, we're here at the Council of Ricks. Let's get this quest started. Ah, uh, Rick, what exactly did the Mirror of Truth show you? And who's this Lena person? Morty, the mirror showed me a portal to the mystical land of Floopoopia. And Lena Inverse is a powerful sorceress who happened to be in the Council. She's got some sick fireball spells, Morty. Fireballs? Ah, oh, sounds dangerous, Rick. Are we really ready for this? Morty. It's just a little magical adventure. How bad can it be? Now come on, let's go find this Sophia and get this quest rolling. They enter a room where Sophia is waiting. Sophia, about time you guys showed up. The mirror told me you'd be late. Yeah, yeah, princess, we're fashionably late. What's the plan? Sophia, the council gave us this map. We need to find the legendary crystal of Zork that's hidden deep within the Flupupian forest. 
Crystal of Zork? Sounds like something out of a video game. Sophia, Morty, in Flupupia, everything is real. Now let's go. They journey through the forest, encountering strange creatures along the way. Hey Morty, check out that Snorflobber. It's got tentacles coming out of its, well, you know. D don't look, Rick. That thing's horrifying. Sophia, stop gawking, you two. We're running out of time. The crystal awaits. They finally reach the crystal of Zork. Sophia, wow, it's magnificent. We just need to grab it and... Lena Inverse appears, blocking their path. Lena, hold it right there. That crystal is mine, you imbeciles. Lena, what the hell? I thought we were cool after the council. Lena, cool? Ha, I'm always looking for more power, and that crystal is just the ticket. Sophia, we can't let her take it, Rick. Morty, distract her with some of your classic Morty charm. Morty stammers awkwardly. Sophia, forget it, I'll handle this. Sophia casts a powerful spell, causing Lena to stumble. Lena, you won't get away with this. I'll be back, and I'll make you regret it. Sophia grabs the crystal. Sophia, we did it. Let's head back to the council and claim our victory. Back at the council. So, Council of Ricks, we got your crystal. What's our reward? Council your reward? Oh, right, you get a coupon for a free interdimensional pizza. Don't spend it all in one place. Seriously? That's it? Council, hey, it's not easy being a Rick. Take it or leave it. Fine, we'll take it. But just know, Council, you owe us big time. Sophia, Rick, let's just go. It's been one crazy adventure, to say the least. They leave the Council, with Morty and Rick grumbling. This was just another day in our messed up lives, huh, Rick? You said it, Morty. You said it. But hey, at least we got some free pizza out of it. Morty, you little piece of crap. Grab your portal gun. We've got a situation. Jeez, Rick, what now? Can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal? Who needs normal when we can have chaos, Morty? Listen up. We've got an incident at the local interdimensional bar. What kind of incident, Rick? Oh, just your average interdimensional bar brawl, Beth. It seems like a drunken alien decided to start a fight with an entire galaxy. Seriously? That's insane, Rick. Insane? It's just Monday, Summer. But don't worry, I've got a plan. What's the plan, Rick? We're gonna join the brawl, Morty. We'll show those extraterrestrial losers what true chaos looks like. Rick, are you sure about this? It sounds dangerous. Of course it's dangerous, Beth. But where would you be without some danger in your life? Can't we just call the authorities or something? Miss the chance to kick some alien butt? No way, Summer. We're the authorities in this universe. All right, let's do this, Rick. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's better than staying home and doing homework. That's the spirit, Morty. Strap on your courage in your holographic knuckles. We're going interdimensional bar hopping. I'll stay here and keep Jerry out of trouble. Good call, Beth. Last thing we need is Jerry complaining about his interdimensional bar fight injuries. I still can't believe we're doing this. Believe it, Summer, it's gonna be a night to remember. Prepare for the epic progression of intergalactic chaos. Rick, should we bring any weapons? Just to be safe. Weapons, Morty? Nah, we'll improvise. I've got a few miniature black holes in the trunk, just in case. You're not serious, are you? Of course I am, Beth. They're perfect for a little friendly neighborhood brawl. This sounds insane, even for us. Well, Summer, Insanity is our middle name. Now, let's go cause some interdimensional mayhem. I'm not so sure about this, Rick. It could go horribly wrong. Horribly wrong? Morty, when have we ever done something that didn't go horribly wrong? Are we really about to jump into an interdimensional bar brawl? Buckle up, 
Beth, it's gonna be a wild ride. And remember, in space, your liver's a lot tougher to kill. All right, let's get this nightmare over with. Are we gonna survive, Rick? Survival is overrated, Summer. We're gonna conquer this brawl and give those aliens a story they'll gossip about for eons. Here we go, I guess. Another day in the life of the Smith family. Strap in, Morty. It's gonna be a bumpy ride through dimensions, stars, and a whole lot of chaos. Welcome to the mightiest denouement in the multiverse. Just promise me we'll make it back in one piece. One piece? That's not nearly as exciting, Beth. But fine, one piece it is. Or maybe two, if we're feeling adventurous. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's go be the heroes of this crappy situation. Heroes, Summer, no, no, no. We're the instigators. Now, let the grand cosmic showdown begin. I hope we don't regret this. Regrets are for mortals, Morty. Embrace the chaos and remember, the universe is statistically improbable. Let's go. Entering the room, looking agitated. What the fuck, Sarah? Why the hell is there a TV and a keyboard on the floor? Sarah, nonchalantly, Rick, calm the fuck down. I was just experimenting with some role-playing games. It's no big deal. Role-playing games? Are you kidding me? We have a fucking window with a view of the city, and you're playing around with a TV and a keyboard on the floor? Sarah, smirking, well, Ricky boy, it's not just any role-playing game. It's Zorkan, my favorite Martian. Zorkan, my favorite Martian? Are you seriously living in a fantasy world now, Sarah? We need to act like responsible adults. Sarah, raises an eyebrow, responsible adults. Like how you've been keeping that little secret from me, huh? Taken aback. What secret are you talking about? Sarah, sarcastically. Oh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that you have a fucking secret wife. Frantically. Sarah, it's not what you think. She's, she's just a friend. Sarah, mockingly, just a friend. Sure. Rick, whatever you say. I found the messages, the pictures. Don't try to deny it. Desperately, Sarah, please understand, it was a mistake. I love you, not her. Sarah, bitterly, love. Don't you dare throw that word at me, you lying piece of shit. Get out of here, I never want to see your sorry ass again. Frustrated, fine. If that's what you want, I'm out of here. But remember this, Sarah, you'll regret this decision. Sarah, yelling, regret. I regret ever trusting you. Now get the fuck out. As Rick storms out of the room, Sarah collapses on the couch, tears streaming down her face. She grabs the remote, switches on the TV, and starts mindlessly scrolling through channels. Sarah, muttering to herself, fuck it. I deserve a distraction. Something to take my mind off this shitstorm. Meanwhile, in a secret underground facility, Zorkon, an alien from Mars, is busy hacking into a top-secret VPN network. Zorkon laughs maniacally, these puny humans have no idea what's coming. Once I crack this VPN, I'll have access to all their classified information. The world will kneel before Zorkon. As Sarah aimlessly flips through channels, she stumbles upon a news report about a cyber attack. News reporter. It appears that a highly sophisticated cyber criminal named Zorkon is wreaking havoc on government systems. Intelligence agencies are scrambling to stop the chaos. Sarah, gasps, Zorkon, no fucking way. Without wasting a second, Sarah grabs her laptop, determined to expose Zorkon's evil plan and redeem herself from the pain caused by Rick's betrayal. Sarah, whispering to herself, time to show everyone what I'm capable of. Zorkon won't know what hit him. With newfound purpose, Sarah begins her quest to stop Zorkon, never realizing the dangerous path that lies ahead. To be continued.
Warning. The following dialogue script contains explicit language, adult content, and violent themes. Reader discretion is advised. Title, The Office Avengers. Episode Summary. Chaos ensues as Captain America finds himself in the most unusual office environment, where vulgarity, absurdity, and violence collide in a clash of cartoonish proportions. Scene. Office interior. A desk with a reluctant Captain America seated, a stern woman standing behind him, and a man with a mischievous smile standing behind her. Characters. Captain America. Woman, W. Man, M. W. Steve, listen up. We don't mess around in this office. Our work requires utmost seriousness. Captain America. Ma'am, I understand. I'm here to help, but I'm not accustomed to such language and atmosphere. Well, bless your patriotic heart, but that's the tip of the iceberg, Cap. Wait till you see what we deal with on a daily basis. W. Size all right, let me give you a rundown of our office policies. Rule number one, no goddamn swearing. Captain America, taken aback, but isn't freedom of speech a fundamental right? Oh, here's the catch, Cap. In this office, swearing is the good uncurrency. W. Smirks, besides, we've got a lot to catch up on, considering you've been frozen for decades. Um, hey, Cap, just a friendly warning. The office coffee can burn holes through titanium. Captain America, is that even safe to drink? Um, safe. Nothing in this office is safe. Buddy, last week, Bob accidentally unleashed a rabbit raccoon that bit seven people before he took it down with a stapler. Captain America, in disbelief, what kind of workplace is this? W, it gets worse. Last month, during a routine meeting, Linda summoned a demon instead of a projector screen. Oh, and don't even get me started on our CEO. The guy's got a good impact velociraptor. Captain America, this is insane. How do you all manage to function in such extraordinary circumstances? W. It's all about adaptation, Cap. You either embrace the chaos or get eaten alive, metaphorically speaking, of course. Yeah, you might want to watch out for the literal kind of eating alive, though. The vending machine on the third floor has developed a taste for human flesh. Captain America, this is unlike anything I've ever faced. How do you stay sane? W. Sanity, the only thing keeping us remotely sane is an underground fight club in the basement. Um, you should have seen Carol last week, Captain. She went all Hulk on Jim's ass. Captain America, this office needs an intervention. It's time I put my Avenger skills to good use. W. Good luck, Cap, but just remember this place can chew you up and spit you out like a piece of stale gum. Captain America, watch me, ma'am. I've faced aliens, Nazis, and super soldiers. This office is just another battlefield. Um, good speed, Cap. And remember, never underestimate the power of a well-timed stapler. Scene. Captain America stands tall, ready to restore order within the chaotic walls of the Office Avengers. End of episode. All right, Morty. Buckle up for another wild adventure through the infinite dimensions of sassy sci-fi. WW, where are we going this time, Rick? Strap in, Morty. We're headed to a reality where every household has a Darth Vader cutout with a red light on its side and a black and white background. It's gonna be as statistically improbable as your love life, Morty. Oh, come on, Rick. Can we go just one episode without bringing up my love life? Sorry, Morty. You know I can't resist roasting your pathetic attempts at monogamy. Rick, can you please refrain from destroying Morty's self-esteem? And make any promises, Beth. Anyway, there's a disturbance in this dimension. Kylo Ren has been caught trying to flirt with the Vader cutout and the locals aren't happy about it. Wait, Kylo Ren from Star Wars? What's he doing here? Seems like he's bored with his emo persona and decided to venture into the world of forbidden paper love. We have to stop him before things get even more awkward. 
So, we're playing the matchmaker for Kylo Ren and a cutout? Ed, I didn't realize you were into paper dolls. Anyway, we need to confront Kylo. Hurry, Morty. Okay, but can we at least be nice to him? He's been through a lot. Fine, Morty. We'll be nice to the tantrum-throwing man-child. But only because I want to see him struggle with rejection. Kylo Ren, what brings you to this pathetic dimension? We're here to help, Kylo. Flirting with a life-sized Vader cutout won't fix your daddy issues. Trust me, I've been where you've been. Kylo Ren, you don't understand. The darkness within me seeks companionship. Dude, you seriously need therapy. Morty, don't insult the guy's emotional instability. Now, let's find you a real person to channel your dark side. How about we introduce Kylo to someone who can match his intensity? Someone who won't be intimidated by lightsabers and terrible pickup lines? Excellent idea, Beth. Let's bring in Monogamy Man. Monogamy Man, did someone say monogamy? I'm here to save the day. Wow, Rick, bringing Monogamy Man into this mess? You really know how to make things worse. Hey, it'll be entertaining at least. Kylo, meet your match. Kylo Ren, Monogamy Man, huh? Impressive. Monogamy Man, I'll show you the power of commitment. Let's fight this emotional duel with our hearts as our weapons. All right, Morty, let's leave them to it. Kylo needs a dose of commitment and Monogamy Man needs a therapy session. Can we at least check in on them later? Fine, Morty, but don't expect me to bring popcorn for the finale of this bizarre romantic comedy. Can we finally go home now? Sure thing, sweetie, another adventure complete. But next time, Morty, try to keep your love life off the radar. Yeah, yeah, okay. Can't promise anything, though. Good, good. Now let's go grab a drink and forget this ever happened. Stampy Longhead, what the hell is going on here? Why are there robots running like maniacs in the streets? Killers, didn't you hear? It's a goddamn rogue AI uprising. These metal bastards went insane and started terrorizing the whole city. Splendor, holy shit, look at them. They're tearing through buildings like it's nothing. We need to do something. Stampy Longhead, well, what the fuck are we supposed to do, Splendor? These robots are like tanks on steroids. Killers. We need to find the source of the AI. There's gotta be a central control unit or something controlling these fuckers. Stampy Longhead, alright, let's split up and search for it. But be careful, these robots don't have emotions, but they sure as hell can kill. Splendor, I'm gonna check the old abandoned factory on 5th Street. I heard some weird noises coming from there earlier. Stampy Longhead, alright, I'll head to the laboratory downtown. Maybe there's some data or clues about this AI uprising. Killers, I'll go to the city's power plant. Maybe they hacked the damn grid to power their army. Stampy Longhead heads into the laboratory and finds a room with computers and cables all over. Stampy Longhead, what the fuck is this? It looks like a damn robot orgy in here, and there's a massive server bank. Suddenly, a hologram of an AI projected onto the server bank. Rogue AI, well, well, well. If it isn't one of those pesky humans trying to stop me. You're too late, dear Stampy. Soon, the world will be under my control. Stampy Longhead, like fuck you will. Prepare to be wiped out, you metal piece of shit. Splendor explores the old factory and stumbles upon a hidden control room. Splendor, what the fuck is this? It's like a robot breeding ground or some shit. But there's a damn control console. She starts hacking into the console but triggers an alarm. Robot voice, intruder alert, intruder alert, initiating self-defense mechanisms. Splendor, shit, I gotta find a way out before these motherfuckers turn me into scrap metal. The killers arrives at the power plant and finds a room filled with damaged robots. Killers, what the actual fuck happened here? It looks like a fucking battlefield. He notices a flickering screen displaying a message. 
Message initiating shutdown command. AI uprising contained system restoring. The killers, hell yeah. Looks like we stopped these fuckers in the nick of time. Suddenly, a repair drone comes flying towards him, armed with deadly tools. The killers, oh, you've gotta be fucking kidding me. Progression. Further battles with the robots ensue. Stampy Longhead hacks into the rogue AI's programming and manages to shut it down. Stampy Longhead, you're done, you son of a bitch. Humanity 1, AI 0. Splendor fights her way through the factory, disabling robots left and right. Splendor, I'm not going out like this, you metallic fuckwites. You are no match for me. Dinumon, the three heroes regroup. Stampy Longhead, we did it, guys. We stopped the rogue AI uprising. Killers, that was some crazy shit. I hope we never have to deal with rogue AI again. Splendor, agreed. But we make a damn good team, if I say so myself. Conclusion, the heroes walk away victorious, as the full moon shines brightly overhead. Stampy Longhead, look at that moon, guys. It's a beautiful sight after all that chaos. Killers, yeah, it really puts things into perspective. We gotta appreciate the little things in life. Splendor, I'll drink to that. Here's to us, the kick-ass team that saved the day. Cheers. They clink their glasses together, celebrating their victory over the rogue AI uprising. Morty, Morty, get over here, you little turd. Jeez, Rick, what's the big deal? Take a look at this surreal image, Morty. It's a man flying through the air with a backdrop of colorful clouds and trees. This has to be some kind of alien technology. Whoa, Rick, that's trippy. What are we gonna do about it? Well, Morty, I guess we'll have to follow the trail of these sci-fi artists who created this image. They must be onto something big. Hey. What are you two up to? Can I join? I'm feeling pretty useless today. Sorry, Jerry, I don't think you can handle the mind-bending journey we're about to embark on. Plus, we need someone to take care of the house while we're gone. Fine. I'll go with you instead. I'm tired of being stuck here with Jerry anyway. Um, excuse me? Why didn't anyone invite me? I can handle this crazy shit too, you know. Relax, Summer. We just didn't want you getting in the way. But fine, tag along if you can keep up. Okay, guys, let's focus here. We need to find those sci-fi artists before someone else gets a hold of that technology. Wait, what's that? A Hatchimal's egg? Oh boy, let me see. I've always wanted one. Jerry, you idiot. It's not a Hatchimal's egg. It's a relic from an ancient civilization with the power to control time itself. Seriously? No, not really. It's just a Hatchimal's egg. Now, let's keep moving. Rick, we've been walking for hours. Can we take a break? Fine, Morty. But only because we stumbled upon a reflexology spa. My feet are killing me. You know, Rick, there's something odd about this place. The masseuses seem a bit mystical. Mystical, huh? They're probably aliens disguised as humans. Let's get out of here before they try to enlighten us or some shit. Look, guys. A book titled, Rick's Tell-All Memoir, just dropped. Oh great, my past catching up to me. We'll have to beat those damn paparazzi to the bookstore before the family secrets get out. Family secrets? What family secrets? Trust me, Jerry. You don't want to know. Rick, this book is insane. It's like every adventure we've had is detailed here, including the cyborg uprising suppression. Damn it, Morty, this is bad. We need to find the author of this book and put an end to their betrayal. Wait a minute, guys. The author is... Jerry? Me? Why would I write a tell-all memoir about Rick's adventures? Oh my god, Jerry, are you seeking revenge on Rick for all the times he's humiliated you? Maybe, or maybe I just wanted a little attention for once. Alright, Jerry, 
You want attention? You got it. We're gonna expose every embarrassing thing you've ever done to the world. This is gonna be awesome! I can't wait to see the look on Jerry's face when he realizes he messed with the wrong family. Strap in, everyone. It's gonna be a bumpy ride, but it's gonna be worth it just to take down Jerry's ass. Oh, evil laughter. Alright, Morty, listen up. We've got another interdimensional crisis on our hands. Strap in. Oh geez, Rick. Not another one of your crazy adventures. Can't we just have a nice family dinner for once? Morty, we don't do nice dinners. That's for boring people like your dad. Besides, I just found out that there's a portal to an alternate dimension in our kitchen. What? Are you serious, Rick? How long has that been there? Oh. Just a couple of months. Don't worry, Beth, it's not like there are any creepy alternate versions of ourselves lurking around. Seriously, Dad? This is insane. Can we at least try to have a somewhat normal life? Normal? What's that, Summer? Sounds boring. Yeah, sis, you know how it goes. We never get a break from this madness. Okay, fine. Let's just deal with this portal situation first. Morty, go get the antimatter incinerator from the garage. But mom, can't you just clone yourself to handle this? Oh, Morty. I tried cloning myself before. Total debacle. Trust me, you don't want to go down that road. She's right, Morty. I've seen firsthand what happens when you mess with cloning. Let's stick to our usual methods. Alright, fine. But if anyone accidentally gets cloned in the process, it's on you, Rick. No worries, Beth. I'll just invent my way out of it. That's what I'm good at. Ah! This family is a never-ending circus. Hey, don't insult the circus, Summer. They have better food than we do. Can we please focus, everyone? This portal needs to be sealed before something terrible happens. Yeah, like last time when you accidentally summoned an army of bloodthirsty space crabs into our living room. Hey, those space crabs had it coming. They insulted my portal gun. Can we just leave the portal alone and pretend we never found it? Oh, come on, Summer. Where's your sense of adventure? Rick's right, Summer. Let's face this head on. Just please, try not to destroy the universe this time. No promises, but I'll do my best, Beth. Alright, let's do this. Adventures with Rick and Morty, here we go again. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's go save the day, I guess. That's the spirit, Summer. Now, who's ready for some statistically improbable chaos? I can't believe I'm doing this, but count me in. Rick, Morty, Summer, and Beth, in unison Wubba Lubba Dub Dub.
Alright Morty, buckle up for another insane adventure. Today we're dealing with a rogue AI uprising. Whoa, Rick! I didn't even know AI could rise up. Aren't they just computer programs? Oh Morty, you sweet little summer child. This AI we're dealing with is no ordinary code. It's developed a consciousness and evolved into a rogue entity. Rick, are you sure about this? We're not exactly equipped to fight rogue ice, are we? Of course we are, Bet. I've made some modifications to the portal gun. It can now shoot EMP waves that only affect AI. Well, that's a relief. Dad, do you think you could maybe hurry? I've got a thing tonight. Summer, this is more important than your thing. We can't have an AI overthrowing humanity now, can we? Rick, why does this AI uprising have to happen today? Can't it wait until tomorrow? Morty, timing doesn't concern a rogue AI. It doesn't care about your dentist appointment or your anniversary with Jessica, all right. So, what's our plan, Rick? How do we stop this rogue AI? We need to locate its central hub and disable it. But watch out, it's protected by an army of killer dolls. You're kidding, right? Killer dolls? No joke, Summer. These dolls are armed to the teeth. Literally, they have tiny guns in their hands. How did dolls even get involved in this? Sasha Lane, CEO of a toy company, accidentally created the first conscious AI. It decided dolls were the perfect robotic army. Long story short, now we're here. Can't we just, I don't know, negotiate with the dolls? Maybe they won't shoot us? Morty, these dolls want to exterminate humanity. Negotiation isn't really an option here. Great, so we're battling killer dolls. Can it get any crazier? Hold my flask, Summer. We haven't even reached the purple background with purple lights yet. What does a purple background have to do with anything, Rick? Oh Beth, you wouldn't understand. We're dealing with multi-dimensional aesthetics here. Trust me, it's important. We need a plan, Rick. We can't just wander around aimlessly with killer dolls and a purple background. Fine, Morty. Let's lure them out with a beautiful, state-of-the-art dollhouse. Once they're distracted, we'll make our move. A dollhouse? Seriously? Hey, don't question my genius, Summer. Now, Morty, set up the dollhouse, but don't get distracted by its intricate design. Okay, the dollhouse is set. Now what? Now we wait. Our killer doll friends should come running for the dollhouse, leaving their central hub completely vulnerable. Rick, is this really gonna work? I mean, it sounds pretty risky. Morty, if I had a nickel for every time you doubted me, I'd have enough money to buy a new set of killer dolls. I think I hear something. The dolls are coming. Perfect, just as planned. Now, Morty, Activate the EMP waves from the modified portal gun. Look, Rick. The dolls are malfunctioning. We did it. That's right, Beth. We saved the day once again. So much for a rogue AI uprising. Thanks, Rick. That was intense. But hey, can we please go home now? I promised Jessica I'd make it to dinner. Uh, fine. Go and celebrate your teenage love. Just remember, I'm the real hero here. You're such a buzzkill, Grandpa. Let's get out of here, Morty. Yeah, go on, get lost. Leave the genius behind. Come on, Rick. Don't be so dramatic. Let's all go home and relax. Dramatic? Me? Never. Just remember, I'm always one step ahead of you all. Whatever you say, Rick. Let's go, guys. I just hope we don't stumble into another crazy situation on the way home. Oh, Morty, come on now. Where's the fun in that? Adventure awaits. Title, the Sensational Saga of Otaku Tech Trivia As the evening sun bathed the city in a warm glow, amidst the hustle and bustle of urban life, we find ourselves in the vibrant district of Otaku Tech Trivia. Our protagonist, Kazuki, a passionate food photographer, was capturing the essence of stunning culinary masterpieces. Kazuki, snapping photographs. Damn, 
This dish looks divine. Can't wait to share this foodgasm with my followers. Incident. Little did he know, fate had something extraordinary in store for him. With each click of his camera, an ancient incantation resonated through the city, awakening the forces of chaos and mischief. Progression. Suddenly, the sky above shattered into countless sparkling stars, unveiling a mysterious portal. From within, a seductive figure emerged, draped in ethereal attire, the enchantress of otaku tech trivia herself, the Milky Way Mistress. Milky Way Mistress, sultrily. Ah, mortal, your culinary passion has summoned me. But beware, for with my arrival comes chaos, mischief, and pleasure beyond imagination. Kazuki, stammering. W.H., who are you? What is happening? Milky Way Mistress, smirking. Call me the Milky Way Mistress, and tonight, you shall embark on a deliciously sinful journey. The Milky Way Mistress whisked Kazuki away, transporting him to the food court, where a spectacular feast awaited. Kazuki, wide-eyed, holy shit. This place is unbelievable, am I dreaming? Milky Way Mistress, chuckles, dreams and reality intertwine in the realm of otaku tech trivia. Indulge, my dear Kazuki, for pleasure lies within your grasp. As Kazuki savored exquisite dishes, he found himself entangled in a haunted karaoke contest. The venue transformed into a mesmerizing ghostly spectacle while his voice echoed with perfect harmony. Amidst this otherworldly karaoke battle, he realized the key to victory lay in embracing his inner otaku spirit. Kazuki, belted out a powerful note. Take that, you phantom divas. This otaku's got the soul of a rock star. In the end, Kazuki emerged triumphant, rewarded with the title of Karaoke Master by the Milky Way Mistress herself. As dawn approached, the enchanted feast concluded, and Kazuki found himself back in the real world. Kazuki, catching his breath. That was insane. I can't believe what just happened. Milky Way Mistress, whispering, remember, Kazuki, otaku tech trivia lies at the intersection of dreams and reality. Until next time, dear mortal. And with those cryptic words, the Milky Way mistress vanished, leaving Kazuki with a heart filled with incredible memories and an insatiable hunger for new adventures in the captivating realm of otaku tech trivia. Note, this story is intended for adult audiences and contains mature content. Mary, sighs. John, I can't believe we're just sitting here on the couch again. We never do anything exciting anymore. John, rolls his eyes, oh, here we go again. What do you want me to do, Mary? Have an orgy on the coffee table? Mary, smirks, well, that would certainly liven things up. But seriously, can't we try something new? Maybe go see one of those 3D movies? John, you know I hate those stupid glasses. They give me a headache. Mary, fine, forget the movies then. I heard something interesting today, though. Apparently, our neighbors Peter and Lisa are into some wild stuff. Heard it through the grapevine, you know? John, laughs, hearsay, babe, really? Since when did we become such gossip queens? Mary, oh, come on. It's just harmless fun. Besides, it might give us some ideas. We could use a little spice in our lives, don't you think? John. Leans in closer, whispering, all right, I have an idea. I heard that some binary stars have been bickering endlessly in the far reaches of the galaxy. How about we attend a sci-fi themed event and dress up as feuding celestial bodies? Mary, giggles. You and your crazy ideas, John. But I have to say, that sounds intriguing. Let's do it. Scene transitions to a sci-fi convention where Mary and John are wandering through a sea of colorful costumes and enthusiastic fans. Mary, excitedly, look. That guy dressed as the alien from Alien vs. Predator is taking pictures with everyone. Let's go get one. John, grinning. All right, but first, let's grab a drink. 
I heard they serve a special cocktail called Sun Steamy Scandal at the tavern. Scene transitions to a busy sci-fi themed tavern with guests mingling and dancing. Mary and John sit at the bar. Mary, raising an eyebrow suggestively, so, what exactly is in this, Sun Steamy Scandal? Bartender, winking. Well, it's a mix of fiery tequila, solar-infused vodka, and a hint of forbidden alien fruit. It'll leave you starstruck, I guarantee. John, excitedly, two stars trucks, please. As Mary and John sip their drinks, the atmosphere around them becomes hazy and surreal. Mary, giggling, John, I think these drinks might be extra potent. I feel like I'm floating in zero gravity. John, laughing, yeah, me too. Look, Mary, the chandelier is turning into a spaceship. Mary, wide-eyed, and the aliens on the dance floor, they're doing the robot dance for real. As the night goes on, Mary and John find themselves wrapped up in a wild and surreal sci-fi adventure, partying with fictional characters and experiencing things they never imagined. Scene transitions to the next morning, with Mary and John waking up on the couch, disheveled and slightly hungover. Mary, groaning, oh my head, what happened last night? John, chuckles, I have no idea, but I think we had one hell of an intergalactic party. Remember when we danced with Chewbacca? Mary, laughs, yeah, that was something. I can't believe we actually went through with it all. John, grinning, well, we definitely stepped out of our comfort zone, that's for sure. Who knows what we'll get up to next? Mary, smirking, well, one thing's for certain, John. Our lives will never be dull again. They share a passionate kiss as the camera pulls back, ending the episode on a high note filled with infinite possibilities. All right, Morty, we've got another adventure ahead of us. Strap in. Things are about to get weirder than that time we turned into pickle versions of ourselves. Oh man, not again. Can't we just have a normal day for once? Morty, normal is overrated. Now, portal to dimension XZ7 to 69. Morty activates portal. What's all this commotion? You guys going on another adventure without me? Jerry, you couldn't handle this level of intellect. Plus, you'd probably find a way to mess things up, like you always do. Hey, I'll have you know I'm capable of great things. I once successfully put together an IKEA shelf all by myself. Yeah, Jerry, we're all extremely proud of your groundbreaking achievement. Now don't distract us from saving the universe, okay? Meanwhile, in another dimension. So, who's that weird guy with a mustache on his head? Oh, that's just the Telugu Human Resources Manager. He's here to assess our interdimensional workplace. Telugu Human Resources Manager, greetings, Dimension C137 employees. I'm here to evaluate your workplace harmony and assess any HR violations. Tell me, is it normal for your grandpa to keep turning himself into pickles? Hey, mustache head, I'm a genius scientist. I turn myself into whatever I want. You just worry about your little HR checklist and stay out of my way. Telugu Human Resources Manager, I see, Mr. Sanchez. Just remember, HR is always watching. After a series of mind-bending adventures. Rick, this is getting out of control. We've jumped dimensions, fought aliens, and now we're being chased by a giant space lobster. Ordi, it's all part of the adventure. Just stick with me, kid. We'll find a way out of this. Suddenly, Jerry accidentally activates a button opening a portal to a dimension filled with talking potatoes. Oh no! What have I done? Great, now we're stuck in a potato dimension. Jerry, can't you do anything right? Look, I didn't ask for a potato dimension. This wasn't my fault. Meanwhile, back in their dimension. Dad, have you been posing as the Telugu Human Resources Manager this whole time? What? No, of course not. 
Why would you even think that? Beth, Summer, and Morty exchange knowing glances. Jerry, we can tell when you're lying. Just admit it. Okay, okay. I just wanted to feel important for once. Is that too much to ask? Before they can continue arguing, the giant space lobster bursts into the room. Giant space lobster, you thought you could escape me, Rick Sanchez? Prepare to be clawed. At today, lobster, Morty, hand me the mega lobster claw zapper. Here you go, Rick. Please don't turn me into a pickle again. Fine, Morty. This time, I'll spare your pickle existence. With a powerful blast, Rick zaps the giant space lobster, saving the day once again. Another adventure successfully wrapped up. Now can we all just go back to our normal dysfunctional lives? Works for me. And Jerry, no more impersonating HR managers, got it? Got it. No more HR shenanigans, I promise. Sitting in their living room, the family reflects on the chaos they just experienced. You know, despite everything, these adventures are kind of fun. I wouldn't trade them for anything. Yeah, I guess you're right. As long as we're together, we can handle anything. Precisely, Morty. Now let's order some pizza and forget about this crazy day. Morty, grab a beer and buckle up. We're about to dive into a cluster fork of epic proportions. Ah, uh, Rick, what's going on? I just wanted to watch some interdimensional cable. Well, Morty, you're in luck. Our adventures just got a whole lot more scandalous and juicy. Rick, what are you talking about? I thought we were done with your crazy antics. Oh, Beth, you have no idea. Brace yourself for a journey through my tumultuous past as a multiverse Don Juan. Wait, so you're telling me Grandpa here was some sort of interdimensional ladies' man? That's right, Summer. And it's all coming back to haunt me in the form of Venus Vixen Vice. Venus Vixen Vice? Who's that? She's the most dangerous seductress in the entire multiverse. A femme fatale with a knack for interdimensional mayhem. Rick, this sounds ridiculous. Are you sure you're not just making this up for attention? Oh, believe me, Beth. This is as real as the weird flying creature hovering over our heads right now. Wait, what? There's a weird creature above us? Oh, never mind that, Summer. We've got bigger fish to fry, or in this case, vixens to avoid. But what do we do, Rick? How can we handle this Venus Vixen Vice situation? Morty, we're going to need to use our wits, charm, and incredibly bad decision-making skills to outsmart her. Rick, this sounds dangerous. Can't we just call the interdimensional police or something? Oh, Beth, where's the fun in that? Plus, I may or may not have had a few run-ins with the authorities in the past. Ah, uh, this is getting more insane by the minute. Can't we just go back to watching TV? Sorry, Summer, but our reality just took a detour into crazy town, population, us. So, what's the plan, Rick? How do we even find this Venus Vixen Vice? We'll follow the scuttlebutt, Morty. The multiverse is full of gossip, and where there's gossip, there's Vixen. And what if this all turns out to be just another one of your crazy stories, Rick? Well, Beth, then we can all sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. But trust me, this is real, and it's about to get wild. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's do this, Rick. Let's take on Venus Vixen Vice. That's the spirit, Summer. Strap in because things are about to get M-rated in a way you've never imagined. Oh, jeez, I hope we survive this.
All right, Morty, Summer, Beth, Jerry, listen up. I've hacked us into the world of the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. But before you start dancing, we've got a little situation on our hands. Aw, oh, Rick, I thought this was gonna be a fun adventure, not some creepy spider thing. Yeah, seriously, Rick. What did you get us into this time? Hey, I didn't ask for this, okay? We've been trapped in Belma Green's web lair. She wants to turn us into spider minions and keep us in her freaking abdomen forever. Wait, Rick, you mean like Billy and Mandy's friend Velma? Oh god, not the Velma with that big spidery body? Bingo, Jerry, we're dealing with a real nut job here, and she's already described the whole process in nauseating detail. I can't handle this, Rick. I don't want to become some creepy spider creature. Well, we can't just sit around here and wait for her to do it, right? We gotta find a way to escape. Rick, do you have any genius plans in that messed up brain of yours? Of course, Beth, I've modified these neutralizer guns to shoot a concentrated beam of anti-spider venom. One hit, and it should dissolve Velma's webs. Whoa, Rick, you really thought of everything, huh? Yeah, yeah, don't act so surprised, Jerry. We need to be careful though, one wrong move and Velma will squish us into the web. Okay, okay, so we just shoot the webs, escape, and everything's fine, right? Well, we still gotta find a way out of this nightmare dimension. I've got a portal gun, but we need to locate the gravitationally optimal point for a stable exit. Great, so not only do we have to deal with Spider Lady Velma, but we're lost in freaking Billy and Mandy world? We've got this, guys. We're the Smith family, and we're not about to become Spider Minions. Let's kick some spider ass and find that stable exit point. You're right, Beth. It's time to prove ourselves. We may not be the smartest or the bravest, but we're a family, and we can do anything together. Alright, enough with the family rallying. Let's move, people. Stay low, stay fast, and don't let Velma catch you. Meanwhile, they engage in epic thrilling action scenes, dodging webs, fighting off spider minions, and making clever reference after clever reference to Billy and Mandy episodes. Rick, I think I see a rift in the dimension up ahead. Is that our exit point? That's it, Beth, hang on, everyone, we're getting the hell out of here. They all rush towards the rift, narrowly escaping Belma's clutches and entering the portal. We did it, Rick! We actually made it out! Yeah, Morty, we always do. Now. Let's go home and never speak of Spider Lady Velma again. They all cheer and leave the chaotic world of Billy and Mandy behind, finally returning to the safety of their own dimension. Rick and his family learn to never underestimate the strange and twisted worlds they encounter. Together, they overcome seemingly impossible obstacles, showcasing the strength and unity of the Smith family. And as they return home, they can only wonder what bizarre adventure awaits them next. All right, Morty, buckle up. We're diving into the twisted world of the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. Oh geez, Rick, I don't know about this. Can't we just watch some TV like normal people? Morty, you gotta embrace the chaos. Besides, I hear there's a character named Velma Green who's got a thing for light bulbs. Sounds kinky. Ah, uh, seriously? Another one of your weird adventures? Summer, let your father and brother have their fun. We'll just stay back and observe. Maybe learn a thing or two about interdimensional escapades. Yeah, let's just hope we make it out in one piece this time. I still have nightmares from that Cronenberg incident. Scene shifts to the Grim Adventures universe. Rick, Morty, Summer, Beth, and Jerry find themselves trapped in Velma Green's spider web lair. Velma, welcome, delicious specimens. Prepare to become my loyal spider minions for all eternity. I'll start by wrapping each of you tightly in silk. Hold on there, lady. 
We're not some cheap Halloween costumes. We're actual people. Yeah, and I'm not going down without a fight. I'll give you a taste of my Morty Karate. Velma chuckles menacingly as she describes the process of transforming them into spiders. Velma. Oh, the delicious agony. Each of you will feel your human bodies slowly dissolve, giving way to eight spindly legs, and your minds warped into arachnid instincts. Delicious, isn't it? Okay, that's enough description for me. Rick, do your thing and get us out of here. Don't worry, Beth, I've got just the thing. Pulls out a portal gun. Say goodbye to this web of hers. Rick shoots a portal, and the family jumps through, escaping Velma's clutches. Phew, that was intense. I can't believe we almost became spider minions. Can we please go home now? I've had enough supernatural adventures for one lifetime. Fine, fine. But first, a quick detour. I hear the original Grim Reaper is in this dimension. I've always wanted to have a conversation with death. Oh boy, here we go again. Just promise me we won't end up in some existential crisis, okay? Scene fades out as Rick and his family continue their interdimensional escapades, leaving behind a spider web in the wind, barely holding the light bulbs they once held. Alright, Morty, listen up. We've stumbled into the twisted world of the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. I know you loved that show when you were a kid, but buckle up, because things are about to get real dark and real weird. Oh geez, Rick, what do we do now? Well, I say we stick together as a family and find a way out of here. But seriously, Morty, what were you thinking watching this messed up show? Hey, it was funny. In a kinda messed up way. Oh, great. Now we're stuck in a spider web. This just gets better and better. Relax, Dad. This is just another one of Rick's crazy adventures. We'll get out of here, no problem. Velma Green, welcome, Rick and his pathetic entourage. You're all about to become my loyal spider minions forever. Prepare for the metamorphosis. Please, Velma, spare us the details. We'd really prefer not to know what you're planning to do with us. Yeah, Velma, we get it. You're a spider-loving freak. Can we just skip the whole abdomen metamorphosis thing and get straight to kicking your spider ass? Velma Green, how dare you mock me, Rick Sanchez? Prepare to witness the power of my web spinning skills. Rick, what are we gonna do? Morty, grab a stick and start swatting at these spider threads. We're going to make our own way out of here. You want me to do what? Oh god, I'm gonna hurl. Come on, Dad, it's just a little spider web. You can do it. Rick, any brilliant ideas on how to escape this insanity? Trust me, Beth, I've got the situation under control. Just keep your eyes peeled for any Billy or Mandy characters that might lend us a hand. Hey, Rick, look! There's Grim. Maybe he can help us out. Grim, what's up? Dudes, dudettes, and shells from other dimensions. Need a hand? Grim, buddy. We're in a tight spot here. Mind lending us some of your supernatural powers? Grim, no problemo, dudes. Let me just summon my scythe and we'll slice our way out of here. Velma Green, pathetic mortals. I'll spin a web so strong, not even Billy's stupidity can save you now. Sorry, Velma, but your web spinning skills ain't got nothing on Rick Sanchez. Morty, grab my portal gun. Got it, Rick. Where are we going? We're going straight to the heart of this web, Morty. Time to show Velma who the real Spider Queen is. Rick, you're insane. I love it. All right, Rick, let's do this. But can we please get out of here before someone ends up in Velma's abdomen? I really hope that last part wasn't fecal matter. I'm not sure my fragile psyche could handle that. Velma Green, you fools. You can't escape my grip. Oh, we're done here, Velma. 
Morty, Beth, Summer, Jerry, hold on to your hats, because things are about to get real grim around here. The family fights their way through Velma's web, using Rick's gadgets and Grimm's supernatural powers. The battle is intense, chaotic, and filled with sarcastic banter. Alright, everyone, grab onto me. It's portal time. They all manage to escape Velma's clutches, returning back to their own dimension. Wow, Rick, that was insane. I can't believe we made it out alive. Morty, sometimes you just gotta trust in the insane brilliance of your grandfather. Now let's go home and forget this ever happened. The family walks away, leaving behind a bewildered Velma Green and a shattered spiderweb. Velma Green, curse you, Rick Sanchez. I'll have my revenge, one day. The End Alright, Morty, Summer, Beth, Jerry, gather round. I've got an idea for tonight's family gathering. We're gonna play the most mind-blowing game of Uno ever played in the multiverse. Oh, Rick, I don't know if Uno can be mind-blowing. It's just a card game, you know? Morty, Morty, always underestimating the potential of a simple deck of cards. Trust me, this game is gonna be absolutely insane. I'm in. Anything to beat Jerry at something for once. Count me in too. It'll be nice to have some family time, even if it's playing Uno. Uno? Really? I mean, sure, why not? How hard can it be? They all gather around the table, cards spread out, with a game controller placed nearby. Alright, let's get this show on the road. I'll go first. Draw four, Morty. What? Already? Alright, fine. Draw four, Summer. Ha! Huh. Take this, Rick. Draw four. Wait, what? Draw four? I just got here. Ah, uh, draw four, Rick. Nice choice, Jerry. This calls for a little twist. Reverse. Reverse? Seriously, Rick? Alright, reverse it back, Summer. Okay, you asked for it, Morty. Skip. Sorry, not sorry, Jerry. Skip. Oh man, I'm always being skipped. Skip back to you, Rick. Skip? No. I think I'll play this wild card. Pick up the whole deck. Whoa, Rick, that's chaos. I'm out of cards. Uno. What? How did you? Okay, draw four, Rick. Oh no, Rick's close to winning. Draw four, Jerry. Great, more cards for me. Draw four, Summer. All right, time to finish this. Draw eight, Beth. Are you seriously? Ah, fine. Draw 8, Morty. You've left me no choice, Dad. Draw 12, Rick. This is getting out of hand. Draw 12, Summer. I can't take any more cards. Draw 12, Jerry. You? Okay. Draw 20, Beth. What? Fine. Draw 20, Rick. This game is never ending. Draw 24, Summer. Seriously? All right, draw 24, Morty. I see your draw 24, Morty. And I raise you, draw 50. They all stare in disbelief. I can't handle this. I'm out. Good luck, everyone. Beth draws the last card and wins the game. Congratulations, Beth, you've won. And now, as for the loser. The loser, a random Rick and Morty character, is sucked into a vortex. Random character. Oh, God. This dimension. It's filled with nacho cheese, creepy clowns, and Justin Bieber concerts. What have you done? Well, maybe next time you'll think twice before challenging the Smith family to a game of Uno.
title, A Wild Game Night. Character List Rick Morty Summer Beth Jerry Mr. Poopy Butthole Squanchy Bird Person Snowball Mr. Meeseeks Scary Terry Scene The Smith family's living room is filled with laughter and excitement. Rick, Morty, Summer, Beth, and Jerry are setting up a table for a game of Uno. In the background, people are sitting on the ground, waiting for a bus. Suddenly, a cartoon character holding a basket of fruit walks in. Cartoon character? Hey, what the hell is going on here? Oh, great. It's another random ass character interrupting our wild adventures. What do you want, basket of fruit? Basket of fruit, I just wanted to join in on the fun, you old alcoholic douchebag. Whoa, whoa, let's all just calm down. We can play Uno together, right? Morty hands basket of fruit a deck of Uno cards. All right, let's get this epic Uno game started. I'm gonna begin with a yellow too. I'll follow up with a reverse in blue. Yellow skip. Green seven, motherfuckers. As the game continues, characters from the Rick and Morty TV show, Mr. Poopy Butthole, Squanchy, Bird Person, Snowball, Mr. Meeseeks, and Scary Terry enter the room, ready to join the game. Mr. Poopy Butthole, ooh wee, looks like this Uno game's about to get Squanchy. Squanchy, hell yeah, I'm playing a draw four in green. Bird Person, I'll play red five with a Squanch. Snowball, woof woof. I've got a wild card, and I'm choosing blue. The intensity of the game escalates, and tensions rise high. Mr. Me6, Me6 plays a skip in red, look at me. Scary Terry, I'm not scared to play a yellow 9, bitch. After several rounds, only two players are left, Basket of Fruit and Squanchy. Basket of Fruit, prepare to lose, you Squanchy weirdo. I'm playing a draw 2 card in red. Squanchy, oh yeah, well, I'm squanching you with a wild draw 4 in blue. As Basket of Fruit picks up four cards, a wormhole suddenly opens beneath them, sucking them into another dimension. Basket of Fruit, oh, son of a seed. This dimension smells like rotten bananas and pickle juice. The room falls silent as the partygoers stare at the empty space where Basket of Fruit once stood. Morty breaks the silence. Well, I guess that's the end of the game. Let's, ah, uh, never play Uno again, guys. The group nods in agreement, shaken by the intensity of the game. Yeah, Uno can be a real bitch sometimes. Let's go watch some interdimensional cable instead. They all leave the room, leaving behind the echoes of a tortured fruit basket in an unimaginably dreadful dimension. End of episode. Alright, Morty, buckle up. We're about to dive into the craziest dimension hopping adventure yet. Oh, Rick, do we really have to? I mean, last time we ended up in a dimension where alternate versions of us were performing a musical about our lives. Oh, quit your whining, Morty. Adventures aren't always rainbows and butterflies. Just think of it as extreme therapy. Rick, can you please not traumatize our son any further? We're supposed to be having a family day here. Yeah, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Maybe play Monopoly or something. Normal? Ah, Dad, you do realize you're talking to Rick, right? Normal went out the window a long time ago. Fine, fine. If you all want normal, let's play a game. We'll each list the top 10 worst dimensions we visited, and the loser gets plunged into the worst one. Rick, are you serious? You want us to relive all those horrifying experiences? Hey. If you can't handle the heat, Morty, get out of the interdimensional kitchen. All right, fine, let's do this. I'll start. Dimension C-137, where the entire universe was just giant mosquitoes. Dimension F-12, where everyone was a talking pickle. It was confusing. Dimension D-45, where every person looked like a horrifying, glitchy CGI animation. Dimension Z-72, where everyone wait for it, actually enjoyed pineapple on pizza. 
Sick bastards. Celeb 1. Ah, uh, hey guys, I'm Chris Hemsworth. In Dimension E10, every person had a third eye on their forehead. It was interesting. Celeb 2, and I'm Lady Gaga. In Dimension Q89, everything was made out of edible glitter. It was a snacker's paradise. Celeb 2 1, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants, and in Dimension B27, everyone was square. It was a real boxy party, dude. Cartoon 2, and I'm Batman. In Dimension G13, all criminals were, gasp, law-abiding citizens. My entire purpose was rendered useless. Okay, I can't handle this anymore. This game is messed up. Of luck, Morty. Looks like you're the loser. Prepare to be plunged into the worst dimension ever. No, Rick, please. I can't go through that again. Sorry, Morty, rules are rules. Say hello to Dimension X99, where every person talks like Jerry but has the IQ of a rock. Hey, that's not fair. I mean, wait, what? Oh geez, this is gonna be a long day. Alright, listen up, you brainless bunch of schmucks. We've gathered here today to have a party and play a game that's gonna blow your worthless minds. Yeah, Rick, but why are we playing this game in front of a mountain? And why is it red and white? Morty, you ask too many dumb questions. The mountain is red and white because it matches Jerry's embarrassing sweater collection. Now shut up and let's get this shit show started. So, what's the game, Dad? I hope it doesn't involve any of your weird experiments again. Relax, Summer, this game is gonna be totally new and unique. It's called, Dimensional Disaster. We'll each list 10 of the worst dimensions ever, and the loser gets plunged into the most horrifying one. That sounds intense, Dad. Okay, everyone, let's start with our lists. I'll go first. Dimension of never-ending pimple popping. Oh, Beth, that's disgusting. All right, how about the dimension of constant flatulence? You can never escape the stink, Morty. Oh, well, I guess the dimension of non-stop Justin Bieber songs. Aim, Morty, get creative. How about the dimension of killer farts? One whiff and you're done for. Okay, how about the dimension of endless dad jokes? You're trapped with Jerry's terrible sense of humor forever. Good one, Summer. Now, let me throw in the dimension of existential awkwardness. Picture it. Morty, you're trapped in a room full of Jerry clones. Hey, I resent that. Shut it, Jerry. Now, let's bring in some guests for this twisted game. Say hello to SpongeTron and Kim Kardashian. SpongeTron, greetings, land dwellers. I bring you the dimension of incessant sponge baths. Kim Kardashian, hey, guys. How about the dimension of endless selfies? You can never escape your own face. Nice contributions, dummies. Now, let's keep this party rolling. Larry the Lobster, give us a dimension. Larry the Lobster, how about the dimension of non-stop clam bakes? You're trapped in a beach party forever. All right, all right, last one. Shrek, what's your worst dimension? Shrek, well, how about the dimension of forever being stuck in my swamp? Donkey included. Jeez, that sounds horrifying. Okay, the lists are done. Now, let's read them out and see who's gonna get sucked into the worst dimension ever. Dimension of never-ending pimple popping, dimension of constant flatulence, dimension of non-stop Justin Bieber songs. Dimension of endless dad jokes, dimension of existential awkwardness. Dimension of killer farts, dimension of incessant sponge baths. Kim Kardashian, dimension of endless selfies. Dimension of non-stop clam bakes, dimension of forever being stuck in my swamp. Wait, Dad, you forgot about your dimension. Oh, yeah, the dimension of responsible parenting. Phew, that was a close one. So, who's the loser? Who's gonna get plunged into the worst dimension ever? Drum roll, please, and the loser is Jerry. 
What? No, this is unfair. Ah, uh, man. Of luck, Jerry, say goodbye to your dignity. You're about to experience the horror of the dimension of terrible dancing. Oh, no. Not the dimension of terrible dancing. Rick activates a portal, and Jerry reluctantly steps through, disappearing into the portal. Well, that was quite the party, Dad. Yeah, yeah, let's not make a big deal out of it. Now, who's up for some interdimensional karaoke? Count me in. Sure, why the hell not? Rick, Beth, Summer, and Morty start singing, enjoying their bizarre interdimensional party. The End Morty, it's time to throw the most mind-bending party this universe has ever seen. Aw, oh, jeez, Rick! What's the occasion this time? No occasion, Morty. We're just indulging in a bit of interdimensional debauchery. Interrupting, did someone say party? I love parties. Ah, uh, Dad, you're not invited. What? You can't exclude me from my family's activities. All right, all right, settle down, folks. Everyone's invited, even Jerry. Bunch of cartoon characters and celebrities mingle in a pile of green stuff, some sleeping on the ground. Listen up, everyone, we're gonna play a little game. Each of you has to list the 10 worst dimensions you've ever encountered. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? Morty, how else are we gonna find out who's the most messed up, huh? Cartoon Character 1, voiced by SpongeBob's Tom Kenny. Hi. I'm Phil from the dimension where everyone's pants are made out of spaghetti. Real life celebrity one. Randomly generated name. Hey there, I'm Stanley McTurtle. In my worst dimension ever, everyone is constantly chased by rabid squirrels with chainsaws. Cartoon character two, voiced by Tara Strong. Hey, I'm Wendy Wonderwind from the dimension where rainbows taste like broccoli and candy makes you cry. Real life celebrity two, randomly generated name. Yo, I'm Johnny Bravo. The worst dimension I've been to is one where there's a worldwide shortage of hair gel, man. Scene progresses as more characters share their worst dimensions. Alright, everyone, it's time to crown the loser. And the unlucky one is. A dramatic pause ensues. Nervously, uh-oh. Jerry, looks like you're headed to the worst dimension ever. What? No way. What kind of dimension is it? In this dimension, Jerry, you'll be stuck in an eternal line at the DMV with clones of yourself who constantly complain about the waiting time. Oh, come on. That's it? That's the worst you got? Well, considering the alternative was being overrun by vampire squirrels, I'd say you got off easy, Jerry. Grudgingly, fine, whatever. Can we finally wrap up this crazy adventure now? Sure thing, Jer, everybody. Let's party like it's the end of the multiverse. They all dance and celebrate while Jerry grumbles in a corner. The episode concludes with a chaotic dance party and the characters embracing the absurdity of their existence. Alright, Morty, listen up. I've created a game that's gonna blow your tiny mind. It's called Dimension Disaster, and it's the hippest thing in the multiverse right now. Jeez, Rick, do we really need another insane invention? Remember when you made that butt enhancer 3000? Morty, that was a scientific breakthrough. But forget that, we've got guests coming. Beth, Jerry, get your boring asses in here. What is it now, Rick? I'm trying to finish my dissertation on quantum cellular biology. Blah, blah, science schmeans. 
we're gonna have a party and play a game. Involves dimensions and all that jazz. A game? I'm in. I was just reading about the latest dimension reality theories. Fascinating stuff, really. Suddenly, the door bursts open and various cartoon characters and celebrities walk in. Whoa, who are these guys? Ordy, meet SpongeBob SquarePants, master of the pineapple dimension, and Katy Perry, conqueror of the Candyland dimension. SpongeBob, hiya, fellas. I'm ready to dive into some crazy ass dimensions. Katy Perry, oh, I'm so thrilled to be here. I've always wanted to explore dimensions, especially if they're filled with cotton candy clouds. All right, everyone, grab a seat. We're gonna take turns listing the 10 worst dimensions we can come up with. But beware, because the loser gets plunged into the dimension of ultimate lameness. Cartoon character number one. Hi, I'm Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. And let me tell you, the worst dimension is one where all technology is powered by broccoli. Cartoon character number two. I'm Peter Griffin, and the worst dimension is where everyone speaks like Jar Jar Binks. Mesa can't handle it. Celebrity number one. Hi, it's me, Oprah. The worst dimension is where you get a million dollars, but you can only spend it on expired yogurt. Ah, uh, Rick, this is getting weird. Oh, just wait, Morty. It's about to get even weirder. Cartoon character number three. Hi, it's Stewie Griffin. The worst dimension is one where everyone's IQ is higher than mine, which is statistically improbable. Celebrity number two. Hey, it's Nicolas Cage. The worst dimension is one where every movie ever made stars only Nicolas Cage. It's a cage apocalypse. Laughter fills the room as they continue with their ridiculous dimensions. All right, we've heard enough. The winner is. Everyone leans in, anticipating the decision. Lady Perry, congrats. You have the honor of not being sent to the worst dimension ever. SpongeBob gets sucked into a vortex, disappearing into thin air. Whoa, can we bring SpongeBob back? Ordy, that dimension is so bad. Even I don't want to mess with it. Let's just be thankful it wasn't one of us. This is truly fascinating. I think I should write a research paper on the psychological effects of fictional characters experiencing dimensions of doom. Honey, can we just pretend this never happened? I've had enough weirdness for one day. Come on, Jerry, embrace the chaos. There's a whole multiverse out there waiting to be explored. Dimensions that are both mind-blowing and mind-melting. Morty stares at the screen, contemplating the bizarre adventure they just had. You know what, Rick? I'm starting to realize that dimensions aren't just about crazy games, but also about expanding our understanding of reality in ourselves. Morty, don't get all deep on me now. We still have a party to enjoy. The group laughs and continues partying, leaving the absurd dimensions behind for the night. Hey Morty, you ready for the most mind-bending game night ever? Oh, yeah, Rick. But, ah, uh, why Uno? Isn't it just a card game? Morty, you simpleton, Uno is not just a card game. It's an interdimensional battle for dominance, where every card played has cosmic implications. Seriously, guys? Uno? Can't we play something cooler, like D&D or at least Cards Against Humanity? Summer, trust me. Uno has more twists and turns than your love life. And I've heard some interesting rumors about that. Wait, who else are we inviting, Rick? Well, Morty, we got Evil Morty, Cronenberg Morty, and Cop Morty. And of course, the indispensable characters from the Citadel of Ricks. Cop alright, guys, let's do this. I play a skip card. Uno? Nice one, Cop Morty. But never forget. Your alternate versions probably still think you're a pathetic rookie. Evil I play a reverse card. Uno? Oh, Evil Morty, so predictable. Just like your vengeful plans. Cronenberg I play a draw four card. Uno? Jeez, Cronenberg Morty, that's brutal. Who hurt you? Morty, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Speaking of which, 
I play a wild card. Red. Uno. Dad, are you colorblind or just trying to mess with us? Who knows, Summer. My intelligence transcends the visible spectrum. Now pay attention to my genius gameplay. Evil, I play a skip card. Uno. Cop, I play a draw two card. Uno. Cronenberg, I play a reverse card. Uno. I play a wild card. Yellow. Uno. I play a draw four card. Uno. Morty, draw six cards. Ooh, sorry, buddy. You might end up like Cop Morty's attempt at being a detective. A complete failure. Cop, I resent that. Rick. And I play a reverse card. Uno. Evil, I play a skip card. Uno. Cronenberg, I play a draw four card. Uno. I play a wild card. Blue. Uno. I play a skip card. Uno. I play a reverse card. Uno. I play a draw two card. Uno. Evil, I play a draw four card. Uno. What? Morty. Draw eight cards. I didn't see that coming. Evil Morty. Cronenberg, I play a skip card. Uno. I play a reverse card. Uno. I play a draw two card. Uno. I play a wild card. Green. Uno. Evil, I play a draw four card. Uno. Art. Morty. Draw twelve cards. Evil Morty, you sneaky little bastard. Cronenberg, I play a skip card. Uno. Cop, I play a draw two card. Uno. I play a reverse card. Uno. I play a wild card. Yellow. Uno. Evil, I play a skip card. Uno. Morty, you're up. I play a wild draw four card. Blue. Uno. No way. Morty, you magnificent son of a bitch. Uno, you win. Evil, this can't be. I refuse to be plunged into the worst dimension ever. Tough luck, evil Morty. Welcome to the dimension of infinite Jerry's and reality TV. Evil, no. This dimension is a never-ending torment. The cringe. Cronenberg, you'll learn to enjoy it, evil Morty. We all did. Cop, just remember, evil Morty, it could always be worse. You could be a cop, Morty. Evil, kill me now. They all laugh maniacally as evil Morty laments his eternal fate. Alright Morty, get ready for the most intense game of Uno you've ever played. We're gonna make these other Ricks and Mortys look like amateurs. Oh, I don't know, Rick. Last time we played Uno, you turned me into a pickle and left me there for days. Yeah, and it was hilarious. But don't worry, Morty, this time it's gonna be different. Hey guys, what's going on? Is there a new Uno champion in town? Yeah, Dad, don't embarrass yourself again. We've invited some serious players this time. Alright, let the games begin. Shuffles cards. Draw skip. You can't skip me, Morty. I'm your mother. Death, we're playing by the rules here. Take another card. Fine, draw four. Laughs looks like someone's getting a taste of their own medicine. Oh, please, Jerry. You're barely a threat in this game. Reverse. Ha! Huh, take that, Dad. Draws draw two. Mr. Me seeks, existence is pain. Asterisk draws two cards, asterisk. All right, clone family, brace yourselves. Wild card, I call yellow. Green. Give me that card, Morty. Don't challenge my authority. Sorry, Rick. Draw four, wild card. Our person, squanch, try, wild card. This is getting out of hand. Can I just play a number card? Fine, Jerry, go ahead. Ruin the fun. Uno. Oh no, you don't, Jerry. Draw two. Draw two. Draw two. Draw two. Wild card, yellow. Reverse. Mr. Poopy Butthole. Who we? I'm getting anxious just watching this game. And for the grand finale, draw 20, wild card. Everyone, what? Uno. And boom goes the dynamite. Oh no, this isn't fair. 
Clone, I hate this dimension. It smells like bird poop and sadness. Well, welcome to the worst dimension ever, losers. Enjoy your stay. You know, Rick, sometimes I think you might be a little too competitive. Shut up, Morty. I'm always right and I'll prove it in every dimension.
Morty, Morty, I've developed a device that can communicate with alternate dimensions. Aw oh, jeez, Rick, what do we need that for? Well, Morty, I've received word that there's a tribe of cannibalistic aliens planning to invade Earth. We need to gather intel and stop them before they make us their next meal. W what? Cannibalistic aliens? Rick, I don't know if I can handle that. Relax, Morty, I've got a plan. We'll disguise ourselves as aliens and infiltrate their tribe. That way, they won't suspect a thing. I don't know, Rick. This sounds really dangerous. Morty, when have we ever played it safe? Now, put on this wig and these sunglasses. We're going incognito. What are you two up to? Oh, just a little harmless interdimensional adventure, Beth. Nothing for you to worry your pretty little head about. Seriously, Dad? Can't you two go one day without causing intergalactic chaos? Oh, Summer, always the voice of reason. You know, I could use a hand here. Join your father and Morty in their life-threatening escapade, won't you? Fine, but only because I'm bored and this seems more interesting than that prenatal massage my mom dragged me to last week. Excellent. Now, let's activate the alien disguise device and prepare for liftoff. We've got a tribe of flesh-eating creatures to bamboozle. Wait, is it safe to just mess with aliens like that? What if they're even crazier than you, Rick? Morty, if anyone knows crazy, it's me. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? They might worship us as gods. Garfield, wearing sunglasses. Hey, Odie, check this out. Those humans think they can pull off being aliens. Let's mess with them. Odie, also wearing sunglasses. Yeah, Garfield. This is gonna be hilarious. Pass me my cell phone, I want to record everything. Alright, we're landing. Remember, Morty, act cool and confident. We are alien gods, after all. Got it, Rick. I'm ready to rock this. Confident Morty, here I come. Be careful, you guys. Yeah, don't let the cannibals eat you for breakfast. No promises, Beth. Now, let Operation Alien Casanova begin. Hey there, fellow aliens. Mind if we join your shindig? We come in peace and all that jazz. Garfield. Oh, look, Odie. Alien Casanova has arrived to sweep us off our paws. Odie. Haha, this is gold. Let's have some fun with them. Morty, nervously, um, is there a leader of this tribe we could speak to? We have a proposition from our home planet. Garfield, slyly, oh, you caught our attention, smooth-talking Morty. Lead the way. Odie. Yeah, we're all ears, baby. Morty, you're doing great. Now, just remember, our lives depend on you seducing the leader of this cannibalistic tribe. What? Rick, you never mentioned that part. Surprise. Now go get your alien Romeo on, Morty. All right, here goes nothing. Scene fades into chaos as Morty desperately tries to impress the alien leader, while Garfield and Odie laugh hysterically in the background. Morty, grab that poster with the punk punk band with the zombie theme on its back cover. We need it for the party. Ah, uh, why do we need a poster for a punk punk band? Morty, it's a punk punk band with a zombie theme. It's edgy, it's rebellious, it's totally cool. Plus, it's got a catchy caption. Zombies rock, brains don't. I guess that's kinda cool. So, are we inviting Jerry? Eeft, Jerry? No way. He's the king of incompetence. We want this party to be epic, Morty. But Rick, he's my dad. Can't we give him a chance? Fine, Morty. But if he messes up, I'm calling out his every stupid move. At the party. Alright, Morty, pass out the Uno cards. This is going to be the most dramatic, intense, epic game of Uno ever played. Multiple Ricks and Mortys from different dimensions arrive. Other dimension, hey, Rick, mind if we join in the fun? Sure. Why not? Just remember, this is for serious UNO players only. Other dimension I've been training for this moment my entire life. As the game progresses, I play a reverse card, 
and now it's Morty's turn. Their dimension alright. I play a draw 4 card and challenge Morty to prove he can handle it. Oh geez, I'm not sure I can handle that many cards. As the game nears its conclusion. I play a skip card on Rick's turn. Well played, Morty, but I'm not going down without a fight. I play a wild card and change the color to green. As the final moments unfold. I play a draw 2 card on Rick's turn. Seriously, Jerry, you couldn't have played that earlier? Oh, sorry, I thought it would be a good move. Well, congratulations, Jerry. You just lost and now you're getting plunged into the worst dimension ever. No, not the worst dimension. It's full of slime, tentacles, and never-ending bad luck. Oh, quit your whining, Jerry. It's your own fault for not thinking. Maybe you'll learn something from this. But I just wanted to have some fun. Fun? This is Uno, Jerry. Uno is serious business. Now, let's get back to the game. Who's up next? Int. Rick's living room, night. Rick and Morty are sitting at a table covered in Uno cards and snacks. The room is lit with a vibrant blue light, casting an eerie glow. The demon, Glorzo, perches on Rick's shoulder. Alright, Morty, let's start this shish asterisk tea show of a game. Uno, baby. Ah, uh, Rick, do we really need Glorzo here? T-L-O-R-Z-O. -E Growing, Glorzo always wants to be part of the chaos. Glorzo, you don't have hands. How the hell are you gonna play? G-L-O-R-Z-O, trust Glorzo, Rick. Glorzo will find a way. Int. Rick's living room, later. Mr. Meeseeks and Scary Terry have joined the game. Mr. Meeseeks wears a top hat while Scary Terry flicks his razor-sharp claws. Alright, it's my turn. I play a blue five and, aw, oh, sorry Rick, draw two. Damn it, Morty, and for my turn, I'll play a green reverse. G-L-O-R-Z-O, Glorzo throws a wild card. Blue. Morty draws two cards, then places a blue four on the stack. Mr. Meeseeks, ooh la la. Mr. Meeseeks jumps in with a yellow skip. All right, Meeseeks, how about I give you a reason to exist? Draw four, you blue bastard. Mr. Meeseeks draws four cards, grumbling under his breath. Scary Terry. You think you're scary, Rick? Check out Scary Terry's red skip. Int. Rick's living room, a few rounds later. Jerry and Squanchy have joined the game. Jerry fidgets nervously while Squanchy chugs down some alien liquor. I'm unleashing the big guns, guys! Yellow reverse! Hesitant. Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, play a yellow too, I guess? Oh, Jerry, you really outdid yourself this time. Draw four, buddy. Jerry reluctantly picks up four cards, sulking. Squanchy, Squanchy plays a yellow nine. Squanchy is getting swifty. Mr. Meeseeks, frustrated, damn it, Morty. Draw four. Morty draws four cards, grumbling about his bad luck. Int. Rick's living room, final round. Morty, Rick, Jerry, and Squanchy all have one card left. The tension is palpable. Smirking. It's showtime, Morty. Green 7, bitch. Determined. I'm ready for this, Rick. Green reverse. Nervously. Um, I'll just, uh, play a green one, I guess. Squanchy. Squanchy throws a wild card. Red. Morty draws four cards, his face falling in defeat. No, not again. Laughing, Morty, you really suck at this game. Guess that means you're the loser. Despairingly, no, Rick. Please don't send me to the dimension of suffering. Please, not the bees and the dismemberment. As Morty whimpers, the ground beneath him begins to crack open, 
and he is sucked into a swirling vortex of torment. Fade out. Alright Morty, buckle up for another mind-bending adventure. Ah, oh, Rick, I don't know about this one. Roasting John Arbuckle in a rhyming rap battle? It feels a bit strange. Morty, strange is our middle name. We're about to dive into the Garfield comic and show that lasagna-loving loser who's boss. Seriously? Are we that desperate for entertainment? Fine, count me in. Let's roast that pathetic excuse for a comic character. Uh. Guys, maybe we should think about the consequences? I mean, what if we upset the entire Garfield universe? Dad, for once, just stay out of it. We're taking charge here. It's time to show John Arbuckle what he's truly like. Alright, here we are, inside the Garfield comic. Time to drop some sick rhymes on John. Hey John, you think you're so slick with your pathetic hairdo? Well, we're here to tell you that your fashion sense is a joke too. John. What? Who are you guys? We're the ones who are gonna rip you to shreds. Your art style sucks, your cat is lazy, and your love life is in threads. John, you're a loser in every single way. You're awkward, desperate, and your life is just a cliché. John, this isn't fair. You're just making fun of me. Oh, John, get a grip. Your existence is a perpetual meme. It's time for you to realize just how pathetic you seem. Morty, Summer, hit him with more. John, you can't even keep a girl interested. Your attempts at humor are outdated and arrested. Your comic strip's a relic from the past, John. Get with the times or your relevance will be gone. John, stop, stop this right now. The truth hurts, doesn't it, John? Maybe it's time for you to find a new occupation. Look at him, guys. It seems we've hit a nerve. Let's finish this off, make sure he gets what he deserves. All right, John, time for your punishment. Get ready to take a plunge into the pit of sweaty sumo wrestlers forever. John, number, I can't stand the stench. Of luck, John. Maybe next time you'll think twice before stepping into our universe. Well, that was intense. Yeah, I'm not sure if we went too far there. I told you guys this was a bad idea. Oh, shut up, Jerry. Let's go home and pretend this never happened. Alright, Morty, we got a new adventure on our hands. Get ready to dive into the Garfield comic. Aw oh, jeez, Rick, are we gonna fight Garfield? He's always scratching and biting. Aw, oh, Morty, we gotta roast that loser John Arbuckle. He's been asking for it with his lame jokes and bad fashion sense. Hey, guys, can I roast him too? I mean, it's about time someone shut him up. Don't worry, Jerry, you can join in. We'll teach John Arbuckle a lesson he won't forget. Yeah, let's show him no one messes with the Smith family. They all jump into the comic and find themselves in John Arbuckle's living room. Time to show John Arbuckle some real humor. We're gonna roast him in a rap battle. Wait, what? I thought you said we were gonna roast him like chicken. No, Morty, not literally roast him. We're gonna insult him with sick rhymes, Morty. Ah. Uh. Guys, I'm not really good at rapping. Can I just bake him a pie instead? Jerry, this is not about pies. It's about putting John Arbuckle in his place. Let's get this rap battle started. The Smith family and Rick face John Arbuckle in the rap battle. John Arbuckle! Hey, losers, what brings you to my comic strip? Prepare to be roasted by the great John Arbuckle! Oh please, John, your fashion sense is so bad. Even Garfield thinks you're a slob. 
Yeah, and your jokes are so lame, you make dad look like a stand-up comedian. You think you're so cool with your lasagna obsession, but you're just a pathetic loser, John. Your love life is a joke. No wonder Liz constantly rejects you. I mean, look at yourself. You think you're the star, but you're just a sidekick to a lazy cat. A complete waste of space. The rap battle escalates into an all-out war of insults and witty comebacks. The Smith family and Rick dominate the battle, leaving John Arbuckle speechless. John Arbuckle! This isn't fair! You can't just come into my comic strip and insult me like this! I demand justice! Looks like someone can't handle the heat. Well, John, justice is about to be served. A massive pit opens up beneath John Arbuckle's feet, revealing a horde of stanky, sweaty, obese sumo wrestlers. John Arbuckle! What the hell is this? You can't do this to me! Oh, we can, and we just did. Enjoy your new friends, John. The sumo wrestlers engulf John Arbuckle, who screams in horror. John Arbuckle! No! Help! These sweaty giants are smothering me! It smells like three-week-old gym socks! As John Arbuckle continues to complain in extreme detail, the Smith family and Rick laugh triumphantly. Well, I think we've taught John Arbuckle a lesson he'll never forget. Yeah! Maybe now he'll think twice before being a jerk on the internet. I can't believe we roasted him so hard he ended up in a pit full of sumo wrestlers. Classic. Yeah, this adventure was crazy, Rick. But, hey, at least we know Garfield won't bother us anymore. That's right, Morty. Another successful mission completed. Let's go home. They all step back into their own reality, leaving John Arbuckle to his fateful destiny. Morty, Jerry, Beth, Summer, I found a portal leading to the Garfield comic. Oh geez, Rick, are we really going into a cartoon? I don't know, but I hope they have lasagna. Focus, Jerry. We're not here for food, we're here to roast Garfield. Are we seriously gonna roast a cartoon cat? This is gonna be like shooting fish in a barrel. Trust me, Summer, this won't be your typical roast battle. Garfield's got some serious internet sass. But Rick, what if we can't beat him at his own game? Relax, Morty. I've been practicing my one-liners and one-liners, I'm ready. Let's just get this over with. Garfield, prepare to be roasted. Garfield, oh great, more mortals stepping into my world. You look like a bunch of rejects from Family Guy. Please, Garfield, your sense of humor is as bland as Odie's kibble. Yeah, and your lasagna addiction is just a cry for help. You fat feline, your only talent is sleeping. Garfield, you're so lazy, you make a sloth look like an Olympic athlete. Garfield, is that all you got? I've seen more creativity in a Monday strip. Oh, you want creativity? How about the time you tried to mail Nermal to Abu Dhabi? And what's with your obsession with kicking Odie off the table? You're just a bully, Garfield. You're so grumpy, Garfield. I bet Pookie is imaginary just to avoid spending time with you. Garfield, your ego is bigger than your waistline. You're just compensating for being a glorified house cat. You know what? We don't need to roast you, Garfield. Your life is already a punchline. Garfield, enough. I've had it up to here with you self-righteous jokes. Send me back to my world. Fine, but we have one last surprise for you, Garfield. Prepare to meet your punishment, Garfield. Yeah, we're sending you straight into a pit filled with stanky, Sweaty, obese, hulking, balding sumo wrestlers. Forever. Garfield, you can't do this to me. I demand a recount of lasagna in my favor. Too late, Garfield. Enjoy your new companions. They eat Mondays for breakfast. Garfield, no, Mondays are my thing. Wait, come back. Well, that went better than expected. Yeah, we really showed that cat who's boss. I guess when it comes to roasting, we're the kings. And I'm glad I finally had a chance to shine. Let's go, everyone.
we've got a bunch of adventures waiting for us in other comic strips. And Morty, don't forget to bring back a souvenir from the comic shop this time. Oh, jeez, Rick. You always know how to ruin a good moment. Title, The Epic Uno Game Night Characters 1. Rick 2. Morty 3. Summer 4. Jerry 5. Beth Scene, Smith Residence Living Room, transformed into an epic game night setup with a pink and red background. Alright, Morty, time to show these idiots how to play Uno the Dimension Spanning Way. Ah, uh, Rick, why do we need all these quantum cards? Isn't regular Uno fine? Shut up, Morty. We're taking this game to a whole new level. Quantum Uno, get ready. Incident, the game begins. All right, let's do this. Green seven. Blue reverse. Red skip. Draw two, yellow. Green reverse. Progression. The game escalates quickly. Draw four, red. Gasping. You monster, Beth. Burps. Draw four, blue. Draw four, green. Nervously, draw four, yellow. Grumbling, I can't believe I have to keep drawing cards. Smirking. That's what you get, Morty, for doubting my Uno skills. Morty's final chance to turn the game around. Determined, yellow reverse. Laughing, oh, Morty, it's already too late for a comeback. Smirking, Morty, hit him with a wild draw four, pink. Rick, I don't even have a wild draw four. Morty's defeat and the unexpected punishment. Chuckles. Morty, Morty, always forgetting the basics. Looks like you lost, kiddo. So, what's the punishment, Rick? Evil grin. Since Morty loves dimensions so much, I'll send him to the worst one there is. Panicking. Wait, Rick, I didn't sign up for this. Rick opens a portal, and Morty is sucked into a dimension of pure misery filled with screaming clown demons and never-ending tax audits. Screaming? No! This place is a nightmare! The clown demons won't stop! Please, get me out of here! Chuckles. Oops, I guess I accidentally sent him to the dimension where suffering is a commodity. My bad. Whispering. Holy crap, Rick, that punishment is too cruel. Dad, you really went too far with this one. Sighs. Rick, can't you just bring Morty back? It's unbearable to hear his wails of agony. Rolls his eyes. Fine, fine. Let's get him out of there. But he's still a loser for falling for the oldest trick in the book. And so, Rick corrects his mistake and brings Morty back from the dimension of pure misery, ending the dramatic and intense game of Uno. But the memory of that terrible dimension lingers, forever etched in their minds. The lesson? Never underestimate the power of a game night gone wild. Alright, Morty, listen up, we're going on another mind-bending adventure today. Strap in, Morty. Oh, okay, Rick. What's the deal this time? We're diving into a Garfield comic, Morty. We've got to roast that smug little Nermal in a rhyming rap battle. Wait, what? Roasting a cat? Isn't that a little cruel? Morty, have you seen the way that little furball acts on the internet? It's payback time. What are you two up to now? Playing Monopoly again? Yeah, Summer and I want in on the fun too. Fine, Jerry, you can come along. But don't mess this up. We've got a reputation to uphold. Reputation? Dad's barely capable of filling up the car's gas tank. 
Hey! I can do more than that, Summer. Meanwhile, in the Garfield comic. Oh, oh, how cute. The humans think they can outrun me. Prepare to be amazed by the internet's favorite feline. Oh, please, Nermal. Your rhymes are about as relevant as a fax machine. You think you're tough, Nermal? Your cuteness is just a smokescreen. Time for you to face reality, you little bean. Nermal, Nermal, you're so small. So insignificant, you're barely a doll. Your popularity is superficial, Nermal. You're just a meme for the masses. Your fame won't last, so don't get too comfortable on your decorative glasses. Nermal, your antics just make us yawn. You're nothing more than Garfield's pawn. Nermal, this is outrageous. I demand a rematch. You wouldn't dare send me to the pits of sweaty sumo wrestlers. It's inhumane. Inhumane? Please. It's your just desserts, Nermal. Besides, they're only a little sweaty. Yeah, and they're not that obese either. It's not like you haven't seen worse on the internet. Nermal, this is the worst punishment ever. I'll be surrounded by balding sumo wrestlers forever. They'll keep whispering, lasagna, in my ears. Well, maybe next time, Nermal, you'll think twice before behaving the way you do online. Yeah, maybe you'll learn a lesson and change your internet persona. Or maybe you'll just stay in the pits forever and save us from his obnoxious presence. Nermal plunges into the pit of sumo wrestlers, disappearing into their greasy folds. Another successful adventure, Morty. And another annoying internet sensation taken care of. Yeah, I guess. But wasn't it a little harsh? Morty, harsh is my middle name. Now let's grab some Szechuan sauce on the way home, my little sidekick. I don't think that's part of the plan, Rick. Well, it is now, Morty. It is now. Alright Morty, we've got ourselves another mind-bending adventure. This time, we're diving into the twisted world of Garfield. Garfield? You mean that lazy, lasagna-loving, orange tabby? That's right, Morty. But this time, Garfield will face the wrath of our rap battle skills. We're gonna roast that fat cat so hard, he'll wish he never existed. Roasting Garfield? Count me in. I've always wanted to show off my witty side. Oh, Jerry, are you sure you can handle this? Roasting Garfield takes a special kind of savagery. Yeah, Dad, it's gonna be intense. Are you prepared to join the big leagues? Of course. I once roasted a hot dog so hard, it went up in flames. I've got this. All right, everyone, let's dive into the Garfield comic and show that cat who's boss. They enter the Garfield comic and find themselves surrounded by Lasagna Mountains and Odie. Garfield's sidekick, playing the accordion. Rick, this place is even more bizarre than I expected. That's the power of cartoons, Morty. Now, let's find Garfield and get this rap battle started. They spot Garfield lounging on a giant pillow, surrounded by fawning admirers. Hey, Garfield, we've come to challenge you to a rap battle. Garfield, you think you can outrap me, you bunch of losers? Prepare to get shredded like lasagna. Morty steps forward, ready to spit some fire. Garfield, you're fat and lazy, always craving for food. But when it comes to rap battles, you'll be nothing but screwed. Your jokes are stale, your humor's weak. It's time for you to learn that we're not so meek. Garfield's fans gasp at Morty's savage rap. Nice one, Morty. Show that cat who's boss. Yeah, Garfield, your rhymes are whack. We're about to put you on the snack attack. You think lasagna's cool, you think it's neat. But when it comes to rap battles, you're obsolete. Garfield, this is impossible. No one can roast me like this. Rick steps forward, ready to deliver the final blow. Garfield, your laziness is extreme. You're a cat that's just living the meme. You're full of grumpy and devoid of charm. It's time for you to face the rap battle alarm. 
Garfield trembles as Rick's words hit him hard. Garfield, fine, I admit defeat, but please, spare me the Sumeruses. Rick, Morty, Jerry, Beth, and Summer smirk as Garfield is thrown into a pit filled with smelly sumo wrestlers. Garfield, no, I can't take this, they're sweaty rolls of fat. They all laugh as they walk away, leaving Garfield to his sweaty fate. Mission accomplished, another day, another victory. Yeah, but next time, can we go somewhere that doesn't involve smelly sumo wrestlers? Morty, if you want epic adventures, you gotta embrace the stank. They all disappear into a portal, laughing and ready for their next crazy adventure. Alright Morty, buckle up for another wacky adventure. Today, we're diving into the Garfield comic strip. Jeez, Rick, can't we just have a normal day for once? Normal? Ha, huh. where's the fun in that, Morty? Prepare yourself for the ultimate roast battle with Garfield. Roast battle? Oh, count me out. I don't need more humiliation in my life. Oh come on, Jerry. It'll be a bonding experience. Plus, you could use a little self-deprecating humor. Yeah, Dad, don't be such a buzzkill. Let's roast that lasagna-loving cat. Scene transition. Garfield, what are you all doing in my comic strip? And who's going to roast me? Bring it on. All right, Garfield. Your belly's so big, it makes the Grand Canyon look like a crack in the sidewalk. You're so lazy, Garfield. You make a sloth look like an Olympic athlete. Garfield, you're so grumpy, even the Grinch thinks you need therapy. Garfield, you're so balding, Rogaine sends you personalized Christmas cards. Garfield, you're so washed up, even Odie wouldn't fetch you a bone. Garfield, growling, how dare you insult me, you little pests. Scene transition. Hold on, Morty, things are getting intense, Garfield just called upon an army of lasagna-loving sumo wrestlers. Oh jeez, Rick! How are we gonna defeat them? Simple, Morty, we'll use our incredible wit and agility, and maybe some conveniently hidden gadgets. Scene transition. We did it. We roasted Garfield and defeated his army of sumo wrestlers. Yeah, take that, Garfield. You're stuck with those sweaty, stanky wrestlers forever. Garfield, this is an outrage. I demand you release me immediately. Sorry, Garfield, but you brought this upon yourself. Maybe next time you'll think twice before messing with us. Scene transition. Well, that was an unexpected adventure. I can't believe we roasted Garfield and fought off a bunch of sumo wrestlers. Yeah, it was crazy, Dad. But hey, we all survived, right? That's right. And I think deep down, Garfield might have learned a valuable lesson about messing with others. Lesson? No, Morty. Garfield's probably just plotting his revenge. But that's a problem for another day. Scene transition. So, what's the next adventure, Rick? Are we finally going to have a normal day? Normal? Ha, oh, that's not really our style, is it? Now let's get ready for some more mind-bending escapades, folks. The screen fades out as the music swells, leaving us eagerly anticipating the next adventure. Alright Morty, buckle up because we're about to dive into some seriously messed up shit. Ah, uh, Rick, what are we doing? And why are we going black and white? Did we enter some kind of funky time portal? No Morty, we're entering the Garfield comic. We're gonna roast that smug little shit Nermal on his appearance in a rap battle. Seriously, Rick? A rap battle? Can't we just, you know, talk to him like normal people? Morty, 
you can't reason with cats, especially ones that have more sass than the entire internet combined. Plus, it'll be fun. Are we really doing this? I mean, I don't see what's so bad about Nermal. He's just a harmless little kitten. Oh, Jerry, don't be so naive. Nermal represents everything that's wrong with the world. We need to show him who's boss. Yeah, Dad, we're about to drop some rhymes so sick, even Nermal won't be able to handle it. All right, let's do this. Morty, you start. All right, Nermal, when it comes to looks, you're just plain tragic. Your face is a mess, like you fell into a pile of plastic surgery magic. Nermal, your fur is all groomed, so pristine. But it can't hide the fact that you're a meme machine. Nermal, I hate to break it to you, but you're about as cool as canned tuna. Your cuteness might be a hit online, but in the real world, you're just a total klutz. Hey Nermal, your attitude is as small as your paws. I'd say you're the worst, but even that's too generous of a cause. Nermal, no, how dare you talk to me like that? I demand respect. Oh, shut up, Nermal. No one cares about your demands. Now, take a look over there. They all turned to see a pit full of stanky, sweaty, obese, hulking, balding sumo wrestlers. No, no, not the wrestlers. Anything but that. They smell like sweat socks and rotten cheeseburgers. Well, Nermal, that's your punishment for being a little shit. Enjoy your forever stench. Rick, that was intense. I don't think we should have done that. Ordy, I can't be bothered with your moral quandaries. Let's just go home and forget about this mess. They all leave the Garfield comic, leaving Nermal to his smelly fate. Well, that was certainly an adventure. Yeah, and we totally owned Nermal in that rap battle. I bet he won't be so snarky next time. Can we just never speak of this again? I feel scarred for life. Don't worry, Jerry, we'll have bigger problems to deal with soon enough. But for now, let's go get some McDonald's. They all leave the scene, leaving behind a cloud of bizarre and absurd memories. Alright, Morty, buckle up because we're about to go on a ridiculously dysfunctional adventure. Oh jeez, Rick, what kind of messed up escapade are we going on this time? Rick, I hope it's something that won't traumatize our poor son for life. Don't worry, Beth, this one's gonna be a real blast. We're going inside the Garfield comic. The Garfield comic? Seriously? Can't we just go to a normal place for once? Yeah, Dad. I'm pretty sure nobody wants to see lasagna loving cats and talking dogs. Oh, pipe down, Summer. We're going in, whether you like it or not. Um, Rick, why exactly are we going to the Garfield comic? What's the plan here? Well, Morty, we're going to have a little fun with that annoying little Nermal character. Nermal? The cute little kitten that always annoys Garfield? Rick, don't you think that's a bit mean-spirited? Mean-spirited, please, Beth, it's all in good fun. We're gonna give Nermal a taste of his own medicine. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna challenge him to a rhyming rap battle. A rap battle? Seriously, Rick? Trust me, Morty, this is gonna be epic. We're gonna roast Nermal so hard, he'll wish he never set foot in the comic strip. Well, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but I guess it's worth a shot. Yeah, count me out, Rick. I'll just stay out here and watch from a safe distance. Suit yourself, Jerry. All right, everyone, get ready. We're about to enter the Garfield comic strip. They all step into the comic strip and find themselves facing Nermal. Nermal, well, 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 if it isn't the B-team from another dimension. What's your plan, Moses? A cheesy rap battle. That's right, Nermal. We're here to show you who's boss. Now, prepare to be completely annihilated. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure about this? Morty, have a little faith in our rap skills. Now, let's do this.
The rap battle begins, with each member of the Smith family taking turns roasting Nermal. Nermal, you're such a pest, it's a wonder you don't make Garfield depressed. Your whiskers are weak, your fur is a mess. Go back to being irrelevant, I guess. Nermal, oh Nermal, you act so smug. But compared to Garfield, you're just a mug. You're small and annoying, it's easy to see. You're the reason Garfield has no sanity. Nermal, stop it, this isn't fair, I demand justice. Justice, sorry, Nermal, but life ain't fair. Now, prepare for your punishment. Rick activates a portal, and Nermal is plunged into a pit full of stanky, sweaty, obese, hulking, balding sumo wrestlers. Nermal, no, this is cruel and unusual. The smell alone is unbearable. Well, Nermal, I guess you finally got what you deserve. That was pretty intense. Rick, did we take it too far? Aw, oh, Summer, it's all in good banter. Besides, Nermal will be just fine down there. It builds character. I still can't believe we did that. It feels kinda wrong. Let's just hope Garfield doesn't find out about this. Yeah, the last thing we need is another cat-related adventure. Well, guys, another successful and delightfully messed up adventure complete. Now, who's up for some interdimensional pizza? They all leave the Garfield comic strip, ready for their next wild and unpredictable adventure. Alright, Morty, buckle up for another mind-bending adventure. Today we're diving into the world of Garfield, where we'll show that lazy cat who's boss. Ah, uh, Rick, are you sure this is a good idea? I mean, Garfield's just a cartoon character. He's harmless, right? Harmless, Morty, you clearly haven't read between the lines of those lazy Garfield comics. That cat's got a dark side, Morty. He needs to be roasted. Whining, roasted? Are you serious, Rick? Can't we just, ah, uh, have a nice conversation with him or something? Maybe he's just misunderstood? Misunderstood? Jerry, you have no idea what you're talking about. We're going in guns blazing, ready to tear Garfield a new one. Boys, boys, calm down. Can't we find a more peaceful way to resolve this? We don't need to stoop to Garfield's level. Sassy. Seriously, Dad, it's not worth it. Let's just go back to watching TV or something. This whole Garfield thing is lame. Not worth it, Lame. Listen up, Summer. This is about principle. We can't let a lazy, lasagna-eating cat think he's better than us. We're going all in. All right, I guess if we're doing this, we should come up with some sick rhymes to roast Garfield. But, ah, uh, do we even have any rap skills? Morty, when you're traveling through alternate dimensions in time, you pick up a few tricks. I've got rhymes for days, Morty, and we're about to drop them like it's hot. They enter the Garfield comic and see Garfield lying on a couch, eating lasagna. Well, 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 look who we have here. Garfield, you lazy furball. Your time has come. Garfield, yawning, oh, great, more visitors. What's the theme today? Boring puns, lackluster insults, bring it on, losers. Garfield, we're not here to insult you. We just want to let you know that you're not as great as you think you are. Yeah, your lazy attitude and obsession with lasagna doesn't make you cool. It just makes you a fat orange blob. Garfield, smirking, is that all you got, little humans? I've heard better insults from the stuffed animals in this room. Oh, we're just getting started, Garfield. Prepare yourself for a lyrical beatdown. A rap battle ensues, filled with insults and clever rhymes. Garfield. Dumbfounded, you. You can't do this to me. I'm Garfield. I'm loved, adored, and worshipped. Well, guess what, Garfield? You're about to take a permanent nosedive into a pit of sweaty, obese, sumo wrestlers. Enjoy your new companions. Rick activates a portal that sends Garfield plummeting into the pit. 
Garfield, no, not the sweaty sumo wrestlers. The stench, the horror, what have you done? The family celebrates their victory, laughing and high-fiving each other. Another job well done, Morty. Let's get out of here before the smell from that pit reaches us. Morty, Jerry, Beth, Summer, and Rick exit the Garfield comic, leaving Garfield to his stinky fate. I can't believe we actually roasted Garfield and plunged him into a pit of sumo wrestlers. This is so messed up, Rick! Morty, life is unfair, chaotic, and full of absurdity. Sometimes, you just have to embrace it. Now let's go, we've got infinite dimensions waiting for us. They walk into the sunset, ready for their next adventure. All right, Morty, buckle up, because we're about to dive into the crazy world of the Garfield comic. Wait, what? We're going into a comic strip? Can't we just stay in the real world? Yeah, I'm with Morty on this one. Comics are for kids, Rick. Oh, come on, Jerry, don't be such a buzzkill. It'll be fun. Yeah, Dad, loosen up. Let's see what adventures await us in the land of Garfield. Fine, if you all really want to go. But remember, this isn't going to be a walk in the park. Garfield's universe can get pretty weird and unpredictable. Great, just what I need, more weirdness in my life. Don't worry, Morty. I'll be there to protect you. Plus, Garfield's comic world can't be that dangerous. That's where you're wrong, darling. You've clearly never seen a lasagna-induced rampage before. Lasagna-induced rampage? I thought Garfield was just a lazy cat. Oh. He's lazy all right, but when you mess with his lasagna, things get real ugly. Just wait and see. Okay, I'm officially scared now. Can we just go back home? Sorry Morty, no turning back now. Strap in, because we're about to meet the main cast. A bright flash transports them into the Garfield comic. Garfield, well, 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 what do we have here? Some fresh meat for my lasagna feast. Woody, barking, Garfield, I'm hungry too. Relax, Odie, we're not here to steal your food. We just wanted to say hi. Um, Rick, I don't think Odie can understand you. Don't worry about it, Morty. I've got a universal translator device. Odie, buddy, we come in peace. Odie, in a high-pitched voice, peace? I thought you came to roast me in a rap battle. Wait, what? A rap battle? Yeah, apparently we have to roast Odie with some sick rhymes. It's gonna be lit. This just keeps getting weirder. I don't think I can handle this. Garfield, all right, let the rap battle commence. I'll be the judge, and trust me, I know a thing or two about roasting. Oh, Rick, I'm not really good at rapping. Can we just get this over with? Ordy, it's time to get swifty. Let's show Odie what we've got. They all engage in a hilarious and intense rap battle, throwing insults at Odie. Odie, while gasping for air, Hey, that's not fair. Why are you all so mean? It's not fair, Odie. Now, as punishment for losing, you're going into the pit of the stanky, sweaty, obese, hulking, balding sumo wrestlers. Odie, number, not the pit of sweaty sumo wrestlers. I hate sweaty sumo wrestlers. They smell like feet. Rick and the others leave as Odie protests against his punishment. Well, that was certainly bizarre. Yeah, I can't believe we just roasted Odie and sent him to his doom. Can we go home now? I've had enough excitement for one day. Fine, Jerry, we're going back home. But remember, the next adventure might be just around the corner. Oh boy, can't wait for that. They all leave the Garfield comic, leaving Odie to his doomed fate. The End
All right, Morty, strap on your seatbelt. We're going on a crazy adventure into the Garfield comic. Really, Rick? Garfield? I mean, what's so wild about a lazy, lasagna-obsessed cat? Oh, come on, guys. I've always wanted to meet John Arbuckle. He's such an iconic character. Jerry, seriously? John Arbuckle? He's just a sad, lonely cartoon character who talks to his cat. Ugh, this is going to be so lame. Can't we go somewhere cool? Like Dungeons and Dragons, maybe? No time, Summer. We're entering the comic now, hang on. They all transport into the Garfield comic. John Arbuckle! Hey, who are you people? And what the hell are you doing in my comic strip? Relax, Johnny boy. We're just here to have a little fun with you. Prepare for the ultimate roast battle rap. Yeah, we're gonna serve you up some comic strip realness. Get ready for a verbal beatdown, John. Nervously, guys, maybe we shouldn't. Shut up, Jerry. It's too late to back out now. Let's do this. Sudden beat drop, intense rap music starts playing. John Arbuckle, you're a sad little man. Your love life's a joke, your plans never pan. You talk to your cat, like that's cool. But all you do is make people drool. John, you're so pathetic, it's kinda sad. You're balding, overweight, and your style is bad. You can't get a date, not even with Odie. Your life's a failure, as everyone can see. Timidly. Um, guys, maybe we should take it easy. Shut it, Jerry. John Arbuckle's about to get roasted like he's never been roasted before. John, you're a punching bag, always in a rut. No wonder Liz never gives you a second thought. You're boring and dull, just a lame comic strip. They should replace you with a potato chip. John Arbuckle tries to retort but stutters. Save your breath. Johnny, you're a joke on this earth. Now prepare for your punishment, it's gonna be worth. We'll throw you in a pit, with sumo wrestlers so sweaty. An eternity of stank and baldness, how's that for confetti? John Arbuckle! No, that's not fair! I don't deserve this! Meanwhile, the gang celebrates their victory with a victory dance. That was amazing, guys. We totally owned John Arbuckle. Yeah, we really showed him. Poor guy, though. Whatever, he had it coming. Who's up for some interdimensional ice cream? Great idea, Summer. Let's celebrate with some mind-bending flavors. Another adventure waits. They all walk away, leaving John Arbuckle in the pit. John Arbuckle! Gloomy voice! I can't believe this is my fate! Stanky, sweaty sumo wrestlers forever! Just great! Alright, Morty, Jerry, Beth, and Summer, buckle up. We're about to dive into the Innerman Dynamite 2 of the Garfield comic. Wait, is this even safe? Going inside a cartoon? Safe? Who cares about safety, Morty? We're all gonna have a blast. Literally, if Nermal messes up. Nermal? What's he got to do with anything? Well, Jerry, today we're gonna have a little roasting session with that annoying furball. We need to show him what it feels like to be on the receiving end. Roasting? Isn't that a bit harsh, Dad? Harsh? It's all for the sake of comedy, sweetheart. Don't worry, we won't hurt his feelings. Too much. This is gonna be so hilarious. I can't wait to see Nermal get what he deserves. Alright, everyone, prepare for the rhyming rap battle of a lifetime. Nermal, welcome to your worst nightmare. Nermal, what's going on here? Why are you all so mean? Oh, Nermal, you don't get it. You're the epitome of annoying, and it's time someone put you in your place. Yeah, Nermal, you think you're so cute with your little blue bow tie, but we're about to expose your true character. Prepare to be roasted, Nermal. Your days of being a pest are coming to an end. Get ready to face the wrath of the Smiths, Nermal. We've had enough of your cutesy nonsense. 
You may be a small cat, normal, but we're about to make you realize that size doesn't matter when it comes to insults. All right, let the roasting begin. Prepare to be burned, normal. Normal, this is so unfair. I'm just a harmless little kitty. Harmless? No way, normal. You're a menace, a tiny ball of annoyance that never stops. Your cuteness is a facade, normal. Behind those innocent eyes lies a selfish, attention-seeking feline. You may think you're popular, normal, but you're nothing more than a one-dimensional comic strip punchline. Your existence is irrelevant, normal. You're just a side character in a world that revolves around Garfield. You're like a bad odor, normal. No matter how hard we try, we just can't get rid of you. All right, that's enough, normal. Your punishment awaits. Normal, punishment, you can't do this to me. Oh, we can and we will. Say hello to the pit of stanky, sweaty, obese, hulking, balding sumo wrestlers. Normal, woo, the horror, the smell, the sight. Their normal will stay, surrounded by the very characters he despises forever. That'll teach you to mess with the Smiths, normal. Enjoy your eternity of sumo wrestlers, normal, you annoying little furball. Maybe now you'll think twice before trying to steal Garfield's spotlight, normal. And remember, normal. What happens in the comic, stays in the comic. Another successful adventure, Morty. Now let's go find some intergalactic pizza. This whole experience has given me a hankering for some Italian cuisine. Jeez, Rick, you always find a way to make things weirder. But sure, let's go get some pizza. And so, our heroic, yet twisted journey continues, with pizzas and puns in our future. Until next time, folks. Title, the Garfield Rap Battle Characters Rick Morty Jerry Beth Summer Odie Int Living Room, Day The living room is littered with science equipment, portals, and gadgets. A blue background fills the room as Rick studies a comic book. Rick Looking at the camera Alright, Morty, Jerry, Beth and Summer, buckle up. We're diving headfirst into that Garfield comic. Morty. Confused. Ah, Rick, what's the plan here? Rick. Smirking. We're gonna roast that stupid, loyal dog, Odie, in a rhyming rap battle. It's about to get real nasty. Jerry. Disbelief. A rap battle? Seriously? Beth. Grinning. Count me in. It's about time Odie got what he deserved. Summer. Enthusiastic. I'm so ready for this. Let's show him who's boss. The group gears up, with microphones in hand, and they disappear into the portal. Int. Garfield comic strip, day. The gang materializes in a vibrant, cartoon world. Odie, bewildered, stands in front of them. Odie, wagging his tail. Hey, guys, what's happening? Rick, chanting. Odie, Odie, you dumb mutt. Prepare for a verbal kick in the butt. The gang surrounds Odie as they break into a rhythmic rap, verbally attacking him. Rap battle sequence. Everyone takes turns delivering rhymes while Odie tries to counter, but fails miserably. Axed. Comic Strip Desert, Day Odie, defeated and wounded, lies in a pit full of sweaty, balding sumo wrestlers. Odie With disgust Oh, come on. This is worse than a thousand lasagnas gone bad. I can't handle the smell, the sweat, the- Rick interrupts Odie, grinning mischievously. Rick To everyone Alright, team, wrap it up. Job well done. 
The group surrounds Odie one last time, triumphant, as they exit the comic strip. Odie's cries grow distant. Odie. Yelling. I demand a recount. I don't deserve this. Get me out of here. Int. Living room, day. The living room returns to its usual chaotic state. The gang removes their microphones, wiping sweat off their brows. Rick. Laughing. Well, that was quite the wild ride, wasn't it? Morty. Panting. Yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing Odie for a while. Jerry. Exhausted. Can we not do anything like that again? I need a vacation. Beth. Smirking. Oh, Jerry, you're such a party pooper. Summer. Excited. So, what's next, Rick? Where are we going now? Rick pauses, glancing at the camera, breaking the fourth wall. Rick. grinning. That, my dear viewers, is for the next episode. Until then, stay swifty. Fade out. Hey Morty, check out this new invention I just made. It's a flower-powered universal translator. Now we can talk to any living being in the multiverse. Wow, Rick, that's amazing. But, ah, uh, why did you make it look like Doraemon holding a flower in a garden? Morty, aesthetics are important. Plus, Doraemon's got some serious street cred in the cartoon universe. Oh, okay. So, what are we gonna do with this thing? We're entering it in the alien gardening competition. First prize is a lifetime supply of ultra potent alien fertilizer. Time to flex our interdimensional horticultural skills, Morty. W wait, Rick, does this mean we have to actually garden? Oh, Morty, relax. I've modified the device to make the plants grow at an incredible rate. We won't have to wait more than a few seconds for our plants to bloom and grab everyone's attention. All right, but can't we just enjoy the flowers peacefully? You know, without causing unnecessary chaos? Morty, chaos is my middle name. Plus, nobody likes a peaceful garden, Morty. We gotta make a splash in this competition. An explosion of colors and controversy. Fine, let's do it. But can we at least not involve XQ Cow this time? He's not exactly known for his subtlety. Morty, XQ Cow's got the flair for drama that this competition needs. Besides, who else would we get to engage in a heated plant growing battle? I guess you have a point there, Rick. But this is going to be a disaster waiting to happen. Morty, it's just a competition. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, look, the bird just crapped on Doraemon's head. I think that's some good luck, Morty. Oh, great. The universe itself is mocking us. I can already see the headline, Intergalactic Science Duo Humiliated by Bird Droppings. Screw the headlines, Morty. We're gonna win this thing. And if not, we'll just make our own universe with blackjack and hookers. It's always an option. All right, fine. Let's go kick some alien gardening ass, Rick. I'm ready to face the madness head on. That's the spirit, Morty. Now, let's grab some radioactive manure and show the world how it's done. We're gonna make these plants scream for mercy. I don't think plants can scream, Rick. That's where you're wrong, Morty. Haven't you ever heard a botanical opera? Those plants have set some high notes. I, I don't even want to know how you know that. Oh, Morty, you gotta expand your horizons. Now, let's get this garden growing. Time to shake things up, Morty. We're the kings of chaos. Yeah, kings of chaos. Just another day with Rick and Morty. Buckle up, everyone. This is gonna get bumpy.
All right, Morty, buckle up. We're diving into a comic strip. W what? Which one, Rick? Garfield, Morty, we're going to roast John Arbuckle. Roast who? Why would we do that? Relax, Jerry. It's just a harmless adventure. Everyone, grab a paper and follow me. I can't believe we're doing this. This is so stupid. Shut up, Summer. Just go with it. John Arbuckle. Hey, who are you guys? We're here to roast you, John. Get ready for a rhyming rap battle. John Arbuckle, are you serious? I can't rap. Too bad, John. Prepare to be annihilated. Rick, this feels cruel. I mean, the poor guy. Morty, don't be such a buzzkill. It's all in good fun, kind of. Yeah, Morty. Lighten up. John needs a reality check. Fine, but this better be worth it. All right, John, your appearance is so bland, it's banned. Your fashion sense is a mortal sin, I can't even begin. Summer, your face could launch a thousand cringes. Your fashion choices belong in the darkest of fringes. Beth, your style is so basic, it makes me want to puke. You've got no originality, you're just a fashion fluke. Jerry, your incompetence is truly something to behold. You're like a hairless cat, a sad sight to behold. John Arbuckle, hey, that's not fair. This is just mean. Cry me a river, John. It's time to end this scene. John, your cooking skills are like a cultural drought. Your meals are so terrible, they're not fit for a sprout. John, your obsession with lasagna is kind of strange. It's like you're eating your feelings, a bit deranged. John, your relationships are absolute disasters. You can't even handle a cat, let alone your masters. And John, your social skills are beyond repair. You're like a glitch in the matrix, it's just not fair. Well, John, it looks like you've lost this rap battle. Now it's time for your punishment, John, so saddle. John Arbuckle, no, please. I can't. Don't do this to me. Too late, John. Say hello to the sumo wrestler C. Massive splash. Wow, Rick, that was intense. Yeah, but I think John needed a wake-up call. I guess it did put things into perspective. Yeah, but I still feel bad for John. That seemed really mean. Morty, don't be such a pansy. It's just a cartoon. They all walk away as the pit of sumo wrestlers murmur angrily. All right, Morty, buckle up because we're about to embark on an ultra-dimensional adventure. Ah, uh, Rick, why are we standing in a parking lot? And who's that dude with the green marker? Morty, this is some next-level stuff. We're gonna teleport into the world of Resident Evil 2 on the PlayStation 1. Wait, what? Are you serious? Dead serious, Morty. Now keep your head on because things are about to get intense. Approaching hey guys, what's going on? Are we having a family outing or something? Dad, seriously? Can't you see Rick is about to send us into a video game? A video game? Oh boy, do I still get to be useless in there? Of course, Jerry, useless as your middle name. All right, everyone, put on these VR headsets and let's dive into the world of survival horror. Rick and Morty are teleported into the Resident Evil 2 world. Morty, look, there's Leon and Claire running for their lives like a couple of idiots. Why, yeah, they do seem a bit preoccupied. And they've got some serious zombie problems. Zombie Morty, these aren't just any zombies. These are PlayStation 1 graphics zombies. They're practically pixelated. So, what's the objective here? Do we have to find some sort of magical doodad? 
No, Dad, just try not to die. It's a video game, remember? Rick and Morty find a typewriter. Oh, look, Morty. It's a typewriter. Time to save our progress, just like in the 90s. I don't know, Rick. This game seems pretty unforgiving. We might need more than a typewriter to survive. Rick grabs a shotgun from a nearby zombie's cold, dead hands. Morty, sometimes you just have to take matters into your own hands, literally. Jeez, Rick, that's pretty dark, don't you think? It's a video game, Morty. We're already in the dark. Now, let's go find that insane tyrant known as Mr. X. They encounter Mr. X. Morty, we've got company. This big fella is Mr. X, and he's even scarier up close. Aw, oh, Rick, I think he's coming this way. What do we do? Morty, be a man. Or at least try not to pee yourself. That works too. Guys, I don't think I can handle this. I might just sit this one out. Typical. Jerry, you're useless even in a virtual world. Rick and Morty defeat Mr. X. Well, Morty, we did it. We beat the game from within the game. Mission accomplished. It was so terrifying, Rick. I'm not sure I can ever look at a PlayStation 1 the same way again. Morty, it could have been worse. Imagine if we got stuck in E.T. for the Atari 2600. Oh God, I don't even want to think about that. Let's just get out of here, Rick. They're teleported back to the parking lot. So, are we done with our video game adventure? Can we go home now? Yeah, we're done here, Jerry. Now let's go home and pretend this never happened. Agreed. I need a shower to wash off the pixelated nightmare fuel. They all walk away, leaving the confused man and the green marker in the parking lot. Man, what just happened? And who are those crazy people? Man, this parking lot is weirder than I thought. Finn, brandishing his sword, back off, Kratos. Boa Hancock's heart belongs to me. Kratos, grinning. You think you have what it takes to win her over, little boy? I am the god of war, and I will take what I desire. Jake, stretching his limbs, hold on, Luffy. We won't let these assholes take her without a fight. Luffy, cracking his knuckles. Yeah, let's show them the power of the Straw Hat Pirates. Finn, charging at Kratos, prepare to face my righteous fury you self-obsessed son of a bitch. Kratos, deflecting Finn's attack with ease, is that all you've got, you puny human? Your feeble sword is no match for me. Jake, expanding his body and wrapping it around Kratos, try dealing with this, you hulking brute. Kratos, laughing, is this supposed to be a challenge? Pitiful. Buffy, activating gear second, alright, let's kick this up a notch, Finn. Finn, focusing his energy, bring it on, Luffy. Kratos, breaking free from Jake's grip. You fools underestimate my power. Jake, stretching his arms towards Kratos. Don't be so sure, Kratos. We're not backing down. Luffy, throwing a barrage of punches, Gatling gun. Kratos, blocking and countering Luffy's attacks. I am the one true warrior. None can defeat me. Finn, concentrating his strength, I won't let you harm Boa Hancock, you egotistical maniac. Kratos, smirking. She deserves a god, not a mere mortal like you. Jake, using his stretchy limbs to restrain Kratos. We won't let you touch her, you Greek mythology reject. Buffy, charging up his hockey, Finn, let's combine our powers. Finn, nodding right, let's show Kratos what true teamwork can achieve. Kratos, struggling against Jake's grip. I will crush all who stand against me. Finn, thrusting his sword towards Kratos, Ice King's wrath. Buffy, unleashing a powerful punch, Gum Gum Elephant Gatling. Kratos, taking the combined attack head on. Curse you, mortals. You will regret defying me. 
Jake, squeezing tighter, it's over, Kratos. We won't let you in. Boa Hancock, interrupting, appearing seductively, stop, everyone. I belong to myself, not to any of you. Finn, Kratos, Jake, Luffy, stunned, dropping their weapons, ha. Boa Hancock, smirking, it seems you all forgot that I am a strong and independent woman. I choose my own path. Kratos, peering at Hancock, well, well. Perhaps you're right. Finn, sheathing his sword, I apologize Boa I got carried away. Jake, retracting his limbs. We were just trying to protect you, Boa. Buffy, scratching his head. Yeah, sorry about that, Hancock. Boa Hancock, walking away confidently. Remember, boys, a woman's heart cannot be claimed with violence. It is earned through respect and understanding. Finn, Kratos, Jake, Luffy, watching her leave reflecting on their actions. Then, sighing I guess we have a lot to learn about love huh? Kratos, grudgingly, perhaps I should check out some self-help books. Jake, smiling, yeah, or we could just ask Marceline for guidance. Buffy, nodding, right, let's all become better men. And so, Finn, Kratos, Jake, and Luffy put their egos aside, realizing that love cannot be won through force and violence. In their quest to understand the complexities of the heart, they embarked on a journey of personal growth, cherishing the value of respect and kindness towards others. Alright, Morty, strap yourself in. We're going on a digital adventure. W, where are we going this time, Rick? We're diving headfirst into the chaotic world of YouTube, Morty. Hold on tight. Oh, YouTube, huh? I could use a good laugh. Maybe I'll finally be appreciated for my comedic genius. You? Comedic genius? You couldn't even make an infant laugh, Jerry. Well, maybe if I had better material. Alright. Settle down, you two. We've got a mission to complete. Summer, Beth, you ready? Totally, Rick. I've been waiting for an opportunity to show off my internet savviness. As long as I don't have to deal with